All right, good morning, everyone. Good, good morning. Yes, I hope you had a very good Easter, everybody, and uh, <clears throat> a safe one, and uh, trust everyone is doing well. Hope you like my thumbnail today. It's going to get wild, and it's going to get crazy, and we got some good news from SoFi that was just released, and uh, <clears throat> so let me get this display page up here where it should be right underneath us, and uh, then you can see what all is going on in the world of SoFi and other things. So we'll put this right up there under me and then move this one down here. There we go. I should do it, I believe. If I've made any mistakes, please let me know. Move my picture up here. And now let's get over here. Hold on. Let's make sure we're right. There we are. Display. Done. All right, we looks like we got this thing going. I don't know for sure, but I think we got things going. Three folks here, all right, good morning. Don't hit the like button. Please don't hit the like button if you're here with me yet. Just now, don't hit that like button. And I'm waiting still to see an image come up on the screen. I don't see anything yet. But I'll just keep talking until I can see myself. There we go. Good morning. <clears throat> Good morning to you, good morning to you, we're all in our places, such happy faces, so happy to say let's have a great day, I don't know if you've ever heard that before, a song I can remember from kindergarten, anybody else have any traumatic times? Oh, during kindergarten, separation, anxiety from the parents. <laughs> I remember I gave my mom heck. I didn't want to be in there with all them other youngsters. Don't know why. Huh? I guess it's just me and my, you know, reclusive <laughs> self. <laughs> oh, yeah. Look at that, folks. Bang it out there. 737. <laughs> Yeah, that's what we got ourselves. It's going to be a 747, though, people. It's going to go higher, and there's a reason why. Let me move this screen over here where I can see who all might be with me right here this morning. And uh, I appreciate your being here. I know there's plenty of other places you could be here on the intranet. But uh, we're just looking at quite a few things here. Bitcoin is doing all right, staying, staying right around 70,000. Very, very strong. <clears throat> I expect that to continue. I've now moved my screen over here so I can monitor it and nothing's happening. Uh, sad to say, <laughs> but I guess it's still right now. Let's see if we can see this over here. There we go. All right. Can't see nothing. But we did see some interesting news come out on YouTube uh, from our guys at uh, Trading Fundamentals. And in case you weren't aware of it, they are tracking and, ca and caught uh, some new listings on SoFi looking for people to fill positions they have open. And... Hopefully, I can get this to come up here in a second and show you what I want to show you. But in the meantime, we'll just go back to this page. And, uh, let's go back to this and see that we're running. Yeah, looks like we are up. It doesn't say stop streaming. It says we got 2,000 kilobytes per second running here. It says my CPU is running at about 29%, so that's not an issue. And... Uh, as I look over here at this live stream, I guess I'm going to have to refresh it again now that I've moved it over here and nothing is happening. But hopefully we can get it to open up here. Hopefully we can get YouTube to open up and we get everything working here. But uh looks as though SoFi is going to make another move here and enter well first of all last week we heard they're going to go into the taxes and start doing taxes i don't know if you were aware of that or not but uh yeah this is ridiculous this is just so sad 
I got nothing over here. I got no picture coming over here to YouTube and I got nothing loading up. <clears throat> now that being said, we'll go over here to BITF. Looks like it's up. Maybe, I don't know. We're going to see how long it takes to refresh this screen. And, uh, there we go. Well, that wasn't long. So why is it taking YouTube so long to load up? What's going on over here, YouTube? What's got you, what's got you gitch? What is making this so belabored and slow, YouTube? Everything else I have here looks fine. Uh, let's refresh this screen and make sure that we're right because the time we're showing right here is 4 o'clock. So we'll try and refresh this screen. And... Uh, <clears throat> Doggone it, if we don't get this working, we're just going to go out and get ourselves a new laptop. With, as someone said, better capabilities and a better card in it for what I'm doing here. Um, but I want to show you guys what I looked at yesterday here. Just give me a minute, and I'll show you what we looked at, what I looked at this morning, actually, very early. And there we go, 7.36, 9.14 a.m. So that one is up and working. Now we're going to get back over here to YouTube. And what we got here is a very slow processing of information. Uh, but it shouldn't get, get better for us because soon. Uh, let's ask Siri. Siri, when does spring break end? Spring break began on March 19th, ends on June the 20th. Sure, March, April, May, June. Sure, three months out. I don't think so. I don't think so. But then again, I don't know. YouTube, there we are. Look at that. It's trying to load up everybody. It certainly is. And it's weird because I don't understand why the trouble begins when I move this over to my other monitor here. The, the thing just completely stops. So I'm going to get off of that page, just close it out completely. And before I move over to what I want to show you, I want to bring your attention to a video you all should watch on YouTube. And uh, like I said, I've watched it. Uh, Trading Fundamentals, uh, Guy Tevis and his little... Freddy cat friend and uh hopefully here we'll get we'll get this to open up here and I can show you what I want to show you history is what I'm going for right now and hopefully we can get over here to where Tevis was and what they're talking about is like I said a new job that's being a new position they're trying to fill over at SoFi and uh I sure hope I can get this thing to here to like up. Yep, yesterday. There it is. And uh, here we go. We're going to move down here. Okay, let's see here. Our boys. Felix and Friends talks about a huge secret move here. And uh, that was not that huge of a secret move. Uh, it was the one about the taxes that they're moving into doing uh, taxes. And uh, as he feels possibly very soon insurance. But uh, he does see that as a very good move. He 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 uh, does a comparison between SoFi and Intuit, which also branched over into the taxation. And uh, he thinks it's a good move. But hopefully we can find here our buddies, Tavis and... Uh, so for talking so if I hires here we go this is it right here the headline reads so if I quietly hires for new SMB product that's the title of this video it has 3,900 views on it and uh, this is a very interesting thing that you need to watch everybody so now let me go over here to this page and now I've told you about it. And it is listed under Tavis. T-E-V-I-S is the only one. Not Trading Fundamentals. Tavis. 
and SoFi Quietly YouTube Studios. I think I'm just going to click on this and copy this link, and then I'll put it over into the uh, chat. And to everybody that's here, I don't know who you're here that you're here yet because I'm having some little bit of technical difficulty. So <clears throat> we're going to open up uh, this one and copy this right now. Share. And hopefully we can get this to pop up here. And we'll share it with you, everybody. There we go. Copy. There we go. We copied it. Now, hopefully I'm not copying something from the ad that's there. I think that will be the post. Uh, uh, let's see here. Just give me a second here. Please hold. There we go. And... I guess the first thing we want to do is get past these two commercials and hopefully we'll get a skip option to get by them. There it is. Skip all. There we go. Now that this loads up. Yep. There we go. All right. Now we'll copy share and copy this. There we go. We've copied it. Now we're going to go over here and open up my channel, which the stream is on, and get this thing going here where we can see what you're saying and answer people this morning. YouTube, studio, no, view your channel. There we go. And so if I hear about our uh, market's about uh, 10 minutes away from opening up, SoFi looks good. Going to run up. This is good news for SoFi. This is good news for SoFi, what they're doing. And uh, just another great move that they're making, I think. These people know what they're doing, people. All right, let's see here. Let's move this down here and click on live. There it is. Ah, there's my feed right there going live. Live it is. It's alive. All right, we'll come down here and click on this. So if I climb on and hold on tight, people. All right, and it is so true. All right, now we'll click on this. And if you didn't do this yesterday, I streamed and played about uh, maybe 15 of my original songs. Uh, Saturday, I mean. And uh, hopefully you got the chance to get a listen to some of my originals. You guys hitting that like button already. All right, here we are. Loading up our live stream, and we're going to change it over to analytics. But let this thing load up first <clears throat> so we can say good morning to everybody. Hello and welcome to the channel. <clears throat> we're looking at some other stocks this morning as well. One of them would be S O U N uh, B I T F. Let's see if we can get this one to refresh. And uh, come over here to see what people are saying to me this morning. Uh, Hope you had a great Easter weekend. We did. We went to a lovely little <clears throat> church that's around the corner from us. Faith Community Church. And uh, <clears throat> I believe they were originally a Methodist church. But I think they may have changed a little bit. As of all the churches around the country, I don't know if you're aware of it, but the Methodist churches. But good morning, Rusty Pratter. Good morning, Jeff Presley. Good morning, Dee Dee Files and Tyson Durfee. Good morning. All right. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Now we're going to try once again to move this over to this, this screen and see if it loads up. And it seems to be just having so much trouble, but this time we were successful. All right. Yes, we have it up there and running, and now we're going to Get to see uh, some action here this morning. We're about to get ready here in seven minutes. Yep. In case you haven't heard, everybody, there's news of, on the on the loose. <clears throat> Midwest Cannabis. Good morning to you. So I want you to all to uh, check out this or check this out, and I'm going to put a link to it. Control V. There it is. Check that out, everybody. This is a video that's uh, currently on 
YouTube that was just posted over the weekend by our buddies. Good morning, Chad Caraway. Good morning, good morning. Welcome to the tank. We are here to invite all of you to be entertained. I am not a financial advisor. I am here purely for entertainment purposes. I make suggestions based on <clears throat> several different things, factors. Probably the number one factor that I use is basically fundamentals. You know, a company that has a sound, fundamental, solid marketing idea and concept. And uh, <clears throat> they have a proven success record. They know how to keep themselves in the news. Xavier, good morning to you. All right, everybody's starting to roll in here now. Please go check out that video on YouTube. Even if it takes you <clears throat> 10 minutes to do it. And you'll understand that once again, SoFi is moving in the right direction. And uh, these guys, I'll give it to Tevis and uh, whatever his name is, Sourface, <clears throat> that uh, <clears throat> I know his name. I'm just, I'd rather use that one. But uh, they got, they dug up some good information this weekend about SoFi and uh, they did it via, uh, and I'm going to have to figure that out where they're looking at this, but uh, there's somewhere that they're seeing job listings on SoFi. And apparently, recently, very recently, SoFi has started up a new job that they're trying to, a position they're trying to fill, and it involves SBC. And this is, I have to say, watch their video because this kind of stuff is what they're more into, okay? This is kind of their kind of angle on things. And they're pretty informed about this. And it's good that they keep us informed. And it's good that I can share this with you this morning. So please go over and check out that video. And then you can come back. It'll only take 15, 20 minutes. Or you can watch it simultaneous and put your <clears throat> subtitles in. And you can just hear their words. But uh, <clears throat> anyway, it is important what they did, what they're looking to do here. and. This is a a big another big step in the right direction, okay? So what it involves is that they've been doing kind of a B2B and they're looking to try to sort of combine the two things where they can work together. If you watch the video, it becomes clearer. And like I said, I think their video only takes a few minutes. Now, I'm seeing here, again, error. YouTube is not receiving enough video to maintain smooth streaming. And as such, viewers will be experiencing buffering. And I hope, <clears throat> I hope that you're not having that going on. Johanna Santana. Johanna Santana, happy birthday. Merry Christmas and good morning, everyone. Well, my birthday is still three days away. But thank you for the early birthday wishes. I appreciate you having remembered that I'm very close to it. April the 4th is my actual birthday. But everybody go up and listen to what Tevis and Sourpuss had to say. Because it's good information that you can benefit from. You can benefit from it. All right. I guarantee it. For your knowledge of what SoFi is doing and I could sit here for uh, 15 minutes and tell you what they said, but not with the kind of detail that, that you need to understand what's going on with SoFi, okay? Um, and I this is going to be a, just another thing that keeps the price moving up because more and more people that will hear about this news about what they're doing will come in. Rusty comes in with a donation. Rusty, welcome. <laughs> Welcome and hello, hello and welcome and welcome and hello and hello and welcome. I'll use the words of our now famous 
Hurricane Lopez, Danny Deals. We are very grateful for all of the information that he provides as well and keeping us abreast of what the shorts are doing, which are absolutely burying themselves in a very, very deep hole here. Good morning, everyone. And again, as I repeat, it says, Error, YouTube is not receiving enough video to maintain smooth streaming. And as such, viewers will experience buffering. And I apologize, but that has nothing to do with me. Uh, it is entirely my internet provider. And as I said, I have been looking into other alternatives. And uh, so thank you all for being patient through this time period. I want you to know that in case you're wondering where you should have some bids in on SoFi this morning, where you should have your bids located. Um, and by the way, I did try to post a very informative message to everyone on the message board on Yahoo over the weekend, and Yahoo would not allow it. They asked me, are you sure you want to put this down? It might be better for you to put something that isn't so controversial or something. I'm not doing anything controversial, for God's sake. It's just telling everybody what the heck they're doing. <laughs> it's controversial for them because they don't want the price of SoFi to go up for some reason, those folks over at Yahoo. All right, folks, here we're ringing the bell. And we're checking on the volume. Let's see how much we've got early morning. Let's refresh this page right now and see what we got going on. And uh, good morning. Good morning. Welcome. Thank you for being here. And we are going to, at 9.30, at 9.32, we will hit the like button simultaneously. If you haven't done it yet, don't hit it now. But we're going to hit it at 9.32. And uh, we're going to sit here and monitor. Right now, the volume says 892,000 shares. So good. Uh, Nice to be green on a low average volume, but we got a situation where we got the, the shorts with their backs against the wall. Jeff Presley, market is open. Yes, it is. Rusty Prouder, wow. Thank you so much. There's a heart for you there. I click on a big old heart, and we're going to definitely make sure you're acknowledged. Thank you so much, Rusty. Uh, that's a guy right there who's dedicated to keeping this channel here. Um, we'll talk about that a bit more here in a, in, a, in a little bit after we get everybody over onto the channel. we got right now about 40 people here. Uh, we're going to hit the like button at 9.32. 9.32. And since I like the number 8 so much, let's just make it 9.32.08. All right? <laughs> 9.32.08, we're going to do this. And everybody's going to hopefully hit the like button, get us from 10 up to maybe 20. So here we go. We're going to start the countdown in 10 seconds right now. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Kaboom. Please hit the like button for us all. And here is where SoFi is going to be trying to driven down today. And oh my God, look at this. SoFi's ETF has just announced a dividend. SoFi's paying a dividend on their ETF, in case you were not aware about that. And uh, this is on their ETF, all right? The SoFi's Enhanced Yield ETF. Now, it hasn't really done much since they started this ETF as far as movement up or down. It hasn't really, but a dividend is good. So SoFi is now paying a 2.04% return. Uh, I No, I'm sorry. Here it is. <clears throat> do, 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 do. Their year-to-date daily total return is 2.04%. And the volume is not real heavy on it, but it's doing okay. I mean, it's holding its ground very well. Back to SoFi here. Let's go see what they're going to do. Uh, I want to move this back over to actual SoFi here. I don't want to be confusing anybody. Uh, this is THTA here. So let's just get back over to SoFi. All right. And... Uh, 
not confuse you. But in case you were aware, weren't aware of it, SoFi is has another entity, and that is an ETF that you could actually buy into if you're that big of a believer in SoFi. And uh, so today, now that we're on back to SoFi, we're going to go into historical data. Peabody's Raw Honey, good morning and welcome. Welcome to the tank. Thank you for being here. Um, we've got some, I got a highlighted up here. If you scroll up here in the chat, you'll see highlighted. Uh, check this out. And there's a video on YouTube that was put on YouTube here over the weekend. You need to watch. And uh, please do that. Take the time to get over there and watch that video put up by Tevis, T E V I S, on YouTube. Uh, the historical data shows us a low on uh, March the 28th of 729. And as you can see right now, they're trying to start the week off. By the way, last week, the market opened at 730. SoFi last week on Monday opened at 730. And you can see today it opened at 731. So not a lot to be very happy about other than that those massive amounts of shorts that we've seen keep adding into their shorted positions can't drive the price down. Digging a deeper hole, but the price isn't dropping on them. For them, I should say. Oh, it's going to drop on them, all right. This price is going to go up and drop on them big time. And the reason I say that is because of that video that I put the link on here today. All right, so go over and check it out. Some other stocks that we've got our eye on is S-O-U-N. And we're going to keep an eye on them. They were just briefly run down, and now they're going back up. Uh, we're looking at BITF. Looking very good. And uh, funny how BITF is now down and right around 70, but BITF just keeps going up. See that? We're at 69,997. But look at it. Stair-stepping, 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 up, up, up. And uh, it'll be back up over 7. So far right here. There we go. Come on back up over yesterday's low. and uh, Make sure that you do go over and uh, look at YouTube, the link that I provided for you, okay? And understand what SoFi just did, okay? This is a good, very good move that they're, what they're doing. But as I said earlier, those guys over on YouTube, Tavis and, and Sourpuss, face they are are really on to this and you need to look at what it's all about it, the video that they put up is only about 15 minutes long so if you jump over there and take a look at it i'm cool with that you know come on back when you're done because i can tell you right now that information that they're providing over this weekend they dug it up by tracking the job listings that sofi keeps out there and they found out that and SoFi hasn't announced anything yet, but that through their hiring and the positions they're looking to fill, what they're about to do, they, it's very, very well and, and it's very understandable what they're about to do. And so, folks, I'm telling you, get on over there to YouTube. Tavis is the channel. I put a link over there just above Rusty Pratter's new donation. And by the way, that means that he's going to get moved up in the tank right up to the very top, and we're going to do that right now. Rusty comes to the very top of the tank once again, proving his loyalty to this channel and that he appreciates what I do here. <clears throat> and uh, I'm very grateful for that, Rusty. And I hope that others will consider doing the same because, well, I'll explain here in a little bit. And, uh, but for those of you who have been so diligent in giving me donations, and I keep your name right there for everyone to see, J.P. Panik, Rusty Pratter, Cham, Jeff Presley, Rick Lawrence, Daniel Davis, Armand, Brew Tank Outdoors, Elaine Nelson, D.B., Charche, and Danny Dimes 10. All of you, thank you so much. All right, we're going to move this over, and we're going to get back to the screen that we should be on. All right, there we go. Perfect. And then we're going to go like that. Boop. All right. So, yeah, uh, in case anybody wasn't aware of this, 
if anyone, any one of you thinks that anybody is actually selling SoFi this morning at $7.27, down a half of a percent, you would be highly, highly incorrect. There are no real shares going from any longs pockets at down a half a percent. I can promise you that. I can promise you that. Carl C. Mack, thought you would be addressed to a sexy cat for April Fool's. Imagine my disappointment. <laughs> oh, I might be, what, this isn't sexy? Huh? What's gig? This right here isn't, here, hold on. I don't know what's going on. Not sure what, somebody would be looking forward to catfish in a sexy cat. <laughs> there we go. There's a little skin for you. You, got, you can see my hairy arms. <laughs> Carl just came on. I have no idea. He says, thought you would be dressed as a sexy cat for April Fool's. Imagine my disappointment. <laughs> so... <laughs> I don't know why he would have presumed I'd be wearing anything sexy. I don't wear stuff sexy. Well, that's exclusively for my wife, Carl. <laughs> Sorry to disappoint. Now look at SoFi going green. Well, that little piss ass rundown didn't do, didn't last long, did it? I told you nobody was really selling SoFi this morning. So I want you guys to know, get on over there to get on over there to YouTube channel Tevis, T-E-V-I-S, and please watch the video that him and Pussyface Tanner came up with. <laughs> I meant to say Sourpuss. I'm sorry. It's Sourpuss Tanner. <laughs> Terrified Tanner. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious, everybody. Uh, we're looking at SoFi. I want you, and I know that many people have already gone over to watch the video, but scroll up the screen and you'll see, actually, I'll pin my own message. I don't know whether they'll let me do that. Yep, pin. So I'm pinning this message because I want you to go over and check out the news that Tanner and Sourface have discovered, okay? It's very good. Uh, SoFi is going to continue to grow their revenues from what they're about to do. And I can't tell you the details of what, what they're doing, but if you watch their 15-minute video, then you'll get a good understanding of what SoFi is doing. All right, so I am very happy to lead you over to another channel and have you step away from me for a while just because it's that important for you to go over there and listen to what they have to say, okay? So I, uh, I'm i not worried. I'm not going anywhere. I'll be here when you get back 20 minutes from now if you go over and watch their video and you get yourself more edumacated on what SoFi is doing right now. And they didn't make an... Here's the, here's the cool part. SoFi didn't make an announcement about what they're about to do. But because of the job positions they're looking to fill right now, it becomes very obvious what they're about to do, okay? And uh, so I ask you all to please take the time to jump over there to the link I have in my pin message up at the top and <clears throat> uh, or just above Rusty Pratter's donation. You can see a link to it there. And go on over there, folks, and watch their video. Understand what, what SoFi is doing, okay? And admittedly, it gets fairly technical at some point in time. But then again, you'll get most of it, okay? <laughs> you'll get 99% of it. I did. I got it. All right. And I, and I like what they're doing. I like what SoFi is doing. And, and this is just another way for them to get better, just make everything better, folks. So I'm asking you now, there's only 45 here. We had about 60, so I think about 20 might have gone over there. And 
don't forget to go over there and hit the like button when you get there so their information gets shoot, show, uh, shared with more people, just like those of you who have here. And uh, let me scroll back down here now. <clears throat> Carl, C. Mark, thought you, Carl C. Mark says, uh, I didn't watch the 10X presentation at the uh, Roth conference. Did they mention anything worthwhile? Uh, yes. Uh, they they did. They meant one of the things they mentioned is that they've recently, in the last couple of years, have acquired four patents. Okay, and he talked about the significance of the one patent that they just got for the Levosimodon, uh here in the United States. And this patent is a very important part, key to them making generating revenue, because now once they've obtained that patent. Then the lifosimidin, and by the way, this is on the medication itself. It's this is not a patent on the method of of uh, getting the the medication into the the uh, into the patient. Okay, so understand that lifosimidin has already been used intravenously, and that's how it's been used for the last twenty or twenty five years over in Europe. Okay. So they know that it works and it's saving people, okay? It's helping people out. So this is not a question. What they're trying to now do is get this same medicine into a oral um, that they can take orally instead of hooked up to IVs and all this stuff, okay? And that's what they're doing now. But they got the patent on the drug that used to belong to Orion who let the patent lapse. So they're acquiring this patent for Levosimodin means that now they can license that out to uh, the people who want to use it still over in Europe and, and their uh, types of medications for this hypertension, heart hypertension. So anyway, um, what it means is that they will now be able to license this out to other people to use in combination with their own intravenous uh, solutions that are helping, so they can they can do tests with levosimidin and their current drug to try to make a compound that they can make even better for people. Okay, that's basically the bottom line with it. All right. So uh, looks good, Muhammad. Good morning to you. Good morning, Assalamu alaikum, my friend. Uh, folks, over this weekend. Uh, I watched a show on YouTube about Moses, and I tell you, uh, or actually, I think it was on Netflix. Yeah, it's on Netflix, and you got to watch it. It's a three-part series. Each part is about an hour long, hour and a half, the last one, I think, and man, whew, that was inspirational. Moses. You, the story of <laughs> that you can't write, you can't write anything like this. I mean, you can't make up anything like this. This is all documented and it's not just documented in the Bible, ladies and gentlemen, it's documented in the Quran and it has a lot to do in the Muslim faith, believe it or not, which was something enlightening to me because I wasn't aware of that. Did you aware of that? I wasn't aware of that. The Moses is in the Quran and, uh, Moses is, is uh, spoken of in several different texts rather than just uh, the Bible. And uh, so I thought you might find that enlightening today, that Moses, the story of Moses is not only in the Bible, but it's in the Quran, which I did not know that. And in case you don't know what the Quran is, it's what the Muslims use for their book of faith. And uh, very interesting. Anyway, I just thought I'd share that with you. Uh, and I'm from my understanding, and we got somebody here right now who is named Muhammad, and I'm sure he'll be able to tell me right now. <clears throat> Let me ask you something, Muhammad. Uh, and we'll get back to stocks here in a minute because I don't always like to just talk about stocks. There's plenty of stocks we can talk about, but I just want to ask Muhammad a question right now. Human interest is Jesus mentioned in the Quran? Okay, that's what I want to know. And I believe he is. I believe he is a simply a prophet in the religion of um, 
the Muslim, in the Muslim faith, but I'm going to get a, I'm going to get a confirmation of that right now. So Muhammad, since you're here, please let me know, is Jesus in the Quran? I'd be curious to know that they talk about Jesus in the Quran and I wouldn't doubt it. They would, but uh, we'll find out in a minute. And then if they talk about Moses in the Quran, then why wouldn't they talk about Jesus? So we'll, we'll find out in a minute. And, and this will be enlightening for everybody who's an American, who's a, a Catholic or Baptist or Methodist, or if you're of any faith at all, uh, then uh, this should be something you find interesting. I, I do. I would like to know. And uh, I, I thought it was very interesting to find out how many references there were to Moses in the Quran. So it was enlightening for me. Yes, definitely. Muhammad says, yes, definitely. And I would, and that's what I thought. So thank you for confirming that. And, uh, yes, I understand. Yes. Thank you for letting me know that Muhammad. I appreciate that. Now, see, this is something I bet you half of the people listening to this channel right now probably didn't know. I'm not, I'm not underestimating the, the intelligence of people or whatever, but I'm going to guess that at least half of the people listening to this channel right now had no idea that in the book of faith of the Muslim people, Jesus is there. And uh, that's right. That's exactly right. That's my understanding. They just do not believe that Jesus was the son of God. And uh, so that's that's the biggest difference. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to bring that to your attention because I don't think people know that as a general rule. I think that they think that... Uh, and it's not because of their own fault. It's because of what is being taught to us or not taught to us for whatever reason about our quote unquote adversaries. Okay. And first of all, I don't consider anybody an adversary. Okay. I accept people as my friend, regardless of where they are from, what walk of life, what, where their origin was what their history is. I don't care about any of that. I would rather just let bygones be bygones. Let the past be the past. Water under the bridge. Let's all just freaking get along. We're all just people, God. God, under God's great earth, we're all just people, all right? Yes, I understand that. Yes, a stranger in a strange land. Yeah, I understand that. And uh, that was my belief anyway, and uh, my understanding was, and uh I got to tell you, man, there are some good things from the Muslims that we could t inherit the United, the people of the United States, including being a little bit less sexual, if you know what I mean. And uh, there is just, you know, it, it's just overrun. <laughs> and, uh, you know, one thing I I like about the uh, the Muslim people is their, is their, um, desire to keep a woman, you know, covered up, you know, you don't have to see every single inch of a female to appreciate her. As a matter of fact, you, you this is one of the things that I think that the United States, man, and, and our culture could really benefit from. And there's many others. I don't know, many of you might not know this, but the Muslims also have a belief in not drinking alcohol. Now, not to say that every single Muslim doesn't drink any alcohol at all, because I know that that's not the case. But I'm saying that generally, as a rule, they they frown upon that, and they don't. The women don't specifically, even more so. They they that's very very uncommon for women to be drinking. It's my understanding. I'm just saying. <clears throat> Thank you, Muhammad. So uh, anyway, you you got to understand that the people of the world are just like you. And if you were to travel there, I don't care where it is. I don't care where it is. If you were to travel there and just pop out, <laughs> they would welcome you. Okay. That's what I've found. Uh, and especially if you speak any of their language, which I happen to do. And uh, I can't tell you how many times I've met people from other uh, countries that I speak their language and they just, it just, <laughs> the, the, the difference it makes when you speak someone's language is just, in, um, you can't even express it in words, the difference it makes, the type of reaction you get from people when they find out that you, you know, can speak some of their language, even if it's just a little bit, even if it's just how to count to 10, 
it creates a bond and a unification. Do it, folks. Go out and learn how to count to 10 in a bunch of different languages. Just take the time and commit yourself to doing it. Just It's easy. You got a Google phone. You hit, hit how do you say one through 10 in, in uh, the language, and then you can just listen to it count, and you just practice and practice. The next thing you know, bam. That's right. The Bible says drunkenness is a sin. It's very true. Uh, everything can be sinful if we do it in, ex in extreme, to extreme. And it also says, the Bible says, your body is the temple of God. So anyway, I'm not here to preach to everybody, but I, I do want to share, I think it's important in our walk of life that we don't just talk about money. <laughs> And, you know, everybody wants to see SoFi go to $9, $10, 11 and 12 and then we will see there. But on the path to that, we're going to talk about other things that are more important in life, okay? And uh, that's all that matters. You know, I'm going to share with you my faith and what I believe, and I believe in God, and I believe in uh, supreme power, and I believe in miracles. And because I've seen them, I've seen them. And uh, having lived in Haiti... Uh, as a missionary when I was a youngster, uh, which changed my life forever. Uh, this is part of the reason that I speak Creole and I speak French and I speak Spanish is because of living in Haiti. And uh, here we go, folks. SoFi is going to be green. And my prediction was for everyone, in case you haven't seen it, my prediction was for SoFi to be green for the next three weeks in a row until about nine days before earnings where I expect it to jump over 10 before earnings and then drop back to about three or four days before earnings back below 10 at around 888 or so. And then on earnings day, boom, that's when I expect to see the real jump. Now I could be, you might be thinking catfish. Why do you think this? Why? What makes you think this history, 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 seen it done. Too many times, and so I expect to see it done again. <clears throat> and, uh, oh, it says ads. We got an ad that's going to come up here in a minute. And I might, my ads are all listed as skippable ads, but the reason I'm leaving them in right now instead of taking them out is because I was told, and it, it was just true, so uh, uh, this channel gets shared with a lot more people when I have ads. YouTube sends me out to many, many, many other people when I leave the ads in. As a matter of fact, almost twice as many people. I saw my viewership go up from them sending me out to about 4,000 to 4,500 people a day, jumped up to 7,300 when I took put the ads back in. So I'm sorry that I have to put these ads in, but please just understand and if you want to watch them or whatever, you can let me know what the ad was about. That would be neat to know what the ad is about. Because I'd like to know who's advertising on my channel. Somebody told me Biden had one of his ads on my channel. <laughs> like, I guess he, what the purpose? Talk about a waste of energy and time because anybody on my channel knows <laughs> how I feel about that. Anyway, so here we are, ladies and gentlemen. We're talking about SoFi and some other stocks we've got our eyes on today. We got a long list of other stocks that we're looking at other than just SoFi. And uh, so one of them today is S-O-U-N, and it is about to go green. And uh, so I won't be getting chewed out today by anybody over that. Look at SoFi, people. That was easy. That's right, man. Making money on this stock is going to be very easy over the next month. You'll all see. And uh, as I had said before, I expect to see new highs and new lows almost every day for the next three weeks. Yep. And uh, we got 57 people on this channel right now. The time now is 9.58. So what I want to ask you all to do is do me a favor here. We're going to click on this clock down here and uh, check out SoFi going green. And what we're going to do is we're going to reason we're going to click on this clock. We're going to be clock clickers and we're going to watch them, the ticker. And then we're going to uh, at exactly 10.08 at 10.08, we're all going to hit the like button at the same time. 
and we're going to get even more people over to this channel. I want you to know that during the last 90 days, YouTube has now sent my, ch my channel out to over 820,000 people in the last 90 days. That's a lot of people that are going to have a chance to click on my, if they like what they see when they get sent the channel as a uh, suggestion for them to check it out. That's a lot of people. You're talking almost a million people. <coughs> And part of the reason that YouTube is doing that is, number one, because of you guys and your chats. Number two, you guys and your likes coming at the same time. So here we go. We're going to do this at 10 o'clock and eight seconds. And that will be in 50 seconds from now. So just hold it tight. I know that you're anxious to hit the like button and help it get shared with many, many other people this channel. But right now... And uh, I can see that it says error. YouTube is not receiving enough video to maintain smooth streaming. And as such, viewers will experience buffering. But a moment ago, it said excellent signal. So here we go. We're going to start a countdown here in approximately 15 seconds. And we're going to hit the button at nine, uh, 10, 10 minutes, 8 seconds. At 10 o'clock and 8 seconds, which is going to be in 10 seconds from right now, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, boop, please push the like button and I will be thanking you very much for doing so. And uh, what I was trying to tell everybody here earlier that was here with me the day who's been here earlier and uh, for each one of those likes that you put up there. I guarantee you there will be a heart on the screen <laughs> and I want to let you know because that just shows you how much I appreciate you doing that and hopefully this glitching I've got someone told me I ought to stream from my phone and uh, so someone was talking to me on Saturday when I was doing my live music I was playing some of my songs and someone said hey catfish you should stream off of your phone and if you're still here, uh, so whoever suggested I do that, then uh, you made a suggestion I should stream at 1080p. I'm not sure how to choose that on my phone. So maybe you could give me a walkthrough a little bit if you know and you want to be helpful. Uh, as I was saying to everyone earlier, this, this price has already been lower today than where we are. So there's nobody really selling here. There's no, 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 uh, -uh. no sales are going on from real people to real people. Uh, buys are happening and they're going from fake sellers to people who want the stock right now. Every single share that you're seeing leaving fakers and shorters and borrowers is going into the hands of a long that just wants to hold on till we're back over 10. And they'd be very wise to do that because over the last year and a half, this stock has gone down to the sevens, the sixes, the fives, even in the mid fours. And every time gone back over $10, every time, five times in the last year and a half. That's a 40, that's a 125% gain one time, a 76% gain another time, a couple of times 50% gains and plus off of this heavily manipulated stock that they keep scaring retailers out of. But if you're here with me, I'd like you to, to go up and look up here where on the uh, scroll up over on the comments in the chat area and please scroll up and you will see above Rusty Pratter's donation, four listings up from there. It says, check this out. I posted up here. It says, check this out. Please go over and watch this YouTube video. It'll take you about 15 minutes to get it in. It's posted by Tevis, T-E-V-I-S. Please get on over there and listen to what those guys had to say, and uh, you'll be edumacated, okay? Now, we're going to take a look at some other stocks, not just SoFi today. We're looking at S-T-E-M. I want to see what they are doing today. And we're going to be looking at N-U. We want to look at what it's doing today. All right. New. And we have been looking at other stocks here. 
10x. Someone was asking me about 10x earlier today. Uh, other good news besides them acquiring these patents was in regards to the drug itself and how the tests are going. They're going very well. Uh, the six-minute test with this new oral is is work it has been showing good results already and as i've said to each and every one of you the longer we go without hearing any news from 10x the better all right the longer we go without hearing any news the better we'll all be that's the way i say it and that's the way it is because if we hear any news prior to a year from now it won't be good most likely it'll be okay well they they they've They've canceled the, the testing. We've had bad, bad results. So just keep that in mind. Any news we have is going to be good news. If it's a year from now. <laughs> well, that's what we're waiting for. Be patient with 10X. Every once in a while, they might make an announcement about an update on how its performance is doing, especially if they're good. And that'll make us pop. All right. But I uh, just want to let you know, uh, looking at other stocks that we have on the page, in you slightly down. And then, of course, is right at 10 o'clock this morning. So everything's going to be a little bit in the red because that's what they do every Monday morning at 10 o'clock. It's just the way it is, folks. Same thing with SoFi. Down less than 1% and no one is selling it here. No one is selling it at 9, at 7.24. The only one selling this stock at $7.24 would be Spineless Shorty borrowing the shares. Okay. And uh, again, I want to ask you all to please go up and look at my posting that was posted earlier. <clears throat> it's pinned at the top of the screen up there. You can see it. Please look at this, which I have pinned that says check this out and go over and watch this video. SoFi has not made an announcement about what they're about to do, but their job hiring page tells what they're about to do. That's all I can tell you. So if you wouldn't mind, and I don't mind that it reduces the number of viewers on my channel, you can come back after 15 or 20 minutes, but go over and watch what Tevis just posted this weekend. It was so cool what they discovered that they decided to post it at like, I don't know, midnight or something. I don't know what time it was, but over the weekend, they jumped on there together to point out what, what SoFi is doing. They caught a good one. And uh, so I commend them for that, even though Frady Cat Face uh, Tanner is not usually on my plus list because uh, of his all his little scary faces and his fear and his FUD, but Tevis is a horse of a different color, and you don't see him putting out stuff like that. Uh, and everybody, I guess, gets wants to get more hits and more clicks on their page, so it's tempting to put up a thing. Oh, SoFi, zero dollars, one dollar share price, or you know, uh, SoFi. Uh, what was it? Robin Hood credit card uh, tank SoFi price or whatever. What a joke. No, it's Robin Hood credit card issuance is not. And Robin Hood might lose money on that venture. There's been others who've tried it and lost money. All right, because it's not easy to do, just in case you weren't aware of it. It's not easy. All right. It takes a lot of infrastructure. It takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of effort. And a lot of times it doesn't pan out. So I just wanted to share that with you. Um, here we're seeing SoFi at a new low of $7.24, a whole five cents, I think, below where the low was on Friday. So God bless them, those shorts, for spending all that money. Now they're up to almost 5 million shares. And uh, I see right now that it says there's another ad that's going to be run on here. And I'm not seeing anybody's... Uh, Comments here. What's the ticker? Uh, Milltown smokes up. A stranger in a strand line. What's the ticker? S O F I. I don't know if that's what you're asking me. Ten uh, X T E N X T E N X. This is the ticker on Ten X Therapeutics. Therapeutics. 
they're the only ones with uh, a, a relief from the problem that people are having with this uh, heart therapy. They're the only ones that have a, what you might call a cure, okay? Now, don't get me wrong, this price of 10X, it jumps down into the 380s and 390s and back up over to 420, and it does this off and off all the, all the time. But we were sitting on it, and we owned a bunch of it about two months ago, and the price shot up to freaking $22.30 when they announced their patent acquisition, and uh, we sold it. <laughs> then we bought it back at 11, then it ran up to 16 the same day, and we sold it again. <laughs> And then we bought it back at 390 something here recently, 380s. And uh, but this is what you you buy this stock 10x, and then you put your sell orders on it right away at 49 dollars, 69 dollars, 98 dollars, and even it's been as high as 108 dollars a share this stock 10x, because it it's a when it gets these therapy when it gets these approvals from the FDA, boom, and you just have to have your sell orders already in, good till canceled, and you'll fill. And that way you don't have to watch it every single day. Just and once you buy it, you know, just buy, set it and forget it. Okay, set it and forget it. Now looking here at SoFi this morning, <laughs> down hole one percent, and I reiterate, no one, no one that I know of that buys any stock in the world as an investment would sell down one percent. There's no one that I can imagine in their right mind that would buy a stock and sell it when it's down 1%. So I keep trying to make this very, very clear to each and every one of you that no matter what the shorts try, they're, they're, they're having no success because they can't really scare anyone out of their shares now. In fact, each time recently that they've tried to really drive the price down, institutions have been pouring in on it and buying up more and more. Long positions, I've shown you that recently. It's crazy how many institutions are coming in on these days when they pry, sh when they shove the price down. And this is virtually unheard of in the past about the stock, is to see it driven down in price and then see all that support from institutions come in. And I'm going to point it out to you right now here. I'm going to get over here to SoFi. It says... YouTube is not receiving enough video to maintain smooth streaming, but uh, <clears throat> yeah, uh, a, a stranger in a strange land says, I won't be mad if they allow me to buy 200 at 720 and watch it run right back up to green. Let them dig the hole deeper. We should be happy that their uh, bozos are putting SoFi on sale. Absolutely, 100% agreed. 100% agree. And uh, folks, th this is this is what I'm going to show you right here. We're going to get down here to institutional ownership. And ladies and gentlemen, we now have jumped up to 801. 801, 740 long. This is obviously another long position. Institutions went from 800 now to 801. And it's going to keep growing, folks. One day, it's going to be 1,801. We'll be hitting that bell and celebrating on. That's right. Four. One. 24. 801. And we've gone now from 736 on the 4th of March to 740. Long only, by the way, long only. All right. Beautiful. And let's just make sure. Oh, we don't want that on here. Get it out of here. We got 32 short and 29 long and short. Oh, good. We had, uh, the last time we had on the 4th, we had 30 that were long and short. And now we've only got 29. And the, the amount of shares has gone from 388, 887, 137 to 390. 390, 896. 
641. All right, 37.25%. And uh, I got news for you, folks. Let's try, all right, found it. Yep, I got it. All right, let's get back over here. I hear you. I hear you, Jose Najera. Let's go so far. And there's your 720 price that you just called out. Uh, there it is right there, a stranger. 720. And it's funny, we've I've seen this number of 720 so many times. Now, I see a lot of people are coming back over here who must have just watched the Tevis video. Pretty cool, huh? That video link I've got in my pinned message. You guys need to go up there and watch that video. It's in my pinned message. YouTube, I've provided a link to what's going on with SoFi and why the heck they're running it down even right now because they want this damn thing as low as they can get it because this news that about what SoFi is about to do is going to push this thing right through the roof, okay? I believe. Yep. 200 at 720, happy as a, happy as a clam. Now, I want to ask you guys to do me a favor. I need to go get a little bit more coffee. And I see an advertisement is running right now. So if you wouldn't mind letting me know who's trying to advertise on my channel, I'd appreciate that. And we're back up to 50 viewers now. Good. You guys must have jumped over there and watched the news about what Tevis was talking about. And now would have been a very good time to buy SoFi with our friend here, Stranger, at 720 a share. Very wise of him to do that. And again, the reason being is because no one is actually selling shares here at down 1%. There's nobody in their right mind that knows anything about investing would sell down 1.3%. That's just as ridiculous, ludicrous, and stupid for anyone to think that that would be the case. No real shares are being sold, except they're really going for people that don't really have shares they want to hold long. They're shorters, and they're going to longs. That's what's happening here. The shorters who borrowed these shares again and got their hole deeper are letting them go right over to the longs. They can't keep this up, people. I'm telling you right now, this is something they cannot endure forever. This is this this is not an infinite share tree to keep picking from, okay? This isn't how it works. Once the borrowed shares available, and let's go take a look at how many borrowed shares are available. Let's go look at this right now. I'm going to get over here on shorts and we're going to click on this. And first we got to click on SoFi, come up here. We'll get it to the right place. Short interest. Short interest. And failures to deliver are going through the roof right now. Take a look at that. Short interest. This is Fintel's saying 21.3. They're behind. It's really about 23% right now. Saying they have 7 million shares now that they've returned. Yep. Very cool. You come alongside with us and you get in here right now, you'll be doing good. So I hope that you would, uh, I'm, I'm trying to keep everybody abreast of what's going on. There is breaking news on SoFi that SoFi hasn't released yet. SoFi hasn't told anyone what they're doing, but they've given it away a little bit by putting out a recent uh, job interview uh, request for positions they want to fill. And the positions they want to fill are for a new segment of the business that they're about to get involved in. So what you need to do is go over to the video and you can scroll up. Uh, and you can look up there, the pinned message I have, and watch that video that was just put out on YouTube by Tevis. Okay, he's doing it with uh, Sourpuss Tanner, but he's they're both bringing up some very good information for you guys to absorb and understand this is just another great move that SoFi is about to make that they haven't announced yet. Okay, nobody knows, but it's disclosed via the type of job positions they're trying to fill right now. So that tells you the direction that SoFi is going and what they're about to do by the positions that they just put up that they're trying to fill. All right. And involves SBC. All right. Small business. Okay. 
this. This is what it's all about. And I would encourage you, if you can buy this stock today, right now at 719 or 720, even 718 when they just drove it down. Again, folks, nobody, nobody is selling SoFi for real, okay, right now. No one. There is no news down here if you refresh this screen. There's no breaking news. Robin Hood is not going to take away SoFi's business and put them under. None of that's going to happen. None of the f FUD and fear and all the scare tactics are going to get this price back down into the fours where many people have shorted it. And a lot of them have shorted it in the fives. And even over the last three months, many have shorted this stock in the sixes. And they've shorted it in the, where it is now. They've shorted these positions. And uh, they're in deep, they're in deep duty, people. People, this is, this is it. Borrow more shares every day. Try to drive it down as low as you can. Run out of borrowed shares, and then the price just goes right on off. All right, that's what we're going to see, and we're going to see that every single day from now until earnings. They're going to use up all their borrowed shares that they borrow every day that they're using to drive the price down. And on this volume at seven million shares in less than an hour, that ain't going to work for them. This is going to be a different volume day, folks, from what we've seen recently at 26 million and 29 million. We're going to see some volume today. And look at this, man. I am seeing they are about to run an ad again here on my channel. And I'm going to skip this ad. I'm out of here. That's just too many. That's too many, SoFi. I mean, too many, YouTube. You're getting greedy now. Come on. You're going to drive all my customers away. All of my listeners are going to be gone if you keep running ads every five minutes. That's ridiculous. So anyway... I'm going to leave some of the ads in, but right now, it's time for me to buy. <laughs> you said you'd work it out. Shouldn't let your head grow down. I'm coming in. I'm coming in with my buddy, Stranger in a Strange Land. Let's get in here and buy some SoFi. Let's get us some. Password. And enter. All right, we're coming in right here, folks. This is where I'm going to start buying 50 shares at a time. And I'm in right now on a market share order, review order, and place it. Let's see if we can get it at 719. And of course, no, we buy it at 720 right along with you, stranger. That's a good buy. Oh uh, yeah, I guess I'm gonna buy a stock that it, more institutions keep buying more institutions keep coming in on. There we go. We'll start this. 720, first buy of the day. So five. 720. 50 shares, check mark. Let's stick right with it here and see if we can get some more. Review order and place it. I want to thank all 50 of you who are here on the channel with me right now. I want to thank you for being here very much. 720 again, that's two times. Uh, I'm buying SoFi right here because I believe it is definitely at the bottom. I believe that no one in reality, would be selling a stock down 1%. I'm just that old-fashioned kind of guy who doesn't believe people sell when it's down 1%. So I believe what they'll do is they'll try to make you think people are selling by borrowing a bunch of shares and then selling those to one another. <laughs> uh, they're going to try and give you the illusion. And if you think it's time, then delusion, then it's really just the same. <sighs> Let's buy it again. Review order and place it. I love it when I sit here and fill at the same price over and over and over. I love it. Because that means they are truly at the friggin' bottom. They can't get it any further. 719. 719. Put a check. Keep giving them away, shorts. Keep giving them away. Anybody want to take a guess at what SoFi is about to do? If you don't know, go over to, like I said, scroll up to my pinned message at the top of this chat and click on that video and you will determine 
easily. I, they, they explain this very well for you. And I'm not going to replicate what they said. I'll just ask you, go over to their channel. It's Tevis. He's on YouTube. And they caught something this weekend that SoFi's doing. But SoFi's trying to stay under the radar. They don't want to make an announcement about it. But these guys, I got to hand it to them. They monitor the SoFi one ads, if you will, and the uh, applications you can apply for, positions that are available with SoFi. And they came across a real doozy. So go go over there, folks, and watch the video link I have that's posted up there. And if you don't see it there at the very top under pin messages, you can scroll up in the in the chats to where Rusty Pratter donated two dollars again today. And just above that, there's a link right there you can click on. So I want you to be aware of this news because it is big news. It's good news. Just one more thing that SoFi is doing right, okay? One more thing that SoFi is doing right. Now, I want to ask you guys and gals to give me just a brief moment. I'm going to step away here. Uh, I bought the shares. I go on it at 720 and 719. Price isn't moving, so you know it's at the bottom. Nobody, they can't get anybody. Nobody else wants to sell it for this. They're just throwing away shares to one another and kissing shorts, kissing shorts this morning. And SoFi is going to have a nice week. I think we're going to see a 30 or 40 cent gain on the stock this week. And we might even see a 70 cent gain. We could easily go right on up over $8. And I think it's due to the fact that the shorts have come to the realization that this stock is not going back into the fours where they shorted it on David Chia Pansy Day. It's not going back below five. It's not going back below six. Nobody, even the naysayers that I see on YouTube that are talking about, oh, I see some, uh, since it didn't break this level, that could drop all the way to 650, and then from 650 go on up to 9 and 10. But every one of them thinks the stock is going to 9 and 10. That's the cool thing. Every single one of these YouTubers believe, just like I do, this price is going back up over 10. But they just think we might see a... a a little contraction all the way down to 650 before it goes to that. And if it did do that, I'd be as happy as a pig because I'd just buy a whole, whole crap load of it at 650. But I don't think it's going to do that. I'm of a belief that none of that's going to happen and that people are just going to keep buying this stock right on up from here all the way to the earnings call. That's what I think. All right, let me go get myself. Uh, my SoFi water is completely gone almost, so I'm going to go get some water. And I'm going to fill up my coffee cup, and then I'm going to be right back. So you guys just hold on, and you buy at the bottom. Buy at the bottom. Let me go ahead and get it right here. Hold on before I leave. Let's do this again. Review order and place it. I'm just buying 50 shares at a time. 50 at a time, folks. 718. Woo! I want to get this at the low of the day. Cha-ching! 718. Ha! That was easy. Yes, it was. And look at now, 720. Goodbye. Bye, SoFi. Uh, bye, SoFi. Is that Fintel Info a paid subscription? No, it is not. You can find it yourself. Just go right over there and put in HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash Fintel.io forward slash SS. Actually, let's just put it over here. Copy. Let's do that. This is a short interest. And another thing you can do here is you can click on this short interest tab and then you can come on down here, fails to deliver, and you can see how many they failed to deliver. Paste. There you go. Boom. There it is. There you go. There you go, stranger. There you go. Congratulations. 7,782,000 shares traded of SoFi stock this morning, everyone. And uh, I would like to ask before I go, it is 1028 right now. I'd like to ask you at 102848, because eight's my favorite number. Let's hit the like button all together, please, while uh, I buy another 
717. Here we go, folks. <clears throat> We're going to do this in 10 seconds right now. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Please press the like button at the same time together. Let's see if we can jump up from 39 likes to maybe 40 or so. And uh, as I said here, I am going to run and get something to drink, but I'm going to go ahead and fill another order here. Let's just put in a limit order at 717. Let's just change this. Review order and place it. And I will take that. Thank you very much. 717. And we're going green. 717, and we're going green. Now let's put in an order at 716, too. Review order and place at 716. Now, like I said, let me go get me something to drink here. Uh, and uh, I will be right back, everybody. Just hold on tight here. Go over and watch the video I have a link to there. Watch the video I have a link to. One other thing I want to do here on this institutional ownership, I want you all to see here on the overview page, I'm going to click on institutional ownership overview page, and I want to scroll down here because I want you all to see here a few things that are going on. Short interest at 209.9 million, 209, and I want you to look at the, here we got price range Year to date, 30% gain, 30.59. That's not a bad gain in a year. All right, 30.59. You guys might not have been aware of that, but I'm showing it to you. And uh, now we're going to go up here to SoFi Institutional Ownership. And I want you to be aware of something, folks. We have now had, we've broken over 800 uh, institutions. And that's because they want this stock, okay? Follow the money is what I keep telling everybody. And check out this, 801 institutions now long, 740 long, and that was 739 on Friday. Yep, thank you. You're welcome. But I want you to come down here and look at these institutions on that are buying SoFi stock right now. Look at all these institutions that are buying SoFi every day that they run this price down. Take a look, and you'll see right here who's been buying as of late. The heck is this thing doing? Vanguard <laughs> stepping up and increasing their shares percentage by almost 20% people from 68 million to 81 million. Why would Vanguard be doing that? <laughs> And then I show you all of these inst inst institutions who have been coming in as of late. And every one of these ones that is reducing their position, look at that, 2,000 shares. Clowns, they're ETF shorting SoFi, and they reduced by 94% of their shares. They're done. <laughs> they're like, oh, my God, this is horrible. Let's get out. Let's get out. And I want you to see these are ETFs. These are hedge funds, folks. Shorting hedge funds. This one here, reducing its position. This is an ETF, all right? And reducing 75%, okay? This is another one. ETFs, folks. But look at the ones coming in long. Indexes, people. Indexes. All indexes. On the 28th, we had one, two, three. JP Morgan, by the way. Three, four, Five, the uh, the 1,000, FTSE 1,000 comes in. Uh, these people are adding to their positions by very large numbers, 147% increase, okay? A 300% increase, all right? A 44% increase, a 7%. This is a shorter. Namura Holdings, I showed you there on the short list. Here on this page, if you go up here, you can go to short and you can go to funds shorting SoFi. And it's, it'll be interesting for you to see that many of these funds that are shorting SoFi, as you look these up, you'll find out that they are one of the ones that just reduced major positions in SoFi. 
So what you can do is cross-reference these and you can go over here to the first page I showed you just a moment ago and you can say, okay, I see they reduced their position by a bunch. What are they doing? Well, they're shorting it. They're shorting it. And you can see how many shares lately they've been reducing their short positions. See that? These people dropped it. This is this is the number of shares, the percentage in shares, negative 5, negative 22, negative 75, negative 177. All right, you see all these leaving their shorter positions. And so some, a lot of times when you go over here to the page and you click on owners and you see many of them leaving 100% of their positions, those folks are the ones shorting so far. Twenty four seven says, "Ha oh, man, they're putting SoFi for sale." Jeff Presley grabbed a few more at seven seventeen. Why not? Absolutely. That was easy. Yep. SoFi is not being driven down, folks, to scare anybody out. No one's scared here. Nobody. I'm buying more. Got to put my password in before I can review order here. All right, and place it. And I'm just grateful to all of the shorters for making this last day available at 716 this today. Uh, where do you see where we are by the end of this week, everyone? 716, I'm in. Thank you, shorts. I appreciate it. There's my buy right there. I just saw 20, 50 share order go through. Review order and place it. Oh, I'm buying here. 715 that time. What you gonna do, bad shorty boy? Take it down to 713. You think that's gonna scare anybody? You guys are shorting this in the fours. You shorts are shorting this in the fives. You're shorting it in the sixes. And now that you're having a major struggle getting it down to the sevens. <laughs> Review order and place it. 7.15 again. That's 100 there. Thank you very much. And I want to also thank each and every one of you who bought, if you were shorting, who bought your shorted shares from me when I sold them at 9.18 about three weeks ago. So I want to thank you, all the shorts who contributed, place order, I'm just doing market share orders 50 at a time. 714. Chuching. And let's go ahead and put in a limit at 713 now, just to make Shorty happy. Review order. So I'll be there to take it if they want to give it away. Limit at 713 is there. and uh, But I don't think they're going to get there. Unfortunately, I think they're done here. And I'm going to do one more market share here. Review order and place it. Let's see if we can get that again, 715. And I tell you what, folks, there are a lot of people who are, are uh, just watching and waiting. And those are the big hedge funds that are just waiting to see how low these lame-ass shorts can take it. Whoa. Wow, 715. Ah, oh, goodness, she's done. They missed it, man. They tried for that 713. I wouldn't be surprised to show them that, show them, show that on the day's range. I wouldn't be surprised at all to see them show that right now. So I'm going to refresh this page and I'm going to look at it. And uh, it shows, nope, unfortunately for shorts, it only shows 714. And what that means to me, weak. That means you're weak, shorts. You should have got down to your Satan number. Good God. How could you not get it down to 713? Pitiful. Ridiculous. Weak. Meanwhile, I'll take some more. Review order and place it. Sad that you can't do that. Spend $9 million worth of shares and can't even get it down to 7, 716 now. Can't even get the dang thing down to 713. I, think, I hear a lot of movement going on around me, circling me. There's wind. I'm feeling wind blowing. My wife is here in the room with me. She's just not making herself present. Oh, look at him trying to run another ad. Hey, you guys and gals. 
Oh, don't worry, 24-7. They'll, you'll still get a day in the morning. to They'll run it down. They're, they're going to try this every single freaking morning. They're going to try this every morning. They're going to use all their borrowed shares that they borrowed that day, and they're going to run it down if they can and scare out as many stupid people as they can. Now, by the way, again, there's no fear on a stock that is down 1.9%. Unfortunately, that doesn't inherit any fear. That doesn't... That doesn't entice anyone to get rid of the shares that they already bought two weeks ago in the sixes. So that's not scaring anybody, Shorty. You're going to have to get more powerful. You're going to have to get that 713. You're going to have to show, show. You're going to have to spend more to get that number you want so bad. Where I've got my order sitting there, 713 right now, just waiting on you. Come on, show your strength. Show how much money you can blow to get to a point. Just to get to a effing number. And I want to thank you all for being here with me. We're also not just only looking at SoFi here. We're looking at some other stocks that we've got our eyes on today. And I will get back to those in a minute here. I want to see if my order will fill at 713. And if it does, I'm going to be elated. But if it doesn't, shorts will be defeated. Okay. Because that's what they're trying for right here. They're trying to get the 713. I promise you. Uh, James Anderson. Good morning. Welcome, James. There it is. Oh, we saw it for a half a second. Let's give the shorts a golf clap for getting to the 713 for a half a second. That was powerful. You did it, man. I'm sure you just put the fear of God into every single long that's holding shares of SoFi. I bet you they're just scared beyond belief. I bet they cannot believe that it's down a whole 2% on a Monday morning at 1030. I bet they're having a hard time wrapping their head around that. <laughs> uh, I laugh because obviously that we know the game they do. We know the number they want. And you just could have all filled right along with me at 713, the low of the day, because we knew that's what they were going for. So good for you, Shorts. I'm impressed. 10 million shares traded almost. You're talking $70 million dollars. To try to get SoFi to fall enough to scare someone. <laughs> oh, all 77 of you that are here on this channel with me today, I appreciate you being here. I hope you had a great Easter. I want to thank you for being here. I want you to know that there's breaking news on SoFi. And I tell you what, this is why the price is at 713 this morning. Because of the news that's coming out, what SoFi is about to do is going to again make their business even more profitable. Go and understand this. SoFi has not made the announcement publicly yet. But what they do did is they gave away uh, an insight to what they're doing by putting out a job posting, a jobs. They're looking to fill positions in a certain area that can only mean one thing. Now, if you don't know what that is, then I encourage you to please go over to the pinned message that I have on my screen right now up there pinned and click on this where it says, check this out. Okay, because fortunately for all of us, Tevis and his buddy Tanner, the sourpuss, have put out great information this weekend that they discovered about SoFi. And this, to me, is the only reason the price is where it is right now. Because they want in on this damn stock, but they want in cheap. They always want in cheap. And so they'll spend $40 million, $50 million, $60 million, $70 million. They don't care. These people have tons of money, and they can make anything happen they want to. And if they want in on a stock, they're going to drive it down like they did this this morning. Two whole percent is a lot of money when you're buying millions of shares, which they're buying right now. Oh, they're buying them, all right. They're buying them, and they're going long from right here and now, is what I say. James Barnaby says, I just picked up 1,400 shares at 714. Right on. Yeah. That was easy. <laughs> nice. I'm just accumulating slowly. You know, I like to slow bleed the shorts. I love to just keep slow bleeding them out. <laughs> and the next thing you know, they just are freaking done. They just have done all they could and they're, they're out of shares. <laughs> and and uh, 
they they sit back and they go, oh my God, man, look how much money we had to spend this morning only to push it down 2%. And by the end of the day, the thing will be up a percent and a half or 3% today. Oh, I think it will, because I think once they get in right here now, because which, because of this because of this news that SoFi has not announced. I hope you like the way I put that. SoFi hasn't made an, a public announcement about what they're doing, but their job uh, openings that they have are making it very clear what they're about to do. All right, so don't want to uh, say anything else about it. Uh, I want you to watch the video that I have the link to up there that's posted on YouTube. And they just found out about this over the weekend. So they just posted it. And please go to that stream that I have a link to and go watch that video and understand what SoFi is about to do is going to make them even more prosperous uh, put them in more visibility, more customers, more, more, more. They just haven't made it a public announcement yet, okay? Because the, obviously you know, they don't want to. They don't want to jump the gun. Uh, they want to get it all in place and have the uh, employee that they want that they decide to hire to fill this position that they want to fill. And then they will once they get everything in order. This is the way they always operate. I any time that they've had any deal. This is the cool thing about Anthony Noto. We didn't know a damn thing about the deal with the NBA choosing uh, choosing SoFi with the NBA to be the NBA's uh, chosen bank, uh, the, the, the official bank of the NBA. That announcement by um, SoFi was not made uh, until the deal was sealed months earlier. And the reason we can know this is because NBA already had everything in place to start with, the, with as soon as the announcement was made bam we started seeing we saw the logo the sofa's logo right on the right there on the uh, on the court you know uh, this is something they had been working out for some time but didn't announce to the US to the public okay and that's the way sofi operates they don't make presumptive statements about something they plan on doing they just do it and then they announce Hey, look what we just did, okay? And this is the scary thing for these shorts here because this is the tactic that he always uses. Anthony Noto is a genius, in my opinion, because he never lets them know what he's going to do. But all of a sudden, boom, the thing is out of the bag. The cat's out of the bag and the shorts are like, damn it, he did it again to us. I mean, we're trying like hell to get this price back down to $4 where we shorted it and $5 and we're paying interest on those shorted loans and we're trying to get that back down. But this damn guy just won't stop. And that's right, he won't. You know why? Because Anthony Noto, the CEO of this company, he owns 50 plus million dollars worth of SoFi stock. He's not going to let you dim wits try to convince people that it's not worth it. Every time you guys have tried to knock SoFi's price down, he stepped in and bought a crap load of shares. And not only him, but his wife too. And she did it on May the 16th. She bought, and she's up, I think the return on her investment was 58% the last time I looked at it. She's up 58% on when she bought, right alongside her husband, Anthony. So you guys ought to understand how many companies can you work? Can you own stock in where not only the owner of the company, but the owner's wife is so convinced that she's bought stock in it? And I'm going to fight buy more here, baby, right now. Review order and place it. Oh, password. Oh, man, I just missed the low of the day there. Did you see that? It was at 7.12 for a fraction of a minute. Dang. All right, I'll still put pressure on them here. Right now, let's just do it. Place an order, 50 shares. Let's just keep it on them, man. Let's just keep the pressure on them. Let's force their hand. We're forcing their hand right now. 14. 714. Well, I did fill at 713, so that's good. I see that one filled. I can get away. I can miss the low by one, but I'm going to put in a 712 by now. <laughs> Look at that. I already place it. There it is. Ding. 
low of the day. Well, merci beaucoup, whoever just did that. You know, I got news for you. That share just left your not wanting shorted borrowed ass and went over to me. Who's going to hold this thing and sell it over $10? I might sell it over 11 That share might be sold over $12 in less than 90 days. It might be sold over $12 on uh, May the 6th while I'm on my way to uh, to the Cape Cod area. On my honeymoon, my 20th year anniversary, which is May the 8th, I'm going to be in Cape Cod with my beautiful wife. And Martha's Vineyard is on the list. And uh, I'm going to be doing some of that trip on the money I've made off of SoFi over the last year, buying it at fours and selling it at 1020 and buying it in the sixes and selling it at 1013 and buying it down in the sevens and then selling it at... Uh, 1049 and then buying it down in the, I mean, how many times have we done this together? Everybody who's been here with me a long time. I mean, we've been killing it on this stock, man. And we're going to kill it by it here today at 712 just now at the low of the day. Oh, and by the way, again, it is my belief that not a single soul in the whole world who is long on SoFi would sell it at $7 and 14 cents. Uh, nobody who makes investments for the long term, who is a long term wise, savvy investor would sell a stock down 2%. Nobody. All right. So don't get, don't get the false perception that people are freaked out over SoFi being down 2% and they're selling it right now. That's not how it works in the real world, folks. This is manipulation because of the news that's getting drifted out there. And if you don't know what's happening, get yourself over to this video that I have pinned. It's pinned up there in the conversation in the chats. And there's two links to it I have in the chat. And it's a video on YouTube that explains what SoFi is secretly doing. Okay? They have not made this announcement yet. But please go up to my pinned message at the top Click on that video that was put out by on YouTube this weekend by Tevis and please watch that 15 minute video and understand the move that SoFi is about to make. All right. They're not, they have not made it a public announcement what they're doing, but they never do. They never do. They always implement a program. They get it going. They have it working. They have it functioning. It's in place. Just like this proof of concept deal with the bank, the top five bank. They, they didn't tell anybody in advance, we're about to, or we're going, or we're looking to try to join with the top five bank, and we think we're going to get them to try out our software. And we think They don't do that. That's not how SoFi works. SoFi gets it done, and then they let you know. And this is the problem for the shorts. Over time, this is going to become a major problem for them that each time that this guy's ready to make a move, he doesn't tell them ahead of time. There's no way. They don't have any indicators. They just get the news. Bam! All of a sudden, it's out there. Boom! They signed a deal with the NBA. Boom! They got a deal with one of the top five banks. I mean, SoFi and Anthony Noto are genius in that regard, keeping things hush-hush until it's already in play and it's already functioning and it's already happening. And then they break the news. And then the shorts are screwed again. They keep hearing it time after time. I'm telling you to this day, folks, out of all those 216 million shares shorted or 209 million, some of those are still shorted from in the $4 and in the fives and in the sixes. You have no idea the to the depth of how low those shorted positions were where many are still holding from. And a matter of fact, you also don't have any idea how many of those 801 institutions, because we had another one join today, you don't have any idea how many of those institutions have been in on SoFi from over the 20s, when it was over the 20s and the 19 and $18. They were all coming in then when the price was in that range. They were all coming in on SoFi when the price was in that range. I'll show and prove it to you right now. The price of SoFi was at $24 here. And look how many institutions were accumulating SoFi shares while the price was down here at 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12. Folks, there's tons of institutions still holding 
positions on SoFi that are down on their positions and they are still holding because they still believe and they still have faith and they understand how the game is played, okay? They understand they got in here and other institutions wanted in on SoFi too. So they started buying and buying and buying. Every single share that was available was getting bought up, bought up, bought up, and then resold. They were accumulating them through this stage. Folks, they owned this stock, many of them still, from above $20, and they own it from 19s, and they own it in 18s, and 17s, and 16s, and they're just waiting. And what they're doing now is on days like today, I've already shown you this, they're accumulating. Every time the shorts try to drive the price down, the, the, the longs and the institutions that I just showed you are accumulating more. They're dollar cost averaging down here. And that's the biggest dilemma for the shorts. They're not going to get back down to the fours, five, sixes, because when they get into these low sevens, all these institutions start saying, shit, we're owning, we own this stock from 19 and 20 and 18 and 17. Why don't we lower our dollar cost average by $5 or by $7 and buy more here? And that's what they're doing because they have the insight too. They know they can see the visibility. They can see the branding. They can see the recognition by the company. I've tried to tell you people, if you would have asked, 100 people on the street a year ago, how many of you have heard about SoFi? One out of 100. Now you ask 100 people on the street and they've gone over 10. So they, that's a vast improvement over a year's time. And look at this price now starting to go right back up. Peabody's Raw Honey says, yep, way to go, James. Just picked up 1,400 shares at 714 and another 1,000 at 712. Yes. And making money. Just like me. Peabody's Raw Honey. Whole market is red today. Great buy point for SoFi. Heck, at any price, is great buy. Well, let's go, baby. That's right. That's right, Peabody's Raw Honey. Good, good, good. Watching me buy it at the low of the day today. I love it, everyone. And I want to thank you all for being here on this channel. We got almost 80 people. I'd like to ask you right now to please do me a favor if you wouldn't mind. And while we watch SoFi's price now steadily rise for the rest of the day and the rest of the week and the rest of the month, I'd like to ask you to hit the like button at the same time with me at 10.56 and 48 seconds. 10.56 and 48 seconds. Do not hit it until we get there. And that way we'll be using 56, which is a multiple of 48 of the number 8. And we'll be doing 48, which is a multiple of the number 8. So let's do that together. Uh, please help me out by hitting at 10.56 and 48 seconds, 20 seconds from now. And SoFi is now at 7.17. And here we go. We're going to start counting down to hit the like button now. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. Five, four, three, two, one. Boop. Please press the like button. And let's see if we can get up to about 60 likes or more. And look at that SoFi price. Now that the shorts flat ran out of all their borrowed shares, apparently. It becomes so obvious, doesn't it? And look at what time they started this morning. 9.45, basically. Ran it all the way down till they ran out of freaking shares. And then the price immediately jumps up freaking 5%. This is the thing I love about it. Look how gradual the drop was. Gradual, gradual, gradual. But look how steep the recovery is. See, they work it down, step it down, work it down, step it down, work it down, step it down. But when it's the bottom and everybody realizes it, and they buy the crap out of it, and then the price rockets up, man, at a much steeper angle than they are able to slowly work it down using up their borrowed shares. This is why the price jumps so radically upwards after they slowly stair-step it down, see? And then they have no control over it anymore. Look at that. That thing is just rocketing up now. Congratulations, everybody who bought with me. Yeah, Drew Can Lancaster, cat knows best. Let's go take a look at SOUN today. Same thing going on with SOUN and uh, drove it down the same way. See that? 
See how gradual, stair-stepping, 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 and then when it turns around, choose, thing is just taken off like a rocket ship. Yep, 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 yep. New looks good here, 13 cents down, beautiful, 10X, hanging in there, hanging in there well. Look at that SoFi chart. Oh, my God. I love it when they do that. And now what are they going to do? What are they going to do? How are they going to stop it from going up from here? How are they going to stop it? Everybody sees what they did. <laughs> now, like I said, I was going to go get some more coffee here a little bit ago, and I'm going to go get it now. So just give me a minute to refresh my coffee, and I'm going to fill up my SoFi, my SoFi blue uh, mug, and I'll get that full of water, and I'll be back here. Y'all just hang loose and... Look at all these wonderful people here that have given to this channel, and I'll be right back, all right? These are the donators who keep this channel here and running right here. Thank you very much. J.P. Panek, Rusty Pratter, Cham, Jeff Presley, Rick Lawrence, Daniel Davis, Armand, Brew Tank Outdoors, Elaine Nelson, D.B., Charche, and Danny Dimes 10. Thank you. Now I'll be right back.
right, everybody. Catfish is back. I'm out of here. All right, man. Sorry it took so long. I was trying to see my wife off, who still hasn't left. So I'm just going to come on back here with you guys. And uh, I'm done trying to see her off. Uh, I tried for 15 minutes. And uh, now we're just going to move forward. Buying this stock today at this price has been a steal. Everyone, I want to thank you for being here with me right now. Um, and hopefully you guys, yo, yeah. Jeff Presley says, uh, I look for sound to pop over 650 this week. Oh, yeah. Yep. Jeff Presley, well, hopefully uh, we might be choppy mark conditions this week from the PCE report Friday. I think the Bulls might be nervous on rate cuts reducing back to only one or two. All right. <sighs> well, I can tell you who's nervous right now. The freaking Bears are nervous, folks. The Bears are nervous, and they've got every reason to be. You got this sec, this company, SoFi, executing every plan that they've said they were going to exactly in the fashion they've said. And every single one of the fuddies out there and the naysayers have been wrong about this stock. Every single one of them. And uh, it's not going to change. They're going to be wrong all the way until the price is $25 and $35 and $40 a share. And they'll all be losing major money, uh, including... All of those who have now jumped up to a higher, uh, the highest ever, ever amount of shares being shorted right now on SoFi. So uh, I am refreshing the screen over here uh, while I wait for um, it to pop back up. I want you to know that uh, I am very certain that nobody's selling SoFi shares down 1.8% today, not anybody real, and that every borrowed share just left the hands of those borrowers and went over to people that want it for long term. And we've been seeing that every single day recently. So uh, I've now refreshed this screen over here and go and see the latest video that was put up on YouTube by Tevis. I've been telling everybody here this morning, please get over there, watch the video put up by Tevis. Uh, I put a link to it. It's up there as a pinned message right now, and I have a link to it. So please get over there and check out that link. Uh, that I have in the pinned message to hear what Tevis and Tanner discovered about SoFi over the weekend. And it's good news, people. SoFi is going to be branching into another area, folks, and they are just expanding and growing and making the right decisions time and time again. And uh, so I want to thank you all for, again, being patient while I was gone there for a little bit. But uh, I always try to see my wife off with a beautiful kiss and a hug and have a safe trip and all that, but I couldn't get that today, um, and so I finally gave up waiting for her to leave, and um, so no sugar smacks for Catfish Tyler today before the departure of my beautiful wife, And uh, but I'm um, here with you guys to watch this SoFi price rise the rest of the afternoon and try to be contained. The volume is very low on it, so I'm not concerned about that. And the entire market is red, by the way, in case you hadn't paid any attention to it, including the Russell, which is actually down the most. The Russell index is today the opposite of what we saw last week. It's actually the most descended uh, pullback in, in all the indexes. Uh, but again, I want to thank each and every one of you for being here with me. And I'm going to make one last attempt to go give my wife a kiss goodbye. So just give me a second here and uh, see if she's left yet. And uh, if I can give her one little final kiss goodbye. So hold on. Thank you.
All right. I got 60 people here being very patient and waiting. I appreciate it. I am back. And we'll get back to this main page now. Ah, a little bit of music for you in case you heard that. Oh, my little stairway to heaven. Hope you like music. I think the Bulls might be nervous on rate cuts, reducing back to only 1% or 2%. Two. Ah, I hear you. Hey, look at that SoFi stock, folks. Everybody, $7.16. Down a whole 13 cents today. And uh, 13, ladies and gentlemen, they're trying to hold it down 13 cents. Good luck with that, Shorty. Having run out of all your borrowed shares, it became very obvious when they did that. And uh, JT, yep, y'all bailing suckers. There's nobody bailing here. There's none. There's no bailing going on, okay? There is no bailing going on. The only place there's any bailing going on is going to be out in the fields here in the fall when the spring wheat in the, has grown and they start harvesting uh, of the hay and so forth. And that's the only bailing that's going to be going on. There's no real bailing. Nobody's bailing out at 2% down. There's no fear in the marketplace, 2% down. There's no scare their tactic. This is just, that's all it is, is a scare tactic. And a way to accumulate shares for those that know that the price is going back up over $10 and 11 and 12. And uh, they're the ones responsible for the price being where it is now. But sadly for them, they shorted SoFi in the fours and the fives and the sixes. And uh, so, too bad, so sad, but <laughs> you can't get this damn thing back under 713 right now. You're in big crap, folks. They are in freaking trouble, man. And they are borrowing and borrowing and borrowing and digging the hole deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. Now down exactly 13 cents, now only down 12. So we bought in at the right time. Congratulations, everybody who purchased with me today at $7.13 and $7.12. I'm very grateful for your being here and making money with me on SoFi every single day by doing so. Anytime they try to take it down to the low and we buy it on that day, that's a more power to us. Here comes my beautiful now to say farewell. Thank you very much, beautiful. And it's nice to get a kiss goodbye. And I hope that you have a very safe ride and watch out for the deer, deer, if you come home late. I don't know when she's going to be returning, my mystery woman. She heads out the door and then we don't see her anymore and we don't know when she's coming back through the door, but we stay adored with my adorable. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you for being here. We're watching SoFi as it increases in uh, value. And that's going to be happening the rest of the day. You'll be seeing the price go up and up and up. And pretty soon it's going to be green. It'll be green tomorrow. It'll be green on Wednesday. It'll be green on Thursday. And it'll be green on Friday. And then I presume almost every day next week, it will be green every day next week. And uh, then the next week, I believe it'll be green half of the week. And by then, I expect the price could possibly be over $10. Uh, many of you might think I'm out of my mind to say such things, but I've seen it so many times already that I'm of the very, very specific belief that we're going to see it over 10 again, and we're going to see that between now and earnings. Now, one week and a half before earnings, they will then yank it back down to try to scare anybody else out like they did on the, the July 31st when we hit 1170. Four days before that, they drove the price down to 894 before it shot off to 1170. And 10 days before that, it was already over 10. So it was over 10, hit 1016. They had tacked it down for six days in a row to 894. Two days later, boom, 1170. Expect the same thing. Do not be surprised. Don't be caught off guard. Do not be in shock. You should understand that this is the method that they have been doing now on SoFi for the last year and a half, driving the price down into the sevens and back over 10. Down in the sixes, back over 10. Down in the fives, back over 10. Down even into the fours and back over 10. So this is what they like to do, and they like to do it repeatedly. And they're not going to stop doing it. They're not going to quit doing it. So have faith, people. These money-hungry scoundrels who've been doing this over the year and a half, they're not going to stop doing it now. I can guarantee you that. They're not going to. It's worked too well for them, and they're too spoiled by what they've been able to do to the retail market on this stock for too long. And I'm here to let you be the ones to take advantage of it. 
And so you can recognize what they're doing, how they've done it, and how they've done it time and time and time again. And how they're going to do it again because it's been so successful for them. All right? That's what I believe. Mm. JT. Yeah, we're suckers, all right. Bought SoFi this morning at $7.12 and seven thirteen, seven fourteen. Bought it all through there. I'm such a sucker. I'm a sucker that, you know, will be selling it over $10, over 11 and over 12 And that's me. Call me Mr. Sucker. Sucker Cat. Oh, uh, yeah. And uh, I'm happy to be a sucker. All right. I am. I'm glad that I've su been sucked into buying this stock at $4.45 a share. I was thrilled when I was sucked into buying it at $4.59 a share. I was overjoyed when I was suckered into buying this at seven at six dollars and forty four cents a share, and six sixty six. Yep, I was a sucker when I bought it at four sixty six and four sixty seven. Picked up a five thousand shares there. Oh yeah, that's me, Mister Sucker. Call me Mister Suckerberg. <laughs> oh yeah, say ladies and gentlemen. So uh, I want to thank you all for being here with me while we try to make a ton of money off of this stock and other ones today. We're looking at S-O-U-N. Oh my God, I can't believe it. Mary should be back over here soon. <laughs> B-I-T-F looking good, even though they tried to run it down. There's no running that thing down from there, folks. This thing is going to be equaling the, the production rate of Bitcoin that CLSK is currently at. And CLSK is around $20 a share, everybody. So this company, BITF, is about to be processing Bitcoin at the same rate as a company that's rated at $20 a share right now. So just pick some up. That would be my suggestion. Again, I am not a financial advisor, but I also suggested you might want to buy SoFi at $7.13, five cents lower than where we are now. Mr. Zuckerberg. <laughs> I am still hearing noises throughout the house. B-I-T-F. Looking good, folks. Looks like she's ready to respond very well, just as good as SoFi's about to do. And don't be surprised at all to see SoFi just keep going right on up, gradually and steadily and slowly, day by day by day, even with the daily manipulation efforts in the morning that we just saw. Be ye not surprised to see it just keep climbing. And uh, pretty soon, we're not going to be down 12 cents. We're not even going to be down 11 or 10 or even 9. And we won't be down 8 and we won't be down 7. We'll be up and we'll be that other direction, green. You just have to be patient, folks. Patient and be skillful with your purchases. And you have to be, uh, you have to be able to recognize the opportunities when they become yours. And we just did. And we just took advantage of it. So thank you very much. Very happy for those of you that bought with me just now, including James Burnaby Fishing. Very, very wise of you to jump along, uh, jump in there with me while I was acquiring shares of SoFi. And uh, my phone I see here is completely dead. <laughs> so if you'll give me just a second here, let me go over and get my charger, which is not in here, and uh, get my phone charged up here. Hold on just a minute. And I know I'm taking some frequent breaks, but I will be right back. Don't worry, it won't take long. Let me just get this. Find my charger, wherever it may be. And then I'll be right back after this, this brief break.
Okay, everybody, let's get back to the show. It's Catfish Tyler. Hey, everyone. All right, thank you for being here with me today, sharing in SoFi happiness, SoFi abundance, SoFi growth, and SoFi growing day by day. And uh, I'm going to show you how that is happening. If you watch that video that I have a link to, 716. Cheers, everyone. Hang in there. I think you guys are all going to be fine here this afternoon. You're all going to be very pleased. And uh, especially if you just accumulated several shares along with me at the uh, $7.12 price range. And uh, folks, when we have this kind of volume level right here, folks, this isn't going to be what sustains us. We're going to be seeing more volume coming in on this stock to push it up, hopefully. And that'll just be over time as we achieve more and more of our success. Now, I see right now there's a big delay between the screen and my uh, time. So I'm going to refresh this to up to the uh, moment. And then we'll be right in time with where we are on the camera. And then I'll be responding to you folks at the proper time. Let's see here. All right, got my phone charging now properly, and uh, we're looking at some other stocks here today as well as the ones that we currently have on our li list, uh, and we're going to look, be looking at another one called F-Cell right now and see how that one's doing, and anybody else that has a suggestion of a stock that you want me to take a look at, uh, be more than happy to take a look at. Uh, I'm going to take another one here, TCNNF. This is True Leaf Cannabis, and I expect to see them making a very good possible move to the upside with some federal approval of everything coming down the pike. And I believe that will happen here any day soon. Uh, and that looks good. All right. All right. We're also going to take a look at another one here today, and that is Shopify, S-H-O-P. Many of you may be holders of this along with me, and if you are, congratulations. We're just looking across the board at several different stocks, other, other than SoFi, which is going to be fine, folks. I, I can, like I said, I can reassure everyone, no true long would be selling today with SoFi's price at seven sixteen. Y'all be being suckers. Yes, indeed, <clears throat> nobody. Nobody. And the entire market is red. Everything is red, dead red. Crude oil up another full 1.2%. And uh, that's not helping us at the pumps. As you can see, the price per gallon has gone through the roof. Um, please take the time to go over and watch a video that was just produced by Tevis on YouTube. I'm trying to make sure everyone tunes in to that video today. Uh, Tavis and his buddy Tanner Boy Scaredy Cat. Uh, they did a video together, and I commend them for, for their due diligence and discovering what's going on with SoFi because it's good. It's another great development, and SoFi hasn't led on about it yet, and SoFi hasn't told anyone what's happening yet. And that's the typical method of operation of this SoFi company. They get it all in place, and they've got it all done. They've got, let's just look at that NBA deal, okay? You, none of us had any clue that there was anything going on with the NBA until the day they said they had just been announced as the bank, the official bank of the NBA, okay? So, fine. Now, huh, I'm going to show you guys something else here, <clears throat> I want you to see this. I hope I don't get any kind of copyright infringement for uh, this, but um, boys and girls, I'm going to pull this screen up here big and I'm going to try and put my microphone up so you can hear what I'm going to show you. But it's actually more about the visual part of this than the hearing part of it, okay? So don't, don't, uh, 
And I'll try to make this steady by using my my uh, camera thing here. There we go. And let us get this up here where you can hear this. And what we're going to be talking about is visibility, brand awareness, okay? So look right here. And it says right now, YouTube is not receiving enough video to maintain smooth streaming. As such, viewers will experience buffering. <clears throat> so uh, I'm not sure if right now is the proper time to be doing this. Maybe I should hold off. Someone please let me know, are you getting my signal um, smoothly or am I experiencing buffering? But. Hopefully, we'll get this signal back up to full screen, and you can see what I'm about to show you. That's my stepson right there. And we're going to be going here to... Folks, I'm not a, I'm not a fan at all of Taylor Swift. But I will tell you one thing. I watched the concert that was put on at the SoFi Stadium, okay? And hopefully you guys will be able to see this and uh, understand the what, what this is all about with this branding, okay? All right? So there she is right there, Taylor Swift, okay? And uh, hopefully you'll be able to see this. Let me do this first. Actually, I think I'm going to take a tissue here and we'll clean off my screen on my camera for one so you can get a very nice view just give me a second whoa that's way too much water but we'll go like that and then we'll use this napkin here to clear off my screen all right all right so i'm showing you this because I want you to see the visibility. Oh my gosh, catfish, man. Get with a program, bro. Ugh. Okay, here we go. Let's hit the play button. What the hell is this thing doing? God almighty. Please hold. Oh, boy, howdy. I'm not making this very easy for you guys. I know. I'm sorry. But it'll be worth it once I get it there. Okay, right here, folks. She's on stage and she's performing. I don't know why I don't have any volume. Let me try and turn this up. Oh, my God. No way. Hold on. Come on, volume. Give me some noise. SoFi right there in the background. Okay, so that's just one of them. Where SoFi was in the headlines, and I got to get my damn headphones on. Can't believe I've screwed this up so bad. I can't hear what kind of volume you're getting. Now I will. All right, hang on here, and I want to show you the next video.
So that's another one right there where she says, you're making me feel like I'm going to be doing a sold out show at SoFi Stadium tonight. All right. And I'm showing you this because, folks, there were many, many times that SoFi became put their put themselves out there and she was helping and she was helping. Uh, God, dog it. Hold on. Shit. <sighs> Here we are. And these people are absolutely mad about this girl, by the way. They're they're completely mad about her. SoFi Stadium right up there at the top, folks. And it, it was great. Everything that I saw, they, there's just time and time again, they put themselves here. Ah, it's the same damn video. Here's, here's how the thing started. This is how the concert started. There's SoFi Stadium. So anyway, uh, folks, it was just, there it is right there, SoFi Stadium, another part where they were right there. They showed this from the overhead. Uh, let me see if I got it here. Hold on. And let me tell you something. This girl played for three hours. Okay, I already showed you that one. Each one of these is going to be where SoFi got themselves. There it is again. So that's another time that they were in there. Hold on. There it is again. Memories you're going to have tonight with me at this SoFi Stadium. She said it right there, and I hope that you're appreciating this. SoFi, 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 people. Wow, look at this. <laughs> Just one more time that they got themselves in the highlight.
Here they are again. So there's just so many times during this concert. There it is right there. Look at that picture right there. SoFi Stadium's right over her head, and I don't know why I didn't fo I focused it off of it. Right there on that image, folks, her head, the, she, she's standing there, and there, right there behind her is SoFi Stadium, okay? And they zoom in right over her shoulder on, on that right there, folks. So I'm just showing you that all throughout a three-hour and 20-minute concert, Unbelievable. This girl was sold out show seven nights in a row, singing three and a half hours every night. I was amazed by that. Yep. Can't hear a thing. Yep. Not working. Just talk about it. Not going to uh, translate well. Yeah, that's all right. I'm, I'm, uh, you can see the pictures, right? You can see the, the visibility. You don't have to hear any music. You can see the pictures. You can see what it's, what's doing, what's going on here. SoFi Stadium. And it blows my mind. You can't hear anything. I hear it fine. I can hear it over my speakers on my headphone perfectly. I hear it very well. Sorry that you're not hearing it. But this is Taylor Swift's concert. And this is how many times SoFi got their headlines out there. Look at that. SoFi. So hopefully, uh, good morning from sunny Southern California. Just got passed by SoFi Stadium. Looks good. <laughs> How do you like that? How do you like that? Taylor Swift in a three and a half concert, hour concert, just putting on and she did it seven nights in a row, and she did stuff like this, and SoFi was center stage. Hopefully I got, got this right. No, it doesn't look right, hold on. Oh yeah, it's gonna play right now. Oh, shoot. It is so hard to do this, folks. <laughs> anyway, there was just time after time that this 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 show, and I mean, it was an awesome show, people. I mean, it was an awesome show that they showed, and uh, I, I was impressed. I mean, I'm not a big Taylor Swift fan, like I said, but SoFi was all over it, folks. SoFi was all over this. All over the screen, SoFi was all over the screen. There was time and time again <clears throat> that they got her on the screen. And uh, there was some cool stuff they did here at this concert, I have to admit. And SoFi, like I said, they got right to themselves, right on this big, massive screen and in this stadium time and time again. And now I can't really show you this. I don't know what's happening to it. But I'm okay. I'm done with that. You got it. You got the message. You got the point. This stadium was full of people, full, slam full of people of all ages, folks. It was insane. I mean, it was crazy to see it. And uh, just so many people that are just crying in the audience, crying in her presence. And uh, I wanted to show that with you. I just wanted to share that with you because I thought SoFi did a great job of getting their name out there on that production. It, if you haven't seen it yet... Go to uh, Disney Plus and check it out. I mean, if you got nothing better to do with three and a half hours of your time, and I'll admit that after a while, some of the songs all start to sort of, sort of sound a little quite along the same way, but uh, she's talented, man. Plays the acoustic guitar, plays the piano, 
and uh, she's not bad to look at. Uh, and there you go, folks. You just got to see what I wanted you to see was how many times SoFi stayed in the in, in the on the big screen up there for him and all over the stadium. Yep, twenty four seven says I I I heard her singing. LOL. Yep. Good morning from sunny Southern California. Mopar says just past SoFi Stadium looks good. So I wanted you all to see all that there because there's just time after time that SoFi was right there in the middle of the screen. And uh, I try to play these things for you so you can see. Uh, and they did a good job, man. And I'm looking at what I just showed you and a lot of it I'm not really seeing uh, there at the last. But I hope you got to see some of that anyway because folks, SoFi did a great job of putting themselves in, in the front of people's visible visible very visual during that concert and had taylor swift out there saying man i hope you remember this is all of your life is the night you were with me performing in sofi stadium you know and i was just like holy crap man that was awesome so go over to disney plus if you want it's called uh taylor swift uh eras tour tour and uh i want you to know that uh what she had done was she had for every single tour that she did, it was for each album that she had released. And, but there was a period for about five or six years during COVID or something. She didn't release any albums. And oh, she, I'm sorry, she did the albums, but she wasn't touring to each album. So on this tour, she decided to cover all like four or five albums of music on the one tour and, and one concert. But can you imagine? I mean, it's just a, it's just a testimony to that girl's resilience to be able to sing and perform like that for for three and a half hours every single night while she was there in Los Angeles. Unbelievable, people. I mean, you don't know what kind of you don't know how much that took uh, her ability to, to 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 be able to do that. It, to me, is phenomenal. I've toured all over the country playing in a band before, and I know what it what it does to you. And to play, we were just playing, well, you know, clubs and nightclubs and stuff. But, um, and we had some big venues too. But you know, for the most part, we just did clubs, and we we had a lot of good times. But man, it's rigorous. It's hard. It's tough on you. And so I commend her for being able to do that. Uh, <clears throat> for those of you that are with me, um, I'm talking about. On Disney Plus, there's a Taylor Swift concert. Watch it and watch how many times you will see SoFi's name in that concert. You'll see them just time and time again. And in two points in the concert that I listened to, I only listened to about two hours of it. And then I just was like, okay, I, got, I can't sit here and watch her for three and a half hours. But she played for three hours and 27 minutes straight. And uh, that's that's hard to do, folks. That's not, that, to me, that is just mind-boggling that she had the ability physically and vocally to be able to pull it off because, man, that's a lot of stuff going on and a lot of memory, everything choreographed. Every move that she makes was choreographed, you could tell. It's so professional. And uh, I didn't know a Democrat could work three hours straight. Good job, Mrs. Swift. <laughs> well, uh, that one right there means we need to get a light coming up here. So what time is it? 11.58. <laughs> Let's get some likes on the screen here coming up at 11.58 and 48 seconds. Come on. So we're going to count down from 11.58.38 to 11.58.48 and hit that like button. Here we go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Please depress the like button now. Uh, that's worth liking for sure. And... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, it is amazing. Go over and uh, 
I wouldn't doubt it if you could find some of it on YouTube too. that concert, probably people, you know, posted stuff from their own cameras because everyone had a camera in the place, all videotaping. I mean, it's amazing to see. Uh, but I, I'm showing you that video uh, because I wanted you to realize the amount of exposure that that gave to SoFi because every single night the stadium was full of, I don't know how many, how many, What is the seating capacity of SoFi Stadium? 70,240 people. <laughs> 70,240 people every single night. <laughs> I mean, it was a sold out show, seven nights, right? <clears throat> yep. So basic advertising, yes, but using a Goliath in the music industry to get their word out. Two points in the concert actually physically saying the word SoFi in. <clears throat> she goes, oh, y'all are absolutely making me feel so good right now. <laughs> making me feel like I'm about to do a sold out show here in SoFi Stadium, she said. I'm glad you guys are able to watch this with me, the ones of you that are just tuning in. There's a lot of people that are starting to come over now. It might have been because I started showing someone a little more attractive than myself on the screen, and maybe we got some likes coming in or something. But, um, yeah, she she flat out says it. And let me see if I can find this here. Hold on. Oh my God, catfish! What the heck are you doing? When did you become so fumble fingered? Ah, just touch this stupid screen that jumps off of what I want to do. Ah. Do you hear what she said there, folks? Listen close. <laughs> it is so cool. Hold on. I can't believe it. I mean, I'm incapable of doing this. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I am having such a hard time doing this. <laughs> I was standing behind Taylor Swift in the McDonald's line after her concert. I'm a Republican. I was behind her, so I had to pay. Wait a minute. Uh -oh. I can't wait to read the rest of this. <laughs> Mopar. Uh... God dang it, man. Let's try this one more time. Stupid old me. I cannot. I can't function this effing thing. Here's, let's listen to it one more time. You don't have to watch if you don't want to, but you can listen. Oh, yeah. That's right, folks. You're making me feel like I get to do a sold-out show at SoFi Stadium tonight. And uh, then you got this here. Yeah, baby. Show us that rear view in SoFi. Uh-huh. That's right. I'll take it. And there was also a point where she was sitting and uh, playing her acoustic. 
And this is it right here. Check out what she says here, everybody. First of all, there's the SoFi emblem at the start. Let me tell you about a little dream I have for this evening. See, 17 years of her music, five albums or something, she's going to do. Oh, yeah. Woo. Do it to it, SoFi. Get your word out there. Get your name out there. Get your ability. I prefer your singing exposure. <laughs> Thank you, Mopar. Hey, Mopar, on Saturday, you missed it, but I did a little concert of about... Uh, I don't know, I played maybe 15 of my original songs on Saturday. I had a couple hundred people over here listening. And uh, so if you go to one of my last live feeds, if you want to hear some of me play in a, several songs uh, in a row, I did play uh, quite a few. I went from the letter A to the letter I in my uh, music, original music uh, repertoire. <clears throat> He says, I was standing, uh, Mopar says, I was standing behind Taylor Swift in the McDonald's line after her concert. I'm a Republican. I was behind her, so I had to pay. <laughs> uh, Masticate, I prefer your singing and exposure to 55 people. There you go. Yeah, that's a very cool comment. I appreciate you saying this such. But I am just trying to let you know, man, that 70,000 people were in that stadium every single night of the week. And listening to her say that about SoFi Stadium and SoFi, SoFi, SoFi. And then not only that, but then even on the video that's on Disney Plus that you know has to have been looked at by 20 million people at least, that concert. <laughs> I don't know how many's looked at it, but I bet you that a lot of people have watched that. Uh, and there you go. That's the exposure with SoFi getting their name, their brand out there, their branding. And uh, that's just one of the things I wanted to show you today uh, that I thought was important to show. And I got something else here for you. So we're going to go right on here and we're going to take a look at this right now. We got some interesting numbers to show you about SoFi. And I'm always digging on the weekend. I dig, 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 dig it. Can you dig it? All right, here we go. Hold on. We get these numbers here in a second. And then I got to get all these videos off my phone or my wife will kill me. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> By the way, my wife and I went to a very historic place over the weekend. In case you didn't know, I'm going to just show you some other stuff, just some personal stuff. Some people like to know a little bit more about the people they're listening to. So here's me and my wife, Cheryl, and what we did on Easter. This is us on Easter Sunday. And uh, there, that's supposed to be a, behind us there is the tomb of Jesus and the roll away stone. And uh, we went to one of our favorite places. It's called the English Inn. And I'm going to show you a few pictures of this. This is a place that's been around. This is one of the beginning uh, days of the car industry. This gentleman who owned this place built this unbelievable house on a river over in a place called Eaton Rapids and the 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 rooms and the furniture and the old style and folks this place yes it does have friendly spirits in it but this is one of the bathroom areas and these are what typically the beds look like and <clears throat> this is down one of the hallways where they have some gorgeous woodwork stuff 
and another one of the beds in one of the bedrooms. And they let you walk around and go into any of the rooms that are not occupied. You can walk in and check them out. So we did, and that's what we did over Easter. And they have a dining room down there. Exquisite, the highest end dining that, that you can actually think of, folks. And it is insane. It's another beautiful tiled bathroom. And uh, <clears throat> so I just wanted to share you what, what we did. Huh. There's my beautiful right there, Cheryl. Enjoying a nice fine glass of wine. And we did dine there. She had uh, beef wellington. Check out this gorgeous, gorgeous st stairwell. I don't know, I'm not talking about SoFi right now, but I'm just showing you something we did this weekend. In case you're interested in seeing that. Beautiful old place. And uh, they also have some cottages. The cottages are just... Mm. Eaton Rapids, Michigan, folks. Old English Inn. The, the cottages they have are more updated, uh, more contemporary. But uh, <clears throat> anyway, um, <clears throat> they're, but they're right down on the river, these cottages. You can rent them out. They're like little bungalows. <clears throat> and uh, with nice little uh, back porches on them where you can sit and just look at the river. And it's just a beautiful place. The grounds of the place are incredible. <clears throat> so I just wanted to share that with you. Uh, but I, I forgot to share, share with you the numbers that I took pictures of here. So just let me find find these numbers that I think you'll like when it comes to SoFi. I hope I took pictures of them. Here, we, here it is, is this it? Uh, shares on loan right now, 248,000,089, 248,000,089 shares on loan right now. <clears throat> shares available were down to 250,000 shares. They're maxing it out, folks, to try to hold it down with borrowed shares. A war of attrition they can't keep up. Well, doggone it, I don't see these numbers that I took. They're very good numbers for SoFi. Trust me, folks, doggone it. Maybe I'll find them here yet. Uh, darn. No, well, maybe I didn't take them. Anyway, all right, I'm going to get on moving here. I can't just sit here and wait and try to find this on this phone. I don't know. Maybe I somehow deleted them off of there. I don't know. I don't see them. Uh, but I did have some good numbers there that I wanted to show with you. But I want you to be aware. Read my pinned message to everybody today. Please do that. Please read my pinned message. Uh-oh. Lo and behold, SoFi now suddenly, after shorties are all out of their shorty shares, price is at seven nineteen, up seven cents from where we bought it earlier. Everybody, congratulations! And uh, it's just going to keep climbing today. And as I said, don't be surprised to see it green virtually every single day for the rest from now until the uh, right before earnings, maybe a week, week, ten days before earnings. So, yep, that's my call, that we're going to see this price go up every single day from now until 10 days before earnings. And I have a reason for believing that. And uh, let's just see if I'm right. <clears throat> we'll all get to watch it together. 16 million shares traded today make it fairly easy if they're borrowing as much as they have. And uh, let's go take a look over here at the cost to borrow. By the way, institutional ownership, again, as you can see, increasing, 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 and increasing. Nothing but increasing. There's no 
There's been no pullback. And in fact, today we went up to 801 institutions. That was easy. Yeah, that was easy. 801 now, folks. Not 800. And that was a long position they took up. Go figure that. 719 now, and I predicted this. I told you we were going to go from 13 cents down to 12 cents down to 11 cents down. And by here in about an hour, we'll be seven cents down, and then we'll be three cents down, and we won't be down anymore. We'll all be feeling good. Uh, Manal, SoFi, CGC, PLTR, and TLRI. All right. There you go. Jeff Presley, Rusty, Mopar, LOL. Yeah. Jojo, how are you doing today? I'm sorry that you couldn't just talk about it. It's not going to translate well. I understand. Jojo, that was... Uh... <laughs> Don't worry. I cannot talk a Chinese or any Oriental. From time to time, I try to make us so all the people all over the world understand me perfectly. <laughs> and I, not, I try to make fun of people. I love everybody, and I like to teach everyone on channel here how to talk a Chinese. <laughs> Even though I'm not a very good, I have a good accent because I practice hard. <laughs> Those of you know Catfish Tyler, no, he like I have a good time and laugh, 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 laugh your ass off. <laughs> and sometimes we like I talk a Chinese or some Oriental language. We don't know specifically what we're talking. <laughs> but we talk a, somewhat like a Chinese, if you know what I mean. And... <laughs> We have a good time on channel here. Talk everybody language. You speak a French, je peux pas la France rien avec toi. <laughs> Merci beaucoup que vous êtes ici avec moi. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna throw it at you, people. You're here on this channel. You're gonna hear an earful. I like to talk a Chinese. I speak Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> you have to speak Spanish. I can speak Spanish. I'm a perfect. Everybody welcome here. All color. <laughs> White, black, brown, purple, green. We not care what color you are. You're a friend on this channel and we have a good time with you here. <laughs> Look, a price already go up a 720. I tell you so. Buy this thing a seven twelve, make big bunny. You have a not have a worry about a thing. You heard a song. <laughs> We're gonna take it. Don't worry, I'm not gonna keep up with that too long. I know that uh sometimes it's fun to have fun, but then when people come on new to the channel and they hear me all of a sudden, they don't know what the hell I'm doing. They think I'm out of my mind. They think I'm crazy. And I am certifiable. I want to let you know everybody. I talk like it is because I want to make a show you know I'm crazy boy. <laughs> How I take a seriously, someone like me, I talk like this all the time. <laughs> you can't take me serious. I here for entertainment purpose only. <laughs> Come on, you guys got to get smile on face, got to have a good time. Everybody get all down and won't be round. Got your head hanging down like a clown. <laughs> Don't let me start rapping. <laughs> you force to be crapping in your pants. Am I talking about Chinese rap? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I look at me like I got an excellent condition <laughs> signal today. Not have a trouble with our internet now. So I want to thank you for being here with me. Know that many places, you could be other places, but hide here. You come in here, be with me. Thank you. I see I lose a lot of my Asian population. Just I leave a channel now. I don't know why. And like I said, folks, I will not discriminate against anybody from anywhere. If you speak Espanol, <laughs> I'm having a good time here with you, too. Uh... Come on over, everybody, from all walks of life, any generation, any location, we don't care. Finland, Iceland, Greenland, Newfoundland, Thailand. Right now, we're looking at the price rising on SoFi, and we're going to continue to see it do that. 
in the presence of all of the fun we're going to have, we're going to watch it rise. We're going to watch it rise and rise and rise and rise. And everybody will watch and it'll, some will be surprised, but I won't be because I know. You look up at my pinned message up at the top. Watch this video. Go check this out, it says. Watch this video about what happened over the weekend and a job offering being made by SoFi to fill a position which gives an indication of their next move that they're about to make. I won't tell you anything more about it because it's very complicated and it's very in-depth, but the guys over there, uh, Tevis on YouTube has done a great job with him and Tanner. And I know Tanner puts on his scaredy cat face and a lot of you don't like him and they've got plenty of reason because he's he's almost, and sometimes I wonder if he's more of a detriment to this company than he is an asset or, a, or a, um, someone to help us out like I am. You don't ever hear me talk down SoFi and you don't ever hear me put up a false ad about, oh, price could be $2, you know, is it, you know, is it the end? Um, I'm not a doom and gloomer to get clicks and I don't like people that use that tactic. And uh, to me, it's dishonest, and I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> so uh, now I don't have any idea uh, if I'm streaming at the current speed with everybody here with me or I'm not, but I'm going to go ahead and hit the refresh button. And hopefully maybe we'll, uh, we'll get to keep everybody here. We're looking at the price now, making a nice recovery just like I expected it to because nobody really sold it because they were scared in the first place. So when you don't have any fear tactics really going on and you're just using borrowed shares to sell back and forth to one another, everybody sees what that is and knows what's going on. And uh, they just wait until the bottom, like I said today, and then they just start accumulating more and dollar cost averaging down. See, this is the problem for the shorts, in my opinion, and I'll break it down in a nutshell. This is what I think happened. And I could be wrong, so you don't have to believe me, but this is what I think happened. I think that the shorts, these institutions that were accumulating so far as it ran up, were accumulating all these shares and buying in on it only to be able to sell them all and make the price fall. Okay. And they executed that perfectly. As the price was going up, they were adding from here way down low to up. God, that's a massive increase. You're talking about almost 10 times the number of institutions from these bars up to here while the price was rising. And then they started selling those shares and they sold them down. And then look at the price rise right there because they bought them back up right there. They made that rise and bought them back up. But then they started selling them because look at institutional ownership drop, drop drop and the price was falling 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 the price went from $24 all the way down to 6 and 5 and they were dropping and leaving the position and they got it all the way to the bottom here it is right here in may after april 23rd there's the may date of may the 15th and look at the price going up since then and when they got to here man did they freak out on that day when that price hit 1023 from that price on may of 455 when it hit 1023 they three freaked out so bad <clears throat> they borrowed every single share that was available on that day and uh june the 14th because the price had shot from may to june 14th up 125 percent they called all these companies and said please downgrade so by god dang it please we shorted them at 445 and the price is 1023 now please tomorrow downgrade them and they did june the 15th three downgrades came out Shorts had borrowed every single one of their possible shares that they had. They borrowed them all. <clears throat> if you want to see, I'll show it to you now. And uh, th there's so many people that have been here and seen this so many times, but there's so many people that are currently being brought over to the channel right now on a daily basis that everyone needs to learn this, what how they did what they did. And... Uh, <coughs> Oh, yeah. Look at that cost to borrow jump up again. Nice over the last seven days. A nice jump on the cost to borrow. A lot of shares were just returned. April the 1st this morning, man, 8.31 million shares returned. 
And so what do they do? They return them so they can borrow them all again all day and drive the price down. And that's what they're doing. See that? They returned 8.3 million and then they had 5.9. So right there, right here early in the morning, they use of the 8.3 they returned to 5.9. So that's a six. So 2.4 million shares they used to drive the price down with this morning that they borrowed. Okay. That's what that shows you. <clears throat> yep. That's exactly what it shows you over here. Shows that early this morning, four o'clock, it, it shows the amount of shares they had right there at four point uh, six point seven million shares. On March 27th, they had 6.7. They borrowed 3 million, 3.6 million to make the price drop. Then they returned the shares and had 5.9 million and then dropped it right back down. They borrowed them again to make the price fall this morning. But what I was trying to show each and every one of you that I'm, I'm trying to update you, this is May the 15th when they started attacking SoFi's price down on May the 15th. And on that day, they had a lot of shares to attack with. They had right up here, all the way up here, they had a bunch. And they had, on May the 15th, they had, they used all of them from 6.5 million. On May the 15th, David Chivarani day, they used a lot of that 6.5 million shares. They used four and a half million shares to get the price down on the next day, May the 16th to the low of 455. So that's when they attacked it. But then suddenly the price started rising on them. And from 455 by this date, June the 15th, June the 14th, it hit 1023. <clears throat> and they, at that time, folks, had exhausted every single usable borrowable share that was supposed to make the price drop from 445, where they shorted it. Those instead couldn't stop it from going to 1023 all the way up until June the 14th. And that was the, the day the price hit 1023. And the day, by the way, coincidentally, they only had 350,000 shares out of 10 million left to borrow. June the 14th of this past year, they only had 350,000 left to borrow out of 10 million. <clears throat> what happens the next day, everybody? Five analysts downgrade. So five. And then you put three because it was really just three analysts. And lo and behold, what do you find right here? Five analysts downgrade so five. And it was coincidentally <laughs> on the same day that they had run out of shares the very following day that all of these analysts downgraded SoFi the day after they had run out of borrowable shares. There it is right there, UK News. Interesting here that they, um, <clears throat> they used to show this. If I looked this up, they would show you the date was June the 15th. But now it says here, this one says June the 16th. But the date on the article that I saw was June the 15th. And that makes sense because they were out of shares. They didn't have any more to borrow on June the 15th. They were out. They had to do that. They had to call these guys. They had to say, please, please, for God's sakes, please downgrade us. This report here that was put up by uh, Yahoo, on it says June the 16th, but I can assure you it was on June the 15th that they did it. All right. Because they had no shares left to borrow. And I'm here to expose them for that. And I show it to you that on that day, and you can see where the price was all the way up until the past April into May. But by June, boom, the dang thing had shot all the way up in one month's time. And that was when the price was at 1023. You can look over there on the right. It says $10. Well, it hit 1023, June the 14th. And out they came with their downgrades. And the funniest thing was every one of those downgrades was to a higher price than they previously had as a target. 
this downgrade by Piper Sandler went to $8 from $6.50. <laughs> this downgrade went to $10 from $9.50. They're raising their target price, yet somebody wants you to think those are downgrades. Okay? How do you like that? Coincidentally, all on the very day that they completely run out of shares to short with. What do you know? And then, of course, by doing so and getting those triple downgrades, if you go back to the history, you can see exactly the effect of all of those downgrades uh, from November the uh, from when they, they had hit that high on June the 14th. You can see the exact dramatic effect of three downgrades, taking the price there from 1023 all the way down to 771, where they could make half of their money back because they had shorted it at 445, okay? And to give you an idea of what a sling these shorts are in, after they shorted it at 445 and it went to 1023 and they used three analyst downgrades to higher target prices to drop the price back to 771, down 30%, by the way, from this number, down 30% right there, they made it fall doing that little stunt, calling up those analysts. But then after that, the freaking price was taken off again. June the 30th, holy crap, what are they going to do then? It's at 941. Well, they're going to borrow a crap load more shares is what they're going to do. And that is what they did. And then they're going to use their friend Morgan Stanley to downgrade the price on July the 13th after it hits a high of 924 and make it drop to 877, where Morgan Stanley can then buy another $50 million worth of the stock, which they did. That day they owned 58 million. Now they own 107 million worth of SoFi stock. Well, why did they run it down to 877? Well, because five days later, six days, it's at 1013. <clears throat> then they run it back down to 894. By the way, this 1013 number was one week, three days before the earnings call that took it to 1170. So I think one week and three days before this next earnings call of profitability, we may see again a play to $10 plus and then knock it back to 894 six days later. I'm just saying it could happen. And if it doesn't, I'm going to take full advantage of it. <clears throat> or I guess I should say when it does it. Look at that, folks. I told each and every single one of you today that when SoFi was down to 712, I said pretty soon it's going to be at 719, then 720, then 721, then 722, and mysteriously just keep rising without any ability to stop it from going up. Because as I've said, <laughs> go over and read my pinned chat. Go read my pinned chat up there, what's pinned at the top. Go over to that YouTube and see what SoFi is doing now. I love those guys. One thing I love about Tevis and him and his group, at least on this last video, they really did their research. They discovered something that SoFi is about to do that nobody even knows about yet. And they did it by looking at SoFi's want ads for employees. And when they saw the job position that SoFi is trying to fill, they realize what SoFi is about to do. And I give them credit for picking it out. Good job. Just stop using the scary bookmarks and I'm cool with you guys 100%, man, because you're trying to help the stock out and I know that. But, you know, please do it in a positive way every time. Don't try to scare people into clicking on your channel. Clickbait. Eh. <clears throat> Yeah, Dan, we're climbing back and we're going to keep going up. As I was trying to tell everybody earlier, listen, folks, as you all should know, you have to have been trading long enough to recognize manipulation when you see it and know and realize that what they're doing and how they're doing it, borrowing shares every day to run the price down every morning, selling back and forth to one another and taking up long positions all the while. And right now, folks, they're not the only ones that are taking up long positions. People like me every day just keep adding. People like me and like uh, my friend up here earlier, James Bar uh, Burnaby Fishing, smart enough to know what they're doing and say, I'll take advantage of this opportunity and buy. And he bought at 720. Somebody else already bought at 720 and you're green too. 
you told me you came in at 721 and uh, 720 and I said good for you bought a thousand shares I think it was and then averaged down when they took it even lower so good for you yep you see that he bought at 714 James Burnaby bought uh, 1400 at 714 and bought another thousand at 712 with me that was easy yeah with me And we slowly get wealthy doing this every single day. And we accumulate wisdom <laughs> while we do it. Yeah, we're climbing back. And I told everybody, don't worry, soon we'll be down just you know, 13 cents, then 12, then 11, then 10, then 9, then 8. I said it, then 7. And everyone will be going, oh, I, I guess it's time to get in now. And here's the deal for these poor shorts. Their dilemma is that every time now that they take it down to that low like they did today, everybody just scoops it up and buys the crap out of it and goes, thank you. Because as I said to you already, and I'm showing you on this institutional chart. All these institutions own SoFi and still hold them, folks. You're talking about 300,000 plus institutions, shares, institutional shares, 330,000 shares right now, and then rising and rising and rising. And the price is just rising and rising and rising. All the way from way down here, it's just rising and rising. It's almost doubled from where it was a year ago, people. Be aware. Don't be fooled. Look at the long term. Look at SoFi going green here pretty soon. <clears throat> that was a nice effort on Shorty's part, though, to try to take it down there and scare anybody out. I don't know why they think anybody would be afraid of it down 2%. They're just buying it up. Now they're buying it up against your will and desire, Shorty. And what are you going to do now? You're going to let it go on up because you went long too, the smart ones of you. I'd like to say congratulations to any short that decided to change and come on over to the long side today. Sing a little song for you. Ding dong, you short went long. This is our SoFi song. Ding dong, you shorts went long today. Hooray. Ding dong, the shorts went long. Found out we're all King Kong strong. Yeah, ding dong, the shorts went long today. SoFi, it grows and grows and grows. And this is what we know. And this is why we sing and we ring that bell. Yeah, ding. Ding dong, the shorts went long. This is our new SoFi song. Ding dong, the shorts went long today. Hooray! Any of you shorts that went long today, that song is for you. Thank you for joining the light side. Get out of that dark side and come on over into the light. See the light. Thanks, Tyler. Congrats, you as well. Yes. <clears throat> Well, we get to where we start to see these points of resistance and we go, you know what? This is ridiculous. There's no reason for this to be down today. There's no reason whatsoever for it to be down other than pure and outright manipulation. And then we go over and see exactly how they've done it. It's cool to be able to look over here and see, oh, okay. Well, they just returned a bunch of shares, but oh shit. Right after they returned them all, they were up to 6.7 and then suddenly they're right back down borrowing 3.7 million shares of that. <laughs> oh my god <laughs> the funny thing is they returned all those shares you can see it says on march the 28th they returned all those shares on march the 28th for a brief second i mean it was like a fraction of a second it was at four o'clock on march the 27th that they returned them right at closing the closing all right on the closing bell they returned them and then immediately thereafter, they borrowed 3 million of them back. <laughs> 6.7 and boom, right after that, right back down to 6.7 to 1.3. Oh my God. 
They went from 6.7 to only 1.3 million shares at four in the morning, borrowing 6.7 minus uh, to 1.3, 5. Point, I mean, think about that. 5.5 million shares they borrowed right there, folks, to try to make the price go down in the morning early. <laughs> then the next day, they couldn't even return as many. They could not return the 6.7. They could only return the next time right here. 5.9. So 8 million shares right there they just decided to hold on to to add to their shortage positions. Eight million, That many shares. See? I mean, it's pretty clear. To me, it seems obvious. They had 6.7. They borrowed it all the way back down to 1.3 million after 6.7 down to 1.3 million. And then the next time they couldn't even return 6.7. They could only return 5.9. We get on down here. We get to get a good look at what they're doing right here daily. There they are. It says April, April 1st, they returned 8.3 million. And they were able to do that from midnight, 2 in the morning until, of course, 4. So they borrowed at four o'clock in the morning from 8.3 million. They borrowed down to six, let's say. So that's 2.4 million shares exactly that they borrowed to, to, to attack the price down out of the gate this morning, 2.4 million. So what you saw there in the first hour when it was only 10 million shares, well, a quarter of that was them. That helps. I hope that helps you understand how they did it. <sighs> Now the dilemma for them, though, is that everybody just wants to keep buying it now. It keeps buying it up from them. And now it's only down 10 cents. And now it's only down nine. Oh, we're climbing back up. But it's good to know that at this stage of the game, According to what we're seeing right here, institutions just keep adding and adding and adding positions now as the price rises, the opposite of what was happening here when they were adding and adding and adding as the price fell. All right. So over here in 2021, institutions were buying up shares like mad at a $17 price range is what it it equates to. From, from $17 price range all the way to a price of down here at around $6.50 a share, they were buying like mad. With an average then, you would guess somewhere around $13. That's what I would think. I mean, look at this. Look at the increase in the number of institutions that were buying in like mad while the price fell. But it was falling from right here, $16 a share, down to right there where they capped out at, at around $650, almost seven. And they were capped out with as many shares as they could buy then. They had more institutional ownership on April the 22nd and the, around May the 1st. May the 1st. What do you know? A coincidence. When we made our third or no seventh in a row earnings call with uh, revenues increasing and building and climbing and all during COVID, all that happened. No wonder. And they were accumulating and buying, buying, buying SoFi all the way up until the price was right here, April. And then in May, they started to come out of it and they started selling it, folks, in May and then the price went all the way up to June and they went, geez, oh, Pete, what are we going to do? We borrowed every dang share we could to buy this stock with now. And there was only 350,000. Let's call up three downgrades and get them out there. And they did. And they made it fall all the way down. And they got out of those positions. Thank God they did. Because after that, institutions started buying in again and the price went up. And look at that. Price, interesting, institutional membership dropping here over this six-month period and the price going up from 445 all the way to 1023. 
This is right before, this is mid-June, June the 15th, right there when the price hit 1023. And then they got the triple downgrade, made the price fall back down here. Then it ran up to almost the same number right there. Good to see how they did it. Good to notice. But admittedly, folks, it's frustrating when you see them being able to have these shares to borrow. And it only makes you wonder, where in the hell would they actually be in the stock price if they weren't able to borrow those shares from this brokerage all the time? Okay, where in the hell would the price be if they didn't have this little float here of shares to keep them above water? It's like a little life preserver they've got out there, all right? But if these didn't exist, if these shares available for borrow, if everybody, folks, would put your sell orders in on SoFi stock at $30 or $24.99, if that's the limit, put them in for sale, they wouldn't have all these shares to keep borrowing from. We've got to keep getting our sell orders out there on SoFi and keep them tied up so they can't borrow them. And if you have an account that allows for borrowing, go click on the box that says, don't loan out my shares. Click on that. Get rid of that. Folks, they're in desperation mode. You can see how many shares were left to borrow before when they had to go to their June 15th triple downgrade for help. And here they are again. They're running out again, folks. They're running out again. This is Robin from Peter to pay Paul over here. This is what they were also during, doing during this time when the price was from May the 15th rising to June 14th. They were borrowing from Peter to pay Paul. And finally, they didn't have anything to borrow left, so they had to make a desperation phone call and call up three analysts to downgrade their stock that day. They borrowed out. They were borrowed out, and they're borrowed out again. And by the way, this last time they borrowed out, it took them from March the 25th all the way to June 14th. March, April, May, June, 90 days to borrow out all those shares. And look how many days it's took them to borrow them out here recently. <laughs> none, none, none. Look at that. Virtually no days to borrow all the way down to only how many thousand shares were left that day? 85,000 shares. And they did it in such a short span of time compared to how long it took them before to run it down. All right. I'm showing you this, folks. They are in a pickle. They're in a pickle. Their backs are against the wall. They know it. They know SoFi keeps executing just like they said they would. In a minute here, we're going to see SoFi Green. Give it another Give it another hour and see where it is. Only 724, 725, 726. And the reason that I believe that is the reason I'm showing you how many institutions who, by the way, hold, a, I think I've proven to you now, there are a ton of institutions here that own, and you can presume anyone above this point here, and that's $18 plus, folks. You see how many institutions started taking positions up when the price was 18 uh, right here? $10, there were that many institutions from $10 all the way through this price down to where we are now from 10, they've been adding to their position. Isn't it interesting that over here, when you saw them adding to their positions, how the price fell from 24 all the way down to eight. And here you go again, seeing them try to add to their positions to make it fall but folks, this thing's being resilient now, man. This thing hit a double bottom right there, then this bottom even higher, and this bottom here even higher. Uh-oh, that's not good. A year ago, they had a bottom of 445. The next bottom they got to was 641. A 44% increase. I'm here to tell you all, I'm, I'm here to express to you the fact that the price of SoFi was all the way down here on May the 15th at 445. 
And folks, that was on 100% bogus information by a bogus analyst with a horrible cret record of a zero star rating. One fraction of a quarter of a star is what he ha had at the time. And he manipulated the price down on 103 million and they borrowed 4 million shares that day on May the 15th. They borrowed that day. You can see it on this chart up here. On that day, May the 15th, they had, you can see right here, they had at the time 6.5 million shares available to borrow. And they ran it down the very next day by borrowing to 3 million so that you can see that that huge amount of three and a half million shares, they had 6.5 million and they took it all the way down the next day on the downgrade to only 2.9 million. That's like 4 million shares almost people. They borrowed thinking the price would fall, but lo and behold, then the price started going up and up and up from that 445 to 1023 on that date I'm showing you now on June the 14th. So understand that on June 14th, when they were all the way down to only 350,000 shares left, that's why they had to make those phone calls and get those downgrades to come out the next day. That's why. Now we're going to look at SoFi as it continues to climb, but not only SoFi, we're looking at SOUN down to back to where I almost bought it the other day. Uh, no, I got it lower than that, but that's okay. I'm still, that's about my average on it right now. Oh, yeah, look at BITF looking good. Very good. <laughs> nice. Folks, I'm telling you, this, this, this stock right here, BITF, they just ordered enough miners that once they're installed, they'll be equaling the, the same hash rate of a company that's priced at $20 a share right now. Okay. I'm just letting you know that in case you weren't aware of it. This Bitcoin miner who uses green energy and hydroelectricity is also now expanding their capabilities to process as the same Hertz rate as CLSK, which is over $20 a share or was recently. STEM fractionally down, NU fractionally down, 10X, there you go. Goodbye pl place again. It, they, I told you this thing hovers between 420 and 388. F cell down a little bit. TCNNF. This is one that was brought up by my friend. Uh, let's go over and take a look at, oh my gosh, Shopify. Beautiful. Nice. Oh my God. So fine. Anybody else here that bought with me at 712 this morning? I know that we had a couple people who did. I know that James Barnaby Fishing did. James Barnaby Fishing. Congratulations if you did that with me. As we now watch SoFi's price accumulate. Uh, I'm getting a notification that we're not getting enough um, signal right now to maintain smooth streaming. And as such, vis viewers will experience buffering. And uh, so I'm going to hold on. Yeah, we're climbing back. Oh, we're going to come back up, folks. We're going to rise this afternoon like a phoenix out of the ashes. Everybody who's here on this channel right now, you have to realize the method of which they've done everything back over time. And I make sure you understand exactly how they did it, exactly what they've done, the way that they've manipulated, how it's backfired on them. And those still who shorted SoFi on this day, May the 15th, when David Chiverini downgraded, you need to understand, everyone, there are many, many, many holders of shorted shares at 484 a share. Just as there are many, many more holders that hold this stock at 18 to $13 based on this right here, which indicates how many institutions were willing to pick up SoFi's price as it fell down in here into this from 15 down to 12. Look at all. This is when the most of the institutions came in, folks, when the price was right there from about $14 
all the way down to when the price was right here at about seven, six or seven. This is where most of the sh shareholders are holding the stock now, somewhere in this 12 to 13 range. So when it's down in the sevens, it's awesome for them to be able to pick up more shares and dollar cost average down. And that's what's been happening to the shorts lately. They're in big trouble, folks, because they got so many institutions holding shares for so much more right now. This is just a buy opportunity for them, just like this morning was for all of us. And the shorts find themselves in a pickle, okay? They've, they've set their own trap. The only way they could make SoFi's drop from that 1023 when it hit it on June 14th was to make calls to everybody to put out fake downgrades that were upgrades, really. But they called them downgrades, and they, they, again, set their own trap. See, their dishonesty is what will come back to get them because good always overcomes evil, in my opinion, people. And I'm here to show you how they used and why the coincidence was of those five big analysts coming out on June 16th. And it's interesting, this shows June 16th, but I got news, folks. That news article came out with three downgrades, three analyst downgrades. That came out on the 15th. I'll find it. I mean, and it doesn't matter, you know. Nine months ago, five analysts increased SoFi's price target to 10. Past 10, it says. And here I put in the date June the 15th for the downgrade. And lo and behold, it doesn't even show up anymore there. Yeah, but it was that day. And it had to be that day because the shorts had run out of shares. See, when I show this to people, I like to be able to show them the exact date. Rating, there it is. Oppenheimer analyst Dominic Gabriel changes SoFi stock from an outperform rating to a perform. Yep. And you can see the date was on June 15th. It was June 15th. I find it amazing that even here, here, let's try it here and let's see if this says June 15th. Because I like to show people the exact day that those came out. And this is going to tell us right here. I'd like you to know how they did it, oh, June the 16th. <laughs> it's amazing. It's almost like they changed the date, you know, because it was just too damned obvious. <laughs> you guys know, many of you have been on this channel. I've shown you many, many, many times this headline, five big analyst cuts, satisfied slash with downgrades. The date was June the 15th, it said. I just showed you this a freaking week ago. <laughs> it's like, God dang, man, that catfish, man, he shows everybody how we were screwed and had no shares left to borrow and why we made the phone calls and exactly how we manipulated the price back down to 771 nine days later. We can't have him exposing us like that, people. We need to change that date at least one day. <laughs> I'm telling you how I think it is, man. I, I, I find it amazing that I've shown you guys on this channel now for a year and two months. All I ever had to do was put in June 15th and SoFi downgrade. And I would have, you know, time and time again, I showed you the date and it was June the 15th. Go back to Google now. I'm actually going to start the dang thing with SoFi. <laughs> and then just June 15th. That's what I'm going to do here. Uh. Okay, here we go.
SoFi June 15, 2023. That's all I'm going to do. <laughs> oh my gosh, folks. Virtually, <laughs> let me just put this here. Hold on. We're going to put uh, Piper Sandler. And every one of these now, look at that, June the 16th, June the 16th, June the 16th, June 16th. Well, it doesn't matter, folks. Trust me. They made the call because they were out effing shares. Okay? They made the call because on June the 15th, they had to have that phone call. They had to have it. Because you can see how many shares they had left on June the 14th. June the 15th, after the phone call, they were able to return 2.6 million. The next day, they returned another 2 million on the June, same day on the 15th. Then on the 17th, which I guess would have been on the Monday, no, the 16th, they actually had to borrow some more share on the 16th, probably because when the downgrades all came out, they borrowed a little bit more to try to run it down with. And then the damn damn thing just, just kept dropping in price from the 16th to the 17th to the 18th to the 19th to the 20th. And by the 20, 20th, they had the price down $3 a share. And they were able to return them all then. See that? Return them all. Yippee! Life is good. They can keep $10 million across there for five months almost. Then they freaking completely ran out. And while they were run out of shares to borrow, the price went up about 20%. Then they were able to borrow some shares again. They made the price fall back down to the low on January 19th. They made the price hit the lowest it was, 721. Then for the next week, the price went all the way back up. <laughs> and they couldn't stop it to $9.45 from 721 because they didn't have shares to borrow. Got it at 715 today. All right. Excellent. Well, look where we are now. You're up and I'm up and everybody who bought with me this morning is up and we're going to be up and we're going to be up a lot more than this. Look at this market today. They finally shoved the NASDAQ down into the red. I can only believe, uh, I can already wait to find out why Yahoo is telling everybody the market's collapsing today. I can't wait to see what they're saying. Let's go see what they're saying. Why is there such scared Trump media stock tanks as new filing reveals heavy losses? Oh, I bet you it tanked all right. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let's go see how much it's tanked. <laughs> We see that used all the time on SoFi. It's tanked today and it's down 1.8%. Oh man, that thing really tanked. They're they're failing to mention what the thing IPO'd at and that he's gone up majorly in value and how much he made. I think it was $4.5 billion. That is not true. That chart's baloney. There you go. 1744. And look at what it shot up to. Freaking $66, folks, from right here, this price. From 1732 on January the 15th. 
This freaking thing is shot up to freaking 66. Oh, it's tank big time, everybody. It's really tanking. <laughs> uh, anyway, I just show you. That looks horrible. That chart, all those poor investors in Trump stock, they've made, oh, I mean, law, I mean, oh, yeah, made a lot of money. <laughs> tank or no tank today, they've made a lot. That pro and that proves it right there. That's sh that's beyond any shadow of a doubt. That proves it. So good to you guys who have got in on that and are helping support our future president. And uh, unless the adversary and competitor gets some thrown in jail. <laughs> Got in at 7.15. All right. So now stocks wobble to kick off the new quarter. The three stooges of investing. And by the way, that's right. It is the new quarter. It begins today, folks. And SoFi is now putting together their figures for their first quarter filings. And they're starting to put the, count the money, folks. They're counting the money today, beginning today. They're counting the money, people. And this Monday, takedown of the Dow down 260 and the NASDAQ flat. That is so typical of what we've been seeing here lately. So, so typical, everyone. One thing I'd like to point out to you guys and gals is that uh, in case you weren't aware of it, when the shorts are in control, the price doesn't sit at $7.20, okay? That's not one of their numbers. When the shorts are in control, this thing's at seven thirteen, baby, and it won't move off that. When the shorts are in control, the price stays where they want it to stay, okay? And unfortunately for them, this isn't one of those numbers that they like to keep it at. Because this isn't going to defluence anyone, I guess is the word I'm looking for. All that's going to do is inspire people. <laughs> that isn't, uh, there, there's no number about that there that's scary to anyone. There's nothing that's going to make them fearful. There's no one that's going to really sell at 720, down 1.3%. And thank God I'm here to keep you guys informed of that. No one is selling at this price. No one is fearful of SoFi dropping any lower. In my opinion, I don't think anybody is scared at all. I think it's holding up very well today. I think it's great to see the market down 266 points. It's 266, by the way, the Dow right now. 266. Look at the number. 266. And I won't be surprised at all to see him get to 266.66 right now. Down 266.49. What do you know? Down 6.7. See that? This is almost a 66 perfectly, and this is almost the 26666. I wouldn't be surprised to get him to see it get him down to 26666 and that number B down 66. I wouldn't be surprised to see that at all. Um and a matter of fact, it probably what it what it already was for all I know, the day's range. Thirty nine four ninety two, so it was down even more than that. It's regained forty points since it was at the bottom right there at uh, eleven fifty eight, right at right before twelve noon, right before twelve noon. Well, I'll be waiting at the bridge with the snacks and beer for them. <laughs> when y'all elect Trump, can you send the Marines north to get rid of <laughs> Trudeau for me? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that guy, what a what a genocidal freak he is. Trying to tell everybody there in Canada, look, if you don't want to live anymore, we don't want to make you live anymore. We'll help you kill yourself. You guys might not know about that, but that's what they've done in Canada. They passed a new bill which allows people who just have had it with life and tired of living to just go and 
terminate themselves, just like the movie Soylent Green. I'm serious, folks. Now, some of you are, have no idea what movie I'm talking about, Soylent Green, but Soylent Green. I think it was James Fonda was in that, starring in that movie, didn't he? Soylent Green. Remember they had Soylent Yellow and Soylent Blue. Everybody was eating all this futuristic food that they Soylent was making. And then Soylent came out with green. The new green flavor. I'm taking way back here. We're going way, way back. 61 of you on the channel with me right now. I want to thank you for being here at this time. And I'd like to ask if you can help me get us up over 80 likes. So at 110... 110 and 8 seconds. Can we please do a countdown to just to hit the like button together? And that'd be nifty. You guys would be helping me out in that way. I appreciate it. 110 and 8 seconds, which is now going to start the countdown to that number right here and now. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Please depress the like button at 110, 8 seconds. And let's see if we can jump up over 80 likes right now. That'd be nifty. And I appreciate your helping me with this channel growing. Uh, each day we get more and more people in here on this channel who are looking at it and checking it out. And folks, I went and checked how many people I've been sent to since I started doing the advertisements again. And now I've spiked up to 820,000 people that have been sent my channel over the last 90 days. And that is because of you guys all hitting that like button like you've been doing simultaneously. And uh, the chat that we got coming in over here helps because they want to see how much you guys are talking about what I'm talking about and if we're interacting with one another because that's what YouTube wants to do. It wants to see everybody having a good time. And uh, so I know that there are times when... Uh, we get down and we can feel kind of dejected and we can feel kind of bummed about what's going on with the price. But all along, you guys have stayed steadfast and helped me out by hitting that like button. And I'm very grateful. And your contributions, including Rusty Pratter today. The only one to step up. And I understand when times are down and the price is down and the, nobody's making any profits right at this stage. And we're kind of in a holding pattern until the next earnings call. But that earnings call is coming out, and the news about this company is going to come out soon about what they're about to do. If you don't know what they're about to do, go over to my pinned message, click on that link to that video that was put up by Tavis on YouTube over this weekend. Find out what's going on. All right? It's, it'll be very advantageous to you go over and click on that video and watch what they discovered about SoFi this weekend that nobody knows. And one of the things I always point out I like the most about this company is the fact that they don't go out and make a bunch of false promises and tell you that they're going to merge with this or that, or they're going to do this and that, and then they don't do it. Everything is usually done, and then they tell you what they just did. Like I said earlier, the NBA deal, the contract with the NBA, nobody knew that that was going on. But all of a sudden, boom, they had already done all of the filming of the PR and the little commercials and the stuff on uh, all the Instagram and Twitter and everything already had been done, created. And all of a sudden, they signed the deal and then boom, it all hit it. Went, wow! And nobody even knew about it. And that's what I like about this stock. The shorts don't know what to expect next. I don't know why anybody at all shorts this stock, to be honest with you. I can't understand it. Other than the fact that they're just greedy because they've been making so much money for so long, they just think that's going to keep happening. But I don't think that's going to keep happening. I don't think they can keep up with this. And right now, even this volume that we're seeing today is more than they're used to seeing when they used to manipulate the shit out of this stock. That's right. They used to only see 14 million a day traded, 15 million, 16 million a day were being traded. And they were able to just work this price any which way they wanted because they were borrowing so many. Folks, we're already over 18 million shares. And we're only, we still got three hours left almost on here to, to, to go. 
we're going to be well above it. See, here's what people don't understand. It's costing them more and more money because SoFi isn't just $4.45 a share like it was when they were short. It's a bunch with only 16 million shares a day traded. All right. That was easy. When the price is half what it is now almost, it was a lot easier for them to manipulate with just 16 million shares. It's costing them more now, see? This is what you need to understand. It's costing them way more money to try to keep this thing under control. And they lost control of it when the price was between 445 up to 1023 people. They were borrowing huge numbers of shares through that price range all the way up to 1023. I showed you how many they borrowed. Oh my God. Oh. <laughs> I appreciate you saying that 24 <laughs> seven. I can, I, and I, and I empathize and sympathize with you and you people of Canada. I uh, saw a great Tucker Carlson was over there speaking to the folks of Canada and trying to get them to wake up and said, man, you guys got to do something about this. You can't let this just keep going on. I mean, this genocide and uh, helping people commit suicide, that's just horrible, man. Come on, man. Give give people some hope. Give them, I mean, take your government money and instead of making cremation places or whatever the f they're doing where they're killing all these people and letting people kill themselves and turn that into something that helps people like a suicide prevention hotline and things like we do in America. Well, technically it was the monarchy being like, this is dumb, LOL, since it is to royal assent to pass the vote against it. Uh-huh. <clears throat> yep. This is true. <laughs> yeah, God dang Biden up there going, God save the queen. <laughs> what an idiot. <laughs> you can't make shit up like that, folks. And I'd like to thank Congresswoman, whoever it is here, who's here today, or whoever she was that had just died. <laughs> this guy. What a nutcase. Let me ask you a question, everybody. If you were to be discovered having $5 million transferred into your bank account and you'd use seven different accounts to move it into and get it over to you wherever you want, don't you think you'd be sitting in a federal prison? <laughs> you'd be being interrogated, folks. Boy, they'd have you on that damn water board. Yep. If they caught you receiving money from some oligarchy's wife in the Soviet Union and your account was discovered, no matter how well you tried to hide it, they'd lock you up for life. And believe you me, they'd make a scapegoat out of you. You'd be placed all over every headline as a traitor and a treasonous spy, getting caught, getting paid under the table. Oh, yeah. Saw a video on YouTube this past week of a lady who had posted some things on Facebook. And uh, I don't know what she'd said, but one of them, I think, was about, let's go, Brandon. <laughs> and... They come knocking on her door, three agents, so they wanted to talk to her about that Facebook had snap shot some screenshots that were sent to them, and they were out to ask her a few questions. <laughs> and she said, oh, I see, so I, 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 I use my number one amendment, to the freedom of speech. I'm not allowed to say anything I want to say. And they said, well, we'd just like to ask you some questions. And, and uh, she says, no, I'm not answering any of your questions. I don't have my attorney answer any questions on my behalf. And they said, well, do you have an attorney's card? And she said, no, I'll get a hold of you. 
that she was smart enough to walk around the back of the vehicle and license plate. She recorded it. And she called her authorities, I heard later on, and I don't know, can't attest to this being 100% true, but she said that she, they determined, yeah, the police said that was an FBI. Because they look like just some thugs, you know, with dark shades and wouldn't show their IDs because she was recording with a cell phone. They refused to show their identification. They had apparently already shown it to her. And she says, well, I didn't see that. You guys know, I told you, let me go inside and I'll be right back out. I didn't see your credentials and they wouldn't show her. But they were there because she said something on Facebook. And so I guess it's getting to that stage where I kind of might, wouldn't be surprised to see him come knocking on my door one day because some of the things I say and I try to be, you know, just open and honest with everybody and share my opinion. I'm not trying to start any inside anything. I'm just entitled to my opinion, I think. And she was too. And uh, anyway, yeah, they, Facebook monitoring, I guess. Got to be careful what you say. I wouldn't be surprised to see him come knocking on my door because way back when on Facebook, when this whole COVID thing went down and I was naming who was responsible, I knew that they were, I knew they made that thing. I knew it was manufactured in the lab. And he got people like Fauci being interviewed and he's on the stage in front of all these people. And the guy says, well, my daughter already had the flu and now over it. So should I go and get the flu vaccine? He says, absolutely not. She had the flu already. She's good to go. We've got the best defense there is, natural immunity. <laughs> uh, COVID comes rolling into town and that doesn't apply anymore. Natural immunity. No, you got to get that shot, people. Yeah. <laughs> My mom has four, I think, vaccinations just caught COVID. <laughs> yeah. A month ago, my mom caught COVID. She's been vaccinated four times now. Boy, that stuff, boy. <laughs> let Don't let me get going. All right. We're watching SoFi here right now. Uh, holding up very well on a day when the market is down 282. Dow down. NASDAQ down 31.18. Uh, the Russell down 2,000. Um. And one of the things I like to do is talk about kind of up-to-date topics that are going on around the world. And I told uh, people who were here with, the, with me this morning that if you want to see something really fascinating and cool and interesting and enlightening, go over to uh, Netflix and watch Moses, a three-part series about Moses. <laughs> it's the stuff of miracles, people. And it's the stuff of struggles and overcoming obstacles in life, folks, like we have every day in our own lives. <laughs> and I'll tell you right now, after you watch that movie, you will have a perspective that you've got things pretty freaking good because there aren't many people who had such a heavy burden placed on their shoulder as that gentleman there, Moses, in his lifetime. And it is just one story after another of obstacles and overcoming them. In the face of all adversity, just like SoFi is doing with these downgrades and people calling and say, please downgrade the stock. We've run out of shares to short it with and we don't have any left. Please, on June the 15th, can you write articles, all of you, that the price isn't worth what everybody's paying for it? It's gone from 445 where we shorted it all the way to freaking, it's all the way up to $10. We're down, we're down 125%. Please, Piper Sandler, downgrade. And they said, well, we'll downgrade up to a higher target price, but we don't want to look like fools. Okay, do that. Just downgrade it. We'll call it a downgrade even if you raise the price. And they said, all right, we'll do it. And that's what they said at Bank of America too. And that's what they said at Oppenheimer. They said, sure, we, you can call it a downgrade. Put that on Yahoo. We're downgrading, but we're raising the target price. Okay, that sounds fair. Thanks, guys. We appreciate it because we're screwed right now, man. The price has gone from 445 to 1023. We need you to put that article out tomorrow. All of you at the same time, please. Then I heard an interview with the guy, the one of them that had made the uh, downgrade, said, well, we just decided to downgrade it like this because they've gone up so much. You know, they just, it's just ridiculous how high they the price has gone and they're, they're just overbought. We had to downgrade it. 
They didn't say, well, why are you rising, raising your target price? That question wasn't asked. <laughs> they just said that they had to downgrade it because it had just gone up too far too fast. <sighs> Ah, uh, ladies and gentlemen, now the news that I've been waiting to announce to each and every one of you. We have about 55 people on the channel right now with me, and I have to say that we've reached a point, and I want to thank first, before I say this, Rusty Pratter, thank you so much for your dedication to this channel and your contributing with funds. You can see Rusty came again today the first time into the tank without saying anything else and gave me a $2 do donation. And so to you and many others on this channel, I want to say thank you very much. Uh, I want to point out the names of those individuals who've kept me up every single day on the internet doing this with you here on SoFi and uh, other stocks that we've made a lot of money on and including... Uh, our, our friend Connor Roberts and to Danny Dimes, I say thank you for your contribution as uh, people who have been helping me uh, on this channel when we got really busy. And uh, then I also want to say thank you to all of these people right here. And that is J.P. Panick, Rusty Pratter, Cham, Je uh, Jeff Presley, Rick Lawrence, Daniel Davis, Armand, Brew Tank Outdoors, Elaine Nelson, D.B., Sharche, Danny Dimes 10, and many, many others who have contributed over the last year to this channel and helping make it become a success. But regrettably, folks, it's not a success. <laughs> well, I mean, it has been in the fact that I've been able to nurture such great friendships with so many of you over this time. But uh, as the saying goes, all good things must come to an end. And at this stage, I'm going to have to make an announcement that I'm not going to be able to keep this channel going anymore. Um, I'm going to have to get on with life and keep back. I'll keep trading, keep doing what I've been doing. But folks, this channel, I'm sorry uh, for all of you there. I know there's like 50 people here with me not now. Uh, I just want to let you know that I, it, it's just something that hasn't been working out uh, uh, with my, you know, my uh, my marital life, <laughs> and uh, we've got to make uh, severe decisions in life at times, and uh, there's nothing else we can do but make those decisions when they must be made, and now, unfortunately, today is the day that I'm have to, having to say farewell to you, and uh, I don't want to uh, uh, let you, I can't, there's no words I have to say other than that, um, I, it, it's, it's hard to even let those words come out of my mouth. Almost as hard as me having to say, April Fools! <laughs> April Fools! Ah, <laughs> uh, you, you guys should have known better. <laughs> I don't know whether I got you or not, but I sure hope I did. <laughs> Oh, uh, <laughs> and some people were probably going, damn it, I thought we were finally done having to listen to this guy. <laughs> but <laughs> I can't, I couldn't pass it up, folks. I mean, you know, just <laughs> for those of you who know anything about me, uh, I like to kind of be a prankster at times. And I can get myself in trouble. And, uh, <laughs> uh <laughs> I, I'm, don't worry, I shall not forsake you. <laughs> uh, and look at SoFi doing a big old April Fools on the shorters today. <laughs> Ah, I think I did that fairly well. I think that went over well. I think that was a pretty good head fake. Um, <laughs> and for any of you that are here, <laughs> uh, I can't wait to see what your comments are. I'm waiting now. I just had to refresh the screen because I saw I had a big time delay. 
So I'm refreshing the screen right now so I can see what you guys might have said to me while I was telling you the bad news. <laughs> and that might not be such bad news for some people on this channel. <laughs> Especially the shorters who were like, oh my God, thank God this guy's going to stop talking so good about this stock. <laughs> uh, well, I see the page is now refreshed. And we're back up to modern time. And uh, hopefully I'll be able to see what it is you guys may or may not have said about my departure. <laughs> and uh, But I am, as I said, always very grateful for you having been here through all this time and th sharing my channel with uh, other people out there in the world. It's awesome. <laughs> Jeff Presley says you got me. Rick Lawrence says, you got me, Catfish. Uh, I was going to say, we need one more song before you go, please. And he called, Carrillo 369, uh, got me. All right. Uh, there we go. Uh, woo. Uh, you got to keep them. You got to keep people on their toes. <laughs> Thank you all. <laughs> it looks like always, man, you got to have a pair of these. If you're going to hang around on this channel with catfish, don't you? You guys should, you, you guys, you got to have a pair of these right here. <laughs> yeah. Ding dong. The shorts went long. This is our new sofa song. Ding dong. The shorts went long today. Ha ha. There's one more song before I leave. <laughs> Ding dong. The shorts went long. Found out we're all King Kong strong. <laughs> Ding dong. The shorts went long today. <laughs> Ah, Carrillo, 369. Thank you. Ah, I like to keep things, you know, keep things fresh and new on this channel. We got to keep it fresh as a daisy. <laughs> All right. Woo. <laughs> uh, 24-7. I was like, yeah, right. <laughs> Mrs. Cat probably loving you, having a side hustle, keeping you from annoying her and making her extra coin. <laughs> Easy. Oh, uh, MVP twenty five twenty six. It would be a sad day, and you got us. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, I had to, man. I just had to. I got to stick with my old uh, heritage, and <laughs> I got to be cat, right? Cat's got to be cat. Cat gots to be cat. You not think I'm going to talk like get to say goodbye, not that you say goodbye, good friend, Chinese talk. You got people crazy. Come on, got get off the turnip wagon. You people are so crazy, think I'm going to leave channel because wifey poo say so. <laughs> Uh, you guys have a, have a bad head on your shoulder. You have to understand, catfish, not always. Not always. <laughs> oh. I know a lot of people have a good time here, hang out with me all day long, listen to catfish, try well, talk about all kind of interesting topic, sing crazy song. I'm going to try to keep channel active, very active. <laughs> uh, <laughs> folks, we need to get some action though, man. I mean, I tell you right now, I can keep, I can keep the energy, I can keep the energy flowing, folks. Oh yeah, we got to keep that energy positive here on this channel. We don't need anybody like old. Spartacus jumping over here telling us the price of SoFi is going to drop to six fifty. They can't even get the damn thing below $7.12 today. Give me a break, man. <laughs> oh, come on. Give me a break. <laughs> uh, oh, come on, man. <laughs> uh... 
<laughs> oh my gosh, where's our friend Mary today? I would suspect she's here. I hope she got back out when it ran back up over where I bought it. I hope she got back out, got her money back. Uh, folks, right now what we're doing is we want to highlight today up at the very top of this um, chat, you're going to see I posted up there a pinned message. And this pinned message is something you need to look into. Uh, it was on YouTube. It was discovered this weekend about SoFi. They're making a move, but they haven't disclosed it yet. What the giveaway was that SoFi ran an advertisement for hiring open position and the positions that they're looking to fill. <coughs> they're the indicator of what they're doing next. All right. <coughs> oh, so go over to that YouTube video that was posted over the last 48 hours by Tevis. Okay. And um, I can't remember if in the title it said secret or not. But there it is up there it is as the pinned message in the chat today. There's a link to the YouTube video by Tevis and uh, his little scaredy friendy cat, uh, Tanner. Okay. And uh, the two of them did a great job of diagnosing what SoFi is up to and why they're doing it and how advantageous this is going to be for them. And folks, I give credit where credit is due. Tevis and Tanner did a great job on this presentation of this information. And folks, it's complex, so I can't get into it to the detail that they already had done all of their, they, they really did a great job with a little synopsis. They, they did, it appears as though they may have did, done a long presentation of it. And then they did, Tevis did on his own, a little breakdown of it more concise Watch that one by Tevis. Watch that link. Go up to it. All right? As a matter of fact, I'm going to click on it right now, and I'm going to repost it. I'm going to repost it right now. Just give me a second here. And by the way, SoFi is going to get ready. It's getting wound up here, folks. It's just getting wound up. Winding it up tighter and tighter. Look at the Dow down 300 points today. On oh, no reason. Not the PP. No reason. Not any reason at all. The NASDAQ's proof of that. There's no real reason for the Dow to be down 300. Manipulation. Bo -do -do. Manipulation. All right, it says here for the title of the video on YouTube, SoFi Quietly Hires. On YouTube, if you search it, it's posted by Tevis. And I'm getting ready to copy the link to it one more time. But folks, this is a video you need to watch because it discloses something about SoFi that they haven't said to anyone as of yet. And you'd be... It'd be good for you to know what they're about to do, all right? And they're not going to announce it until they've already got it done. This is their method of operation. So if I never makes an announcement of something that's upcoming, they just wait till it's done, like the NBA contract for the being represented as the NBA official bank of the NBA. Nobody saw that coming, just out of nowhere. It's like hitting the shorts between the eye with a stupid stick. Bam! Hey, check this out. Over here. Ha, ba, ba. Yep. Here it is right now. It says, uh, SoFi quietly hires. <sighs> Give me a second here. All right. This is a video you need to be looking for on. <coughs> this is the video you need to be looking for on YouTube. There it is. SoFi, SMB, hiring. All right? That's what you need to watch to understand what SoFi is about to do. Right, everyone? Just my suggestion. Watch that if you want to be informed. 
and uh, I will share this video with you right now in the chat screen again. Copy and oop, copy and do do do. Now I'll come over to my live. Now I'm going to have to say goodbye to this video. I don't want it to play. And here it is. Watch this, please. Control V. And there it is. Ah. Uh. Uh, to look at institutional buy, uh, I'll show you the site that I'm looking at here. I got Elaine, Elaine Nelson here wanting to know, uh, hey, Cap, what website do you use to check institutional buying? That's right here. Posting that for you now. Hello, Elaine. Oops. Oh my gosh, Catfish, get this right. And here is the site. <clears throat> Control V and enter. All right. That shows, by the way, that today SoFi's institutional ownership has risen and has gone up to 801. It is another long-only position that has just taken up a new position in SoFi. And there's been a lot, as I've been showing you lately, who've been increasing their positions in SoFi. And I want you to be aware that many of the ones here that have decreased their positions in SoFi like 100%, they're shorters. You can find them as shorters. If you want to see what I'm talking about, I'll show you here. Hold on. Uh, I don't want to do that. Fintel is where we're going. There it is. Fintel. Yep, no problem at all. <clears throat> Elaine, happy to help you out. Uh, one of the things I'm going to do when I get over here is I'm going to show you something interesting. So if you click on short interest here when you get on this page to the link that I just sent you, if you click on short interest, you're going to have uh, this thing open up. And you're going to be able to click on something else besides just short interest. You'll be able to click on uh, institutions holding, institutions shorting SoFi. And right now this thing is saying, uh, for example, there we go. And hold on a second. All right, good day to you. Good day to you. Uh, when you get over here to this short interest, like I said, you click on this. It says right here. Uh, funds shorting SoFi. So I like to go over to funds shorting SoFi. And while I'm looking at the funds shorting SoFi, I can compare those with these numbers of people I see reducing their positions in SoFi. All right. So for example, I can look over here and I can see that one of the ones that just reduced their positions was Capitalo with a K. Capitalo. So if I go over here and I hit Control F and I hit Capitalo, do I see them on this screen anywhere? And so I hit, I type it in Capitalo, and they are not one of the ones I'm seeing. Let me look here. Capitalo Investmentos. Investmentos. Oh, Capitalo Investmentos would be. Uh, 
someone from South America, 2,000 shares. I don't know what the heck they got out so quick for with their only 2,000 shares. But I'm going to look at this one here, DFQTX. Okay, so I copy this. And then I want to see what, because they just reduced their position by 74%. I want to see if they were one of the ones that were shorting the stock. So I come over here and I enter that in right here, paste it, and I want to see if DFQTX is one of them. All right, and I do not see them showing up as one of them. And uh, so now I am going to <clears throat> showing 802 now, 741 Law of Michael Kitchens. All right, very cool like to see that let me refresh the page here and see what you're seeing if i can <laughs> yeah baby all right another one came in i told you people follow the freaking money Four one, we change this now. Four one twenty four goes to eight o two seven hundred and forty one long now. Another one today. Thirty two short. Twenty nine long and short used to be thirty two long and short. They're out. Volume now has changed to thir three three ninety. Was eight eight ninety six six forty one three ninety eight ninety six six forty one three ninety eight ninety six three ninety eight ninety six six forty one <clears throat> What do you know? Another long position taken up in SoFi. Long only. Well, that doesn't surprise me one single bit. And see, this is what's happening to the poor shorters. They drive the price down and more longs come buying in. Look at this. Look at her now. We're going to ref we're going to be refreshing this screen right now and we're kind of looking at it in a little bit of a fast forward. And uh you know what I think is interesting for you guys to be aware of? If we hit this button here and we see right now, do you notice that they are holding the Dow now for an half an hour at 266 a share. Take note that they've been holding the Dow at 266 a share. And just like I predicted, so far this afternoon, I said would be down 13 cents, then down 12, then 11, then down 10, then down 9. And look at the Dow being still head down. 266, almost 66 on this number here as well. The same number we just saw has just been sitting there and being held at the 66, okay? And I bring it to your attention because it's been for 30 minutes it hasn't moved. For 30 minutes, the Dow has not moved since I just showed you that a little bit ago. That's right. Still sitting there now. And huh, it was actually there when I came to it last right there, 266. I happened to notice it and showed it to you that it was down 266. And the price was at 39,540. All right, when I mentioned that to you. So that would have been back here. That would have been at one o'clock. All right. And sure shit, they even took it down lower. And then off she went. Now she's going up. And again, she's back to holding it there at the same number that they had it an hour ago where they were holding it. And look how long they held it there at that number. Look how sideways this thing was at 2666 right here. Look at that. And again, right now, they're going to try and hold it right here down this much, down 266. Okay. So I, I just bring that to your attention. I like to, I like to let people know. <laughs> yep, another institution comes in long on SoFi when they run the price down and make it too attractive for an institution to pass it up. 
This is the problem for the shorts right now. When they drive it down, institutions that own at an average price of $17 and $18 and $16, jeez, they can drop their average cost down to around $13? Bucks? Well, why not? Buy more here. I'm watching this here in a kind of a fast forward mode. This is playing in fast forward right now. And you can see exactly what's happening with the price. We're watching it in fast forward as it rises and rises and rises. And I want you to be aware, folks, this number that that's changing on SoFi as it changes, it's going up. And there's a bullish pattern called momentum that is in SoFi's favor right now. That's right. Momentum, baby. Look at that gorgeous chart right there. And by the way, folks, she's not going to stop here. 21 million shares now traded already, and we still have two hours and 20 minutes. We're going back up over 30 million today, and we may even get to 35 million or more because I think they've been holding back. I, I, I think they've honestly been holding back on us, people. They didn't want to show their cards, but they're starting to show them now at a quarter till two. Oh, it's going to be a struggle for these doggone shorties. Last week, on Monday, the market opened at $7.30. And last week, on Friday, the close was at $7.30. Just be aware of that, folks. Last week, SoFi opened at 7.30 a share on Monday morning, and it closed at 7.30 on Friday. And today, we opened at 7.30 this morning, all right? This is important for you guys to know. You don't think there's a reason they're trying to hold this thing down at 7.30 so hard? You don't think there's a reason they borrowed so many shares here recently to hold this thing down here? I can't wait to see that they don't have a freaking share left again. And it's not going to be long, folks. You can all see this morning, I want you to be aware that here, right here, this morning at, ele- at uh, what time was it this morning? Right here, this morning. Or yesterday on the 27th, 6.7 million shares on Thursday. 6.7 million shares. And now here we are on April 1st. They returned and had 6.7 on March 27th. They had to use them all that same day. They returned 6.7 million shares and they returned and then used them almost immediately thereafter. They went from 6.7 million shares on March 27th back down on the same day after 4 o'clock in the afternoon returning those 6.7 million. The same dang day they borrowed another 5. Point, what 5.6 million down to 1.3 on March the 28th. They're in trouble, people. Then they come back and return over the <clears throat> the 29th and they return and they've got back up to 4.1. Then they had all the way back up to April 1st this morning. They were all the way back up there to 5.9 million shares this morning. But alas, the price is rising now. <clears throat> and they have nothing left to do but keep borrowing <clears throat> to try to stop it. And meanwhile, SoFi puts out more news and more news and more news and gets more in the headlines. <sighs> Michael Kitchens, thank you for bringing that to my attention. Very cool to know that. That now SoFi Institutions is at 802 long. And you need to know that, folks, because you need to be following the money. And you need to follow the fact that every time they try to drop this SoFi down now, bam, they got some institution coming in. 
they're just waiting for the opportunity, in fact. Obviously, they're just sitting there on the sidelines waiting for them to drop it down, and then they buy their way in. Simple as that. Another wise institution who did not depend or rely on the analyst work of David Chiaverini. They came to their own conclusion. And when they drove the price down, they bought more. Today, folks, today, that institution filed, I believe. <clears throat> Get down here and take a look. <laughs> yep. Sat Sato, Invesco, Illyrian, Galaxy Crypto, ETF bought in. And oh my God, again on April 1st, Vanguard Total World Stock Index, 526,000 shares increased their percentage by, it says over here, the value of by 9.86%. Vanguard. What's going on with these people? Did you see up here, Vanguard just got through on the 13th of February, adding from 68 million to 81 million shares, increasing their share percentage by 20%. On February 13th, and now another venture of Vanguard, their index is buying another 9.86% in value. I'm telling you people, follow the freaking money here. Please, please follow the money. Don't be confused by the daily borrowing of shares by shorts to run the price down. The institutions that keep accumulating and keep buying will eventually wear them out of shares. They won't have them left. The cost to borrow is going to keep going higher and higher. I want to go see what it is now. Well, I can tell you one thing. <clears throat> the, the cost to borrow just went from 0 0.561 and jumped up to 0 0.7. And from point zero point five to 0 0.7, folks, is not good. <laughs> All right, for shorty. And one of these days, we're going to see it spike way up like it did over here because they're not going to have any shares left. April the 17th, I went and looked at the history to see what the hell happened to SoFi to make the short interest cost to borrow go up to 3.25 or 3.267% in one day. And what happened? That was the day SoFi sued the federal government. And the, the 17th was the day they sued the federal government so they could stop this moratorium on student loans. And the very next day, Elizabeth Warren fired off on SoFi for doing it. Trying to tell how dastardly they were for doing that on that day. Oh, she just fired off on them on April the 18th. <laughs> I like people to see this stuff. Google. Nobody wants SoFi to make any money and be a success. Nobody. There it is. Look at this. Warren and Presley demand answers from SoFi. April 18th. There it is. April 18th, Presley Warren blasts SoFi for Banks' shameless lawsuit to repel student loan payment pause. 
Here she writes, SoFi's attempt to end the student loan payment pause and force millions of Americans to be responsible. Well, that's not what it really says. It says, force millions of Americans into repayment while ranking, raking in massive revenues and handing out huge executive paychecks represents corporate greed at its worst. Lady, let me tell you what represents corporate greed at its worst. The price of gasoline being the highest it ever was in 2008, and then the, the petroleum companies posting headlines about their record profits they were making that year. And every year we've been seeing these oil companies showing record profits while the price just keeps going up. All right. Let's, some people say catfish. That's, a, that's not right. Well, let's go look at it. 2008 oil companies. <laughs> Disclose record profits. Let's see if I'm right or not. There it is. Exxon Mobil reported the largest annual profit in U.S. history Friday, dated January the 30th, 2009. Folks, they're reporting fourth quarter earnings in 2008 when the whole country was collapsing. And there you see ExxonMobil making $45.22 billion, the highest quarterly profit ever recorded. Here's another one. November 2009, major oil companies post record profits. Do you guys know what was going with the price of gas in 2008 and 2009? <laughs> Buenos tardes, Catfish. Hello, Emilio Ortega. Buenos tardes, mi amigo. Muchas gracias. Usted está aquí como amigo hoy. Yo espero tu tienes un buenos Easter. Ayer. <sighs> Oh, I'm out to expose everything that they do, folks, to you guys. I keep you informed. I don't let these people pull this bull crap on you. Elizabeth Warren, get on, get real, you know, trying to say that this was forcing millions of Americans into repayment while raking in massive revenues and handing out executive paychecks. What did you do for us, Elizabeth, while the oil companies in 2008 and 9 were making reference profits? What did you do to stop them from doing that for us, for Americans? Where did you step up? Did you send them a letter like this? Did you send the oil companies a letter like this in 2008 and 2009? What was the average price of gasoline during 2009? Three twelve a gallon. <clears throat> See how high that is? Three twelve a gallon. I mean, today we're at three sixty nine, and back then in two thousand nine, it was at three twelve. <laughs> what about inflation? What about? Uh, I mean, come on, folks. What about everything else has gone up fifty, seventy, a hundred times that that amount, and gas. We're now right 40 cents higher than where we were in 2009. Just proof of the fact. Yeah, disgusting. The whole country in 2008's financial breakdown, people getting tossed out of their homes and thrown out on the street and becoming homeless and stuff, defaulting on loans all over the place that were overinflated to begin with. 
And then they created all that and bail out all the big banks, bail those guys out, let them get their bonus checks too. <clears throat> Shame on SoFi for wanting a borrower to make payments. How dare you? Yeah. How dare them want to make, like I said when I was reading this, how dare them? It should say, force millions of Americans to be responsible, not into repayment. First of all, I got news for you. SoFi never forced any of those people to come in and do a student loan. SoFi never forced any of those people to try to increase their value in the marketplace by becoming more educated. SoFi didn't force anyone to do that. And SoFi did not force millions of Americans to repay. No. Those Americans are the ones that obligated themselves into repayment, not SoFi. But this is the typical rhetoric we get from idiotic, brainless twits like her running our country and investing in the global war machine right now. <clears throat> oh, I got more, folks. Let's just dig a little bit more. Elizabeth Warren investing in war stocks. <laughs> Let's just see. I'm just curious. <clears throat> April 5th, 2022, <clears throat> now two years ago, almost to the day, they're trying to, a hearing on insider trading. Senator Warren makes, which would ban members of Congress and their spouses from owning and traditional trading individual stocks. And uh, And surprisingly, believe it or not, she's actually introduced legislation to ban this practice, but guess what? They've all denied that. They don't want anything to do with being limited on uh, the stock market. They like to be able to pass laws that favor certain companies that they're investing in. <laughs> okay. They like that a lot. Don't try and take away my side gig. Okay. <laughs> I got a good thing going here. This government isn't paying me enough already, and I need to make a little side hustle. So don't try and cut me off from buying into my military stocks now, because that Raytheon and McDonnell Douglas, and boy, they've just been Boeing and all. They're doing good, man. Everything's going through the roof, going up. So don't tell me I can't buy those, because that's how I really supplement my income. <laughs> Got that little side gig going on. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I love being here on this channel and showing you guys all this stuff. <laughs> Elizabeth might not be buying them, but I tell you what, all her buddies up there sure as hell are, and that's why they won't pass that bill. It's been brought to the table and denied, brought to the table again, denied, brought, ah, brah, nay, nay, nay. <laughs> <laughs> Pelosi asked about it, and she says, I'm not making any money on the stock market. That's my husband that does all that. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> well, I don't have any idea why my husband wasn't wearing any pants that day and the guy with him. I don't know why they had, and I don't have any idea. Uh <laughs> Isn't it funny? Whatever happened to that story, boy, was that talk about shoveling something under the carpet, man. Just get, get rid of that, that, that nasty little rumor. <laughs> Police were confused and don't understand why when they answered the door, he walked back into the room where the perpetrator was who hit him in the head with a hammer. But conflict, conflicting stories. <laughs> As a matter of fact, the person who first broadcast that that was true was fired forced to step down. Shh, don't say that. You can't say that. You can't tell everybody that the police got to his door and when he opened the door, he walked back into the house 
and then got hit in the head with the hammer? <sighs> Shush your little mouth. You're fired. <sighs> How stupid of you. <clears throat> All right, we're talking about stocks. <clears throat> They're over here at BITF. You can see that made a nice move again today. Congratulations, everyone, in on BITF with me. I appreciate your... That was easy. Yeah, it's easy money, this one here. BITF is just going to be easy, just like SoFi is. These are long-term holds. This, this stock will be $15 a share a year from now when they get all those machines hooked up. And they're creating at the same rate that uh, CLSK is doing. Speaking about CLSK, let's go have a look at them now. CLSK. Or is it CLSK? See, they're $19 a share almost, and they're creating the same amount of Bitcoin as BITF will be creating in about a year. So you do the math, you figure it all out, people. BITF is using hydroelectricity to create their Bitcoin or some at least. And uh, so they're not using up the energy of the world. Uh, they're using green energy to create Bitcoin and are going to be equaling the hash capacity of CLSK, a price stock at about $19 a share. And BITF is currently at $2.26. Go figure. <clears throat> Meanwhile, we watched the shorties trying to keep SoFi in the red today. And uh, they've borrowed a bunch of more shares. And I guess they didn't hear the news. Go up and look at what I have above there, says Catfish Tyler, Stock Guru. Watch this, please. Okay. Please go up and watch that video right there. All right. That's put out by Tanner and uh, Tevis. It's actually on Tevis's channel, and it's titled something about a secret, okay? A secret that SoFi has. And uh, it involves small businesses, SMBs. And it involves, and this has not been announced by SoFi yet, what they're doing, but because they put up listings for job openings for certain positions then in this man this in an, in and of itself is a testament to what they're about to do because of the jobs that they recently put on the market that they're looking to fill and this video that I'm telling you about that that uh, Tevis put up is a short little 17 or 19 minute video that you guys and gals need to get over and watch on on YouTube. I posted a link on it now twice. It's also my pinned message at the top of the screen today because it's that important for you to understand what SoFi is about to do. And I want you to be aware as well that this is a pretty complex topic that involves a lot of information, but I think they did a very good job even though you guys have heard me talk about, you know, Tanner in a somewhat negative way because of some of his headlines he uses to get uh, people to click on his, I call it clickbait, you know, putting up things like SoFi $2. SoFi, is, is Robin Hood going to destroy SoFi? You know, will Robin Hood's credit card uh, make SoFi tank, you know? Just stuff like that is so freaking ridiculous and pitiful. Uh, and I know there's many people on this channel that, that are with me that agree with me 100%. They don't like that tactic either. And uh, But unfortunately, there's been some people in the past here that are providing excellent, excellent SoFi information, including Stock Goat. But he started doing that for a little bit. He stopped now, but he was just trying to get more clicks, people. More, 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 more views, okay? Anything to get more views and more subscribers and more people listening, they'll they'll use that tactic. I'm not that way at all. Not that way at all. By the way, uh, we're doing a just quick a quick update on Bitcoin. As you can see, interestingly enough, it's down 2.75%. But what do you know? Lo and behold, BITF going higher. Isn't that interesting? 
It's because again, I'm telling you people that are buying this stock up on the days when the Bitcoin is way up there and they're driving it down because they want to accumulate this thing. And one day they're going to, when they make their announcements of their new, uh, how many they've, how many Bitcoin they're doing each month and it starts to equal what CLSK is doing, look for the prices to become very similar because they're generating that much revenue, period. And they'll be doing it soon. One of my favorite stocks right here, BITF. I also would suggest you look at this in you, okay? Even though we're a little bit down today, I also suggest you look at FCEL and TCNNF, especially this stock TCNNF. I have a very good reason for believing that this thing could go easily to $15 to $20 because of the federal government about to become even more lax and let their try to get their fingers in on the on the tax revenue from the marijuana companies. So that's why I believe in this stock. And if you look at the six month chart, you can easily see what it's been doing. And I think it is on the way to a new higher high as of yet. So I tell you, TCNNF, please consider getting in here and now at this level before the federal government says, yeah, it's good. We're not going to arrest anybody for having pot. Meanwhile, you can see here in a fast forward mode of uh, SoFi at 719, 720. And uh, there's a very, very good reason that it's there. They want this price of this thing to be below 730. Why? Well, because last Monday, guess where the price opened on SoFi? Last Monday, 730. It opened at 730. What's the price that it opened up? Look at that. Previous close on Friday, 730. Last week on Monday, the stock opened at 730 and it closed at 730. And so if they can drive SoFi down each day, 20 cents, and then make it go back up 20 cents, that's a 40 cent move for them every single day, folks, while they borrow shares to keep returning and do it again and do it again. It's just a wash and rent cycle. They're doing over and over and over. That's what they're doing. Wash people out, rinse it out, run it back up. Wash people out, rinse it out, run it back up. Wash people out, rinse it out, wash, run it back up. They're going to keep doing it too, people. They're going to keep doing it. Watch, watch this stock close out today at 7.30 and they made another freaking nice 40 cent move on a half a million, millions and millions of shares. Uh, millions and millions. It adds up, people. It adds up. Interestingly enough. And the, isn't it interesting that this thing has been sitting here for so dang long at 7.20 this afternoon. What does that mean to them? Nothing. <laughs> they shorted this in the fours. <laughs> and they shorted it in the fives. And they shorted it in the sixes. <laughs> this means losses to them. That's what it means. As long as it sits here at 7.20, it means nothing more than losses to them. And I proved to you the difference between last week opening at 7.30 and closing at 7.30 for all of us is that we bought lower. <laughs> We've bought lower. And even today, we bought lower than 730. But we're not paying any interest at all. None. We don't have to borrow and we don't have to worry as much. They're worrying people. They should be worrying, okay? Because now they can't drive the damn thing back and even close to 455 where they shorted it that day on David Chivarini's downgrade. They can't get it. They, there's still shorted positions being held from 487 to 445 that day. They're being held. I think the price was 487 or 484 on May the 15th. Let's get down here. <clears throat> Look at that 484 to 445. 103 million shares traded and they were shorted from 484 all the way down to 445. And they're holding them still. And they shorted it this day at that high. They shorted it on this day at 514 to make it drop a penny the next. 
They shorted it here at 534. They shorted it here at 549 to make it go down to 533. They shorted it here at 540 to make it drop and close at 521. They shorted it here at 548 to make it drop again at 541, 20 cents higher. They shorted it at 605 to make it close at 603. They shorted it at 702. They shorted it at 726, people. They shorted it at 711, shorted it at 760, shorted it at 776, shorted it at $8, shorted it at 820, shorted it at 821. All these positions were shorted and the damn thing hit 1023. And then they were out of shares to borrow. <laughs> June the 14th. June the 14th. How many shares did they have left to borrow on June the 14th, people? <laughs> when they had shorted it down to there. On June the 14th, you can see right here, they had only 350,000 shares left on June the 14th. Desperation mode, there it is. 350,000 shares were left to short with on June the 14th. Whew. And they shorted. They were borrowing, 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 borrowing shares. And the price went up and up and up and up. And then they called and said, please downgrade this thing. It's June the 14th and we're down 125%. Please, Oppenheimer, Piper Sandler, Bank of America, downgrade, downgrade, downgrade. We're fucked. <laughs> they were too. They were. They downgraded them, all right. <clears throat> they downgraded them. They saved the shorts' asses and got the price back from 1023 down to 771 in eight days. Downgrading. <clears throat> and megaphoning that through every single possible way they could. You saw all those things I just showed you on the downgrade. Reddit was talking about it. Zach's was talking about it. Everybody, all of them, Motley Fool, you name it. They just broadcast that and sounded it out. Make the alarm everywhere. There, there's a downgrade to three prices higher than their previous target prices. That's right. Downgrades up. Seven nineteen a share right now, and uh, <clears throat> all I'm doing sitting here right now is showing you guys how that's sounding. I just hope they finish diluting so my calls can print eventually. Oh, uh, they're done diluting it. They got no reason to dilute anymore. They did what some people call dilution with that convertible note deal. But God bless, even Anthony Noto steps up. Well, we bought 78 million shares to offset that dil uh, dilution. Most companies wouldn't give a flying frippin' crip. I guarantee you, when Uber was priced at uh, $54.80 and they did their public share offering of convertible notes, I guarantee you they didn't cover any of them like SoFi did with another 78 million that they bought with a cap, okay? They didn't care. And now Uber's price has gone from that 54.80 all the way up to freaking 90 bucks a share almost, Uber. <clears throat> Holy smokes. After the same deal that SoFi just did, their Uber price is freaking nearly doubled. <laughs> I wonder why. Oh, maybe all those institutions that got the convertible notes, they want to cash them in around $80 instead of just for 1.25%. I don't know what their rate was, but I know SoFi's was only 1.25. But look at them, $76 a share when they did their convertible note offering of $1.5 billion, not $750 million, $1.5 billion, twice as much of convertible note offering. And the price has gone over the last six months from the day they did that convertible note, note offering on November the 21st, which was right here. That's the day they did it. And the price was $54.85 a share. And now it's sitting at $76.21. A week ago, it was at 80 Just about 80 
Just letting you know. <clears throat> so rest assured, SoFi knows what it was doing when it did that convertible note. And the people who bought it, they know what they were doing too. In fact, they didn't even sell 750 million shares. They sold eight, uh, it, not 750 million. They ended up getting 826 and a half million. They had so many people wanting in on that convertible note deal because they all know what they're going to do with this price now. They all know what how SoFi is going to perform over the next few years. They've seen the bank rating go from 400 a year and a half ago to number 72 now. Seven twenty, seven nineteen. <clears throat> Trouble for them is the Dow and the Nasdaq uh, <clears throat> are down today. Nasdaq barely red, and I don't think it's going to stay in the red. I think it's going to go green, and I think SoFi is not going to stay in the red either. I think it's going to go green. And I see a very good possibility that SoFi, even if it finishes in the red today, will go green in the after hours and stay green in the after hours and keep going green in the after hours and keep going green tomorrow and on Wednesday and Thursday and Friday as well. And I honestly believe that SoFi will continue to be attacked every single morning on the 4 million shares that they borrow at 4 o'clock in the morning every day. And they're going to be driven down as low as they can get it every single freaking day. But every day that they do, more institutions are going to buy like they did today. Two more institutions went long today, folks. Go over here and look. Take a look right here. Institutional ownership. Right there. 802, folks. Two more coming in long. 741 long now. Look at this boat being rowed by 741 going one direction and only 32 trying to offset the 741. How does that work? Do you think this boat's going to go in the direction the shorts want it to when there's only 32 of them and we got 741 to want to see it go up the river? <laughs> These are the shorts. They're, they're the ones paddling upstream. They're paddling up a river. And there's a lot of volume in that right here on the long side. There's a lot of water flow that they're up against these measly 32 shorts. I'm just saying, doesn't look like a position I'd want to be in. Not a position I'd want to take a short position in. Seeing that many people long on this thing, I would never even think about it. But then again, watch them get burned this afternoon, folks. Watch every one of those shorters who's been shorting in the fours, fives, sixes, and sevens, and even today, watch them all get burned now. And one thing they have to do, return those shares that they're still holding right now, 219 million shares of SoFi stock being held. The highest number that's ever held of shorted positions in SoFi stock, short float. Record highs. And the price, well, look at it rising, folks. And I'll admit, we wish, we all wish that it was climbing faster, but this has always been a situation where we've had to be very, just steady, because if we just stay the course and we keep where we're at, we're going to be fine, because this price, again, is going to go over 10. I assure you, one thing only, that I make no guarantees, but I've seen history do it five times in the last year and a half, and so I presume it'll do it again. That's why I'm so confident that it'll happen, because history often repeats itself so often that it's done it six times with this stock over the last year and a half. Well, my coffee's gone. Get to my SoFi mug. Uh, I don't want to unplug this. But I almost did right there. Hold on.
I'm trying to get my tape out of here. Okay. Oh, yeah. Talking so far, so far, so far. Don't, 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 don't. <sighs> Y'all just hang on here for Jiffy Pop. We got a run that's a coming and she ain't gonna stop. So far, baby, this thing's gonna pop. You'll see. Just hang on out with me. <sighs> Woo, yeah. We're working on a plan right here. Don't go nowhere, y'all. Don't you get yourself out of here nowhere. We're going to show you what we got to compare. Ah, yeah. Okay. Nah, I'm not going to do it in that color. Y'all just hang loose with me, folks. I got to take a little break here. I'll be right back. There's 61 on this channel right now. Before I take a break, I would like to ask you to simultaneously hit the like button here. The time right now is 2.30. Still have an hour and a half to watch SoFi go green, and I think it very well could. So let's do this at 2.30 and 48 seconds. We'll simultaneously hit the like button. And then I'm going to take a quick break and I'll be back after about five minutes. So here we go. In exactly 10 seconds from now, let's hit the like button at 2.30. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, boom, 2, 30 and 48 seconds. Hit that like button for me, please. Let's see if we can get it up to 90 likes on this channel right now. That'd be cool as heck. And uh, like I said, just give me a minute here. Take a take a brief break because every once in a while, I do have to get up out of this chair and move around and get some blood circulating a little bit and, uh, you know, get some more uh, beverage here and uh, uh, take a pause for the cause. I'll be back here briefly. Just don't. And think about all these people who are keeping this channel here alive. And these are the ones right here. Thank, thank you so much. J.P. Panic, Rusty Pratter, Cham, Jeff Presley, Rick Lawrence, Daniel Davis, Armand, Brew Tank Outdoors, Elaine Nelson, D.B., Charche, and Danny Dimes 10. Okay, everybody. King Cat will be back in a little bit. You hang loose here. Five minutes from now, you'll see him again, my friends.
Okay, everybody. It's time for me to get on out of here. I hope you guys have a good time with King Cat. He's back on the scene. And you guys have fun. We'll see you a little bit later. All right. Welcome back. Uh, if you did step away for a little bit, like I did for five minutes, uh, I am just taking a brief break here. Uh, it says I got ads coming here. And uh seems like they're coming with a lot more frequency. So sorry that you're having to put up with ads. But I found out, and it's true, the more ads I allow, the more people will get sent this channel. That's all I care about. I want more and more people to see this channel, to hear what I'm telling them, to explain exactly how SoFi has been manipulated over the last year and a half, to show them the swings that it's made, the drastic swings that it's made. And uh, generally, as a rule, up until recently, it's almost like they know I'm on to them now, so they're changing their game plan, right? Soundhound at 564. I think SPIR Global is one of the best buys in the market right now. Satellite company specializes in maritime traffic, aviation traffic, weather data, and is growing crazy. Okay. Thank you, SPIR. I'll take a look at it. SPIR. S-P-I-R. <clears throat> S-P-I-R. Okay. Volume. S-P-I-R. I don't see a lot of money being generated here, SPIR. I don't see a lot of global demand for, I don't see anything here. Short term, yikes. Why are they so far down today? What the heck? Ugh, that doesn't look good, no. Mm -mm. That doesn't appeal to me. Two strong buys and two buys. Hmm. Vienna, Virginia. Provide subscription-based data. Okay. Down 6% today, huh? Man. I'm not so sure about that, my friend. I just don't... Uh, I don't know. I would rather see you charged like SoFi's, okay? Uh, now, it could be that this, this company doesn't have a lot of outstanding shares and it may be susceptible for bigger moves faster, but I don't know. Um, but I do know one thing. Uh, from the looks of this chart, this five-year chart, God dang. <clears throat> The highest it's ever been, and look how tra sideways. No, this is not going to move for you fast. Not for me. This is this is too much of a slug for me, and I don't like the downward movement of it today, and I don't like the progression of it, having reached this level here of twelve dollars, and then falling down to eleven fifty two, and then falling down to nine fifty two. Started make back up to twelve forty, so it matched that high, and then boom, take it right off the top and drive it back down. And do the same thing over, wash them out, wash out retail. I'd have to say, no, not here. That's not a good looking place for me. You get this price down in here, I'm ready. All right. You see this right here, 534 share, call me. Or even, you know, one of these net notches in here, you know, 864. Or maybe that one there, 928. But those are my entry points right there. 928, uh, 864. Or 766, 767, 768. That's me. And uh, <laughs> I see there was a bottom achieved at 363 back here in October. And now we've seen a four-time gain. But man, be careful here. Don't go in too heavy if you pick this up. I would not do that. 
And if I were going to buy it, I'd buy it at 1030 in the morning, no matter when I bought it. That's all I will tell you. But to me, that looks nothing compared to uh, SoFi's chart right now. SoFi's long-term chart is ready to explode to the upside. There's no, there's no doubt about it. There's no doubt about it. It can't be denied. SoFi's chart is about to explode. Get in here on this interactive chart and you guys can see it. I, I just, uh, gonna, I understand and you, you, you're, you're fine. I'm not cutting the stock. I'm not saying that it, that it won't go back up, but I just don't see this as a point to make entry on it because I think it's going to fall more and I could be wrong. I mean, I like, I like you telling me about a stock in the, in the daytime when it's driven down and it may be at its very low, but let's just see that. Let's just see that. Let's see it start to make a recovery. This thing isn't recovering right now. And I'm not, you know, it's good to keep an eye on it right here, possibly. But, uh, man, that six-month chart, that was the buy spot. Wish you would have told me about this then. And uh, that would have been a lot cooler if you'd let me know on October the 26th about this, okay, of 2023. That's like SoFi. I tried to tell everybody about it at four dollars and fifty-five cents, and four forty-five. I was screaming at people, "Buy this stock! Buy this stock!" That's when I started this company. Jeff Presley agreed. Sounding six. I'm in for also RKLB. Yeah, that's another one. RKLB. RKLB. How's it doing today? We're going to make a lot of money on this stock. This is one of those stocks that you need to have your sell orders in at $12 a share, okay? And 24, all right? Just, they say set it and forget it, but that's not true. Set your sell orders in and forget it. So that one, your shares can't be borrowed by the longs, that of the shorters that way. Number one reason, tie up your shares, put your sell orders in on them so they can't be borrowed. <clears throat> And uh, getting back over here. Oh, yeah. See, this looks good to me, man. I'm telling you, man. To me, I see nothing here but about a 20 million share base at freaking 720. That's all. I, that's what I see. <laughs> and I see more institutions coming in long. And I've also seen some institutions selling out of their long positions more recently to cover their shorted positions. Yep. Oh, well, I can prove it, man. And there's there's some institutions now that are selling some of their long positions to cover their shorted positions on SoFi right now. See, you guys don't know maybe how to do this, but when we jumped up from uh, <clears throat> just now at 798 institutions, when we jumped up from 798 institutions all the way up to how many we've got now of 802 institutions, when we did that, institutional ownership percentage dropped. All right? I'll show you here in a minute. And the only way, in my opinion, for that to happen, the only way that I could see that the institutional ownership would increase while the percentage of shares owned by institutions decreased would be because some of them had to sell their long positions to cover some of their shorts. They didn't sell their all of their long positions. They had to sell some of their long portfolio. The ones that are hedging it both ways right now, okay? That's my call. I want you to be aware that just a week ago, there was 39.85% of the shares institutional owned. 3985 I showed you we're about to break over 40 And all of a sudden, it dropped to 37 but institutional longs came in for more, and it didn't add up until I got to thinking, wait a minute, there is a way that could happen. There's, an, there's a way that could happen. 
institutions that are going both ways, long and short, if they've got to start selling those shorted positions to get those shares back that they've got to return, they don't have a choice. They've got to sell some of their long position, and there it goes. That's why the reduction, because they're going both long and short on SoFi. I could be wrong, but I don't think so. And now look at SoFi. I'm going to be ringing the green bell soon. I told you guys. Uh, <clears throat> sound dog six. Sounding six. <laughs> sound dog. Sound. <sighs> I have a feeling. And I'll show you what that feeling is in a second. Look at this SoFi. Look at it. I told you they'd be coming on in because the water's fine. Let the run begin. They're going to sit back and watch the slack and they're going to make a move and the ball's going to whack and they're going to see this thing crack right out of this mold and it's going to be sold and sold and sold. But they're not going to stop it from going higher and higher because everybody here, this thing is on fire. There's a deep, deep desire. Everybody's inspired and wants to retire one day with SoFi. <laughs> In the 20s and 30s and more. Hell, who knows how high it'll go. Every once in a while, you'll get a little bit of a surprise out of Catfish Tyler. And he'll start telling you stuff in rhyme. And I'll, I'm telling you, sometimes in time, you don't know where it's going to go and how it will flow. But all of a sudden, it just grows and grows in the price. And it takes off and goes and goes. And everyone goes, my gosh. <laughs> And they say, hey, Catfish, why don't you break out that guitar and just run this thing up and blow it past the stars? And I say, all right. And I start to play. And the next thing you know, oh, she's on her way. <clears throat> Stick around with me, folks. I'm going to keep it flowing, keep it going. You guys all know, and I'm not going to be showing anybody anything negative on this channel. It's all going to be good. And my face is going to be smiling. Everybody knows. I hope you had a wonderful weekend. I hope you had a wonderful Easter. I see these ads are coming out here every freaking two minutes. And I'm going to turn them off because I think that's shutting people off. So that one's gone. <clears throat> yeah, SoFi is doing sweet right here, man. This is exactly what we want to see. Just nice, steady. The 200-day moving average stays intact. It's going up. That's all we care about. Over the long term, look at the two. Look at the 200-day moving average, people. Don't get dissuaded. Don't get confused. Don't be misconstrued. Understand that the 200-day moving average on SoFi looks awesome. We'll move this thing over here to where it gets next to my other SoFis because I usually like to keep the 200-day nestled in here next to my historical data. And right now, I'm looking at a completely unbelievably gorgeous chart that I think is going to do exactly what I said it's going to do. Its trajectory looks like it anyway. <clears throat> For those of you that are still here with me, I see a double dip below the trend line, a big jump up, pull back, lateral move, double dip below the trend line, a huge jump up even higher, pull back, Drop to a double dip below the 200, the trend line, boom, off even up again. Come back over here and see in this double dip right here below the trend line again, looks just like this one back here in April. This double dip we're seeing right now looks just like the one we saw April. <clears throat> to me, it was coincidentally right there on May the 1st, Earnings Day, and then May the 15th, David Civerini Day. There it is. That's the double dip, and we're seeing it again right now. Boom and boom. <clears throat> and then off she goes. I showed this, I showed this to some people the other day uh, on a short video for everybody to understand so they could see what this thing's doing. And you can get a clearer picture of what this thing is doing. And folks, to me, this thing is about to go right on up here. Just like these, these acute moves, every one of them been very straight up, almost straight up, almost straight up, almost. And here we go again. Here we go again. 
here we go again. So, double dip below, boom, double dip below, deep, deep dive, boom, even higher run up. Double dip below, deep, deep dive, just like this one, deep and deeper than here, deep and deeper, and then boom, higher. That's what I see happening. There's more reasons than one for saying that, folks. I can go back over here to historical data, and I can show you what they did here, and you can see what I mean. This is the biggest run-up we ever saw in SoFi's price to July 31st on an earnings call when they sold off Technesis debt, and they missed the street, and they jumped up to 1170 We sold it that day at 1166 God bless Sold at 1166, 1167, 1168. Well, anyway, the reason I mentioned this to you is from right before that, the price had been driven down to 894. And twice it was done there. See that? 894 here, then over 1013, 894 here, then over 1170. So my call is right now to see the price have trouble, if anything, at this number for sure. So you better have a sell order in at 891 or 2 because they'll pull it back to, to 824 from there or whatever, 877. But have a sell there at 892, people, because that number means something to them. They did it twice. <laughs> just so you're aware of it, I want you to be aware of it, folks. I'm just pointing it out to you. Wouldn't it out? Price was down. And this is the interesting part. This is about where we are right now. This is one month, folks. We are one month and one week away from the earnings call. That's this exact date right here. This was one month and one week. See, July the 30th was, this is July the 3rd, and here's June 30th. So we are right now one, two, three, four, five days, and that's really six days. And that's the same point where we are right now before the earnings comes out, the exact same point. See how they drove it down to the lowest they could that day? It's the equal day to where we are or were yesterday. I mean, uh, Friday, I believe. But all I'm saying is, folks, that was June the 23rd, and it was July 31st. So it was one month and one week they hit that low prior. And here we are right now at one month and one week, right? Yeah. So they made the lowest they could get it to today, one month and one week ahead of the earnings call, which is coming out on May the 6th. It's almost identical. See, it's April 1st. So you can see exactly what I'm talking about here. This is to me, it looks like we could see the exact same thing happen now. And look at the price at 723. That's right. SoFi is notorious for falling deeply right before a big run. And I'm showing people on that chart that I just illustrated to them just then. Folks, this is a very definable pattern. Drive it barely below twice, then a takeoff. Then take it deep below and even deeper the second time. Then even double the takeoff of before. Then come over here and a double below and boom off. And then here, double below, even deeper the second time. And then boom, off the dang thing goes. I mean, I don't know how high it's going to go here. On this next earnings call, I have no idea. But I can tell you one thing. Thank God we've got people like Tevor, uh, like Tevis who got their eye on the pulse of this stock and caught that deal when they started advertising for the uh, job they're trying to fill right now. You guys need to be aware of what's going on. SoFi is about to fill a job and that position, when it gets filled, the person who's going to take over that job is going to be making things happen for SoFi that they've never done before. Okay. Go over to the video I've highlighted up above there. It says, check this out. It's the pin. It's the pinned message today, and watch the video this evening or something that Tevis and Tanner did together. And you know how I've spoken about Tanner in the past, but that was a good video. <clears throat> Please go over and watch it. It was posted this weekend. 
and it says something about secret, SoFi secret, and this SMB. I um, I have a picture here. <laughs> Hold on. I have a picture here I want to show you. Just give me a second here. There we go. Let me show you this picture. This is what the video looks like on YouTube. Okay. It says SoFi SMB hiring. SoFi SMB hiring. Okay. And it discloses something about SoFi that they didn't really want to be out yet because, see, they don't like to advertise stuff they're about to do. SoFi likes to do something and then tell everybody. <laughs> but old Tevis and uh, Tanner dug out this job application that they're letting people put in applications to fulfill a position that's going to mean something. It means, so please go over to that video that I have posted there where it says pinned by Catfish Tyler up at the top. And uh, I've even posted a link to it here again recently within the last 20 minutes, 30 minutes or so. And so you can see it right there. It says YouTube. There's a link to it. Just go up in the chat and you'll find the video and a link to the video that I posted telling you why you need to check out this. And uh, hold on a second. I want to see something here. This looks awesome, folks. <laughs> I hate to say it, but for a shorter, that is not what you want to see on a Monday afternoon going on around here. All right? That's not what you want to see. Uh, <sighs> CGC is another uh, marijuana stock that I want to just keep an eye on. Someone mentioned it earlier today. See how they're doing today. Uh, wow. I don't own any, any of this, but man, that might be a good buy spot. Whew. Dang, I'm glad I got it. I don't know how I happened to look over at that. Somebody had it written earlier. CGC. Golly, man. Whew. What the heck happened there? Man. You think you're feeling bad about SoFi being down a half a percent? Man, CGC. Oh, my goodness. Come on, SoFi. Take it green for us. Take it green. Carl C. Mark said, it, said earlier, uh, I'm getting bloody wound up too. Darn shorts. Institutional and uh, institutional owners ownership. Yeah, let's go, baby. Let's run this thing up. Let's watch it fly. I love it right here to be seeing this right here. I'm honest. I'm honestly telling you, folks. I wouldn't be. I couldn't be happier than to see this thing building a base here at 722. And uh, this has to be so disheartening for the shorts. And wait till the damn thing. Uh, last week, I pointed out to everyone, SoFi opened last week on Monday at 7.30 a share. Look where it opened. Look where it closed on Friday. 7.30 a share, people. Last week, the shorts borrowed a ton of friggin' shares they have to pay interest on, and they, they didn't make the price move at all. <laughs> they couldn't make it move down. Borrowing all those shares and wiping out and depleting all 10 million of their shares. I showed you about four times last week. They only had down to 35,000 and 250,000 and 750,000. Man, they're down. Those shares, they've been borrowing the crap out of them. Meanwhile, what does the price do? Just keeps going up. <laughs> and they want it to go down to fours and fives and sixes. And instead, look at it this afternoon, just so re resiliently standing out right in their face and going, no, that's not our direction. <clears throat> I want you to get on over there and read this YouTube, uh, go over it and check it out. It was posted by Tevis, okay? And I posted it as my, pinned it as my top message because I want you to see what Tevis and uh, his buddy Tanner figured out. And it's good. 
I, I God bless them for bringing that information to my attention so I could share it all with you on this channel with me. Tevis put up a great video, said, and I just showed you the picture. Hope you can find it and watch it this afternoon or evening because uh, this will give you some more insight into the company and the direction that they're headed in and the kind of move they're about to make, okay? <clears throat> they're going to be combining things. Let's just put it that way. <clears throat> SoFi is streamlining people. They're streamlining this baby. It gets better and better every day. More and more aerodynamic flowing with less and less resistance. They can throw everything at they want. But the truth is this company executes people. And what they're fixing to execute the most is the shorters. 723 a share right now they're they're flabbergasted they're just like they're they're at their wits end they're borrowing they're borrowing they're borrowing and the price just keeps going up 724 now and i predicted this earlier i called it out to every one of you that we were going to see this thing only down 13 cents soon and then it would be down only 11 and then down 10 then 9 then 8 then 7 then 6 and i said it was going to happen and I said it possibly would even go green. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen, taking place before your very eyes. And we're going to get a lot of people over here who hopefully will want to get some energy if you guys all hit that like button right now. So let's do it all together at 3.04 and 48 seconds. 3.04 and 48 seconds. In 18 seconds, let's hit the like button, everyone. And get even more people over here. And here we go. We're going to count it down, down together right now. Ready? Here we go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Please depress the like button right there. Let's get this thing off to the moon. Let's get more and more over here. Draw more energy in and watch this price rise this afternoon as they already start making entry at 3.05. Remember what we've been seeing lately at 3.06 in the afternoon for some strange and unexplainable reason, 3.06. I don't know why. But lately we've been seeing it. <sighs> Man, this thing looks good to me, man. I'm just watching this the volume here. 24 million 852. 24 million 852 899. 24 853. 24 853 670. 675. Five shares bought there, folks. I start watching sometimes these numbers very closely because when I see very small increments of shares make a price go up a penny. I'm in. I'm like, oh man, they're in trouble now. Usually they put up some sort of resistance at certain numbers, but when I can see very small increments of shares make the price pop a penny, I know they're in trouble. <clears throat> and I'm telling you already, they're in trouble now. They're in trouble. Their bubble is bursting on them. And I'm here to... <clears throat> show you how they've been doing it all along and hopefully you'll get a grip of how they're doing it now and what it's costing them to do it, how they've used every single share here from May the 15th all the way to June 14th and now they've done it again in less than half the time. <clears throat> <clears throat> I see trouble over here. When I can see them move the price down from having 10 million shares to borrow late March, all the way through March and April and all the way through May and all the way through June and how long it took them to get it two and a half, three months down to the, they had no shares left. That was a long time to have no shares left. What happened over here? What happened over here on December the 23rd? Why did they have to use every one of them? What was going on on that day that freaked them out and said, dang, we're going to have to go attack this. This is great news. We got to hammer it. They didn't have a single share to short from the 23rd of December all the way up until June the 14th. June the 14th, January 14th, I mean, they didn't have a single share. 
<laughs> it took them to go through three months to go down to no shares hardly left to borrow against. And here they did it in one freaking day. Boom. What happened December 23rd? Make him wonder, what the hell happened there? December 23rd. Why? Here we go. December the 23rd <clears throat> was over the weekend even. And price went from 9.59. Oh, by the way, four days before it was at 9.21. And the thing went all the way up to 10.49. December 23rd. <clears throat> Look at that. They didn't have any shares left to borrow after December 23rd. And coincidentally, the price went up December 26th and December 27th to 10.49, 10.39 the next day. All the while, they didn't have any shares to borrow right then after that date, December 23rd. Boom. They ran out all of them. Huh. Funny then from January 14th to the 19th, <clears throat> they had returned all the shares after that time. Look at this. This is, doesn't surprise me. This would have been right in the middle when we were downgraded by Morgan Stanley and KBW too. What do you know? While they didn't have a single friggin' share left, KBW and Morgan Stanley downgraded SoFi. I want to look at this. <clears throat> uh. I knew it was July the 13th that they did one of them, but they did another one. January 31st, what do you know? Morgan Stanley comes out. January 31st. <sighs> there it is. <laughs> they come out and downgrade the stock, and what do you know? On that day, they were able to return all their shares. How do you like that? Huh. What do you know? They use them damn downgrades to get themselves out of those holes that they create every time, don't they, people? They sure as shit do. And I think it's interesting that on January 19th, if you look back at the history on January the 19th, they used every one of their shares to get SoFi down to the lowest price they could that time. January the 19th, look at that. They got the price down to 721 from 952 here to 721 on January the 19th because again, on January 19th is when they borrowed a bunch of shares again. Right here on January the 19th, they borrowed every share. None were left. Because that's how they got the paid after June the 14th when they were down to 350,000 shares left. <clears throat> man, oh man. And then over here in the middle of them having no shares to make the price fall with, no wonder KBW came out then and downgraded SoFi, said they saw a potential drop of 20%. KBW did. This five-star rated analyst. Yeah, all right. Interesting to see that even with his assistance on January the 3rd, they were not able to return the dang shares. Yeah, I like you guys being able to see how I break this down for you. It's just nuts and bolts, people. It's exactly how it was done. That's exactly how they've been doing it all along. And I just show you right there. <clears throat> I want you to know my uh, viewership here on the channel and membership subscriptions has gotten all the way up to about uh, 1,900 people now on the channel. And uh, that's because of you, some of you sharing with your friends and telling them about me. So I'm very grateful for that. I appreciate you doing that. And I hope that you like this content that I keep bringing to you to show you 
so you can understand a little bit more about it. It's not such a mystery. It's not like a, why is this happening? How did that happen? What I show you exactly how they made it all, how they're making it all work for them. It's not working for them too good right now. As a matter of fact, in case you hadn't noticed, this damn thing's about to go green on them on a Monday. And uh, good for them for working at 40 cents. It's a 40 cent gain a day right now they're making off of SoFi. 20 cents off of shorting it at the high at 732 to make it fall all the way down here to 713. So that's a 20 to 20 cent drop, folks. And then it make it 20 cent back up. And that's a 40 cent gain on hundreds of thousands of shares every day. What's 0. 0.40 times 500,000 shares? $200,000. Got it? They made $200,000 today. Making the price swing 40 cents. I'm showing you how it's such easy money for them. And it could be the same for us. If you were to do this every single day, folks, you would make a 40 cent swing every day. A nice little profit. <clears throat> if you had 1,000 shares times 0. 0.40 equals... That's 400 bucks a day. You just put in the dog on bank every day and you have to pay it. You're making 300 because you got to pay about 30% of that in taxes. And by the way, look at SoFi now to 725, only down five cents. And I told you all afternoon, it's just going to keep going up because no one really is selling it. It's short to shorts period. And it's total manipulation. Anyone that invests 500,000 can make $200,000 profit today. Okay, good job. <clears throat> nice. Yeah. It's good money, right? <clears throat> Make a $500,000 investment in SoFi. Buy it today at $7.12 tomorrow. Sell it in the morning at $7 and not 12, but 24, 34 cents, 734, the price today, 734 for the high. <laughs> Make a hundred thousand right there and short it and then run it back down and buy back in when it hit down there. You did a hundred thousand on the drop. Yep. Sell the dip and smell the rip, everybody. And that's exactly what's happening with SoFi every day. And we got to take advantage of it, people. We got to take advantage of it. That's what they're doing. And if you see how they're doing it and you realize, God dang it, man, it looks to me like they could just keep doing this every day. Then why wouldn't you take advantage of what they're doing every day? Sell some in the morning and see if they don't do the same thing that they've been doing. Of course, we can see they've all been doing it over and over. I'm showing you the repetition, folks. I'm showing you the pattern. I've been showing you how they're doing it. They're doing it at four in the morning every day, right here again today, the other day. That's 3.15 in the morning, 450,000 shares left. Here the next one. That is 3.45 in the morning when they only had 1.3 million shares left, okay? I'm showing you when they're doing it, what time. Look over here. What time was it? Was it there? 3.45 in the morning where they borrowed five down to 5.9 million. Folks, what time is it? The same time every day, right before four o'clock when the market opens, they're doing this. You can see it and they're in trouble. Oh my gosh. Look at SoFi now. Nightmare on Short Street. <laughs> That's what I'm looking at. Nightmare on Short Street. But listen, folks, if they can have SoFi last week 
open at 7.30, the same price it opened this week on Monday, exactly the same, and close at the same price. But in the meantime, make it go way up here on long positions they took, then drive it way down here on their shorted positions, then make it go way up here during the week, and then down here during the week, and they make it end up at 7.30. They've made massive gains, and the thing stayed flat. Skip ads. Look at that thing going up. I don't know how they could have suspected anything different happening. I didn't. I told you it was going to happen all afternoon. It's just going to keep going up penny by penny by penny. I said it's going to just, every available share they've dumped will all be gone and it'll go to the next level and the next level and the computer's just going to trade it all day. 40 minutes left to the close and at the rate that it's been climbing already since the price was at 720 at 245. Now, here we are. 40 minutes later, and it's gone from 7 to 7.25. So in another 40 minutes, it goes to 8. I mean, 7, uh, 7.30, right? Sure, it does. Mathematically, that's exactly where it'll work out. Right back at 7.30. Just like they started it this morning, 7.30. Previous close. Opened at 7.31. And meanwhile, they made it move 40 cents today up and down. Swing. A total of 40 cents. It's a great racket, folks, they got going on. It's a really killer racket they got going on. And you need to start taking advantage of it with them. All right? That's all I can say. I think we're going to see a higher high tomorrow myself. And I think the high tomorrow could be as much as 739 to 740 to, yeah, maybe 747, 746 again. Very good number that they've been working off of. See that? They got it to 747, made it finish down 17 cents. The next day, <laughs> it opened higher. Just remember, they had it yesterday at high as 747, closed it down. 7.30, 17 cents, and here's 7.34, and they're trying to close it right now. It looks like, oh, God, that's not right. That's not even close to right. That's good for us. If, the, if we can see a high of 7.47 yesterday and then pull it down 17 cents, and today we see a high of 7.34 and then pull it down only nine, I like that. Down 10 cent right now, but folks, this thing's toggling to 725 now. <clears throat> hey, Bert, thank you uh, for joining into the calorie reduction program here at Catfish Tyler's channel. Today, folks, it's not a good day to see SoFi Red, but it's not a good day to see for the shorts this thing gaining all damn afternoon especially after how much money they had to spend this morning to get it down there in the first place today. So this has got to be for them, like, uh, like in the words of the French, catastrophique. <laughs> That's the word. Catastrophique. Watching so far rise. Oh, yeah, I'm a believer. That is no surprise that I'm gonna find. She's above. I'm a believer. I couldn't leave so far if I tried. Oh, yeah. And I saw its place. Bank number 400. Dun, 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 dun. And then it got in the race. Dun, 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 dun. And now it's 72. Oh, I'm in love. Yeah. I'm a believer. I can conceive her up above 10. Oh, yeah. 
And then I saw her face. Oh, no. Yeah, I'm a believer. Bow down. And I got so right. Do, 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 do. How far so far will fly. Do, 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 do. And I'm in love. Ooh, ha. Yeah, I'm a believer. I wouldn't leave this if I tried. Oh, yeah. <laughs> my soul fine, don't down on out on. My soul fine, don't do no no. Yeah, that was easy. All right. Oh, I'm going to sing it and it's going to start to rise, folks. You've seen this before, right before your very eyes. I'm not going to stop. I'm going to vocal lies. <laughs> and then we're going to see the price and rise and it's not going to stop. And we all won't be surprised because we've seen it so many times. Catfish ain't telling no lies. <laughs> Y'all hang on there with me while I venture off in the <laughs> his redneck time. <laughs> Good, good God Almighty, look down here bottom of the screen and I see his stupid ad is going to try to run on us again. And I ain't going to put up with it. I'm here to tell you right now, I'm going to kick that ad on out of here. No, <laughs> I think I'd better off if I let at least one ad every once in a while come on across the screen for you. So we're going to let y'all get on over there with the ad and let me know. What the hell they're advertising on Catfish's channel today. <laughs> we done jumped on a whole new horse and buggy, everybody. If you can't tolerate it, then there's a place you can go, and it's called the D-O-O-R. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to go get whacked out crazy on y'all folk here for a little bit. And you're just going to have to settle in there and take her for a ride. Or you can just bail on off the horse right here and now. <laughs> oh, yeah. I see my channel dropping quickly. We got people falling off this air horse faster than they can kick a bucket. <laughs> I don't even know why the hell they even here if they can't handle a little variety from time to time. <laughs> you people got to get real, for my goodness sake. You figure going to sit here and talk a whole damn day long like I'm just one kind of person when I obviously got myself a split personality. <laughs> we done dropped off 15, 20 now people leaving this here channel thinking, God dang, he done lost me now. <laughs> but you know what? I'm going to stick true to myself and I'm not going to give up my belief. Superboy Sing Cat. <laughs> Time take us on another direction here for a bit. I done lost some people, I, and they don't believe they're listening to somebody sitting here singing Catfish Tyler and singing songs while we watch this thing go ding dong. The shorts went long. You guys and gals that's going to stick around here on this channel with me, you know I'm going to bring it from every direction, and it should be no surprise to you whatsoever. When I start to act this her way, all right? And if you think I'm crazy, well, I am. <laughs> That's partly why you should be here in the first doggone place. Get yourself all too edumacated by all them edumacated folks like Tanner and Tevis. I'm here more basic. <laughs> Sing cat. <laughs> uh, uh. Well, the other day, yeah, I was headed on home. <laughs> Y'all want to hear Dickertown? <laughs> uh, we can do Dickertown for you with the country ball and old redneck. <laughs> redneck. <laughs> redneck cat going to come on at you with some Dictor Town, if y'all figure you can hold on here, because this gets crazy, this stuff here on this here channel from time to time. And we go and venture off on different courses every once in a while, and we start to do sort of what we call mere make-believe. <laughs> y'all, hang with me if you can, because right now I'm on a make-believe talking like this here redneck that I growed up with. And... <laughs> 
he's got in this here song. It's called Dicker Town. I hope y'all like it. I would get out the guitar too, but I don't figure I really want to do that now. My fingers about damn near numb and broke off from me playing this here Saturday. I played for people. If you want to, you can get on over to my channel, listen in on my country and my other type of music. I do it all. I'm across the board entirely. You won't find any wrecking thing there that you're going to stick to all the time. It's always changing. All right. We're going to just as I said, your channel. You come on over to Catfish Tyler Land. You don't know what you might stumble across. <laughs> might start talking like a Edge McCade country boy <laughs> with fancy microphone. <laughs> want to say thank you for being here with me and i know there's a lots of times and places you can find yourself else but if you're here with me then i'm a grateful son gun i'm here to tell you and i know it takes a lot of due diligence to stick with this hair stock but we might as well let's get ourselves a laugh in every once in a while can't just keep on keeping on you know we got to kind of liven things up around here you know spruce up the place if you know what i'm saying <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> yeah every once in a while i like to do a little what i call redneck cat <laughs> we bring him right on out the back from the back 40 see and, and this is me sitting in the chair here with you now <laughs> talking to you <laughs> But what we're trying to do here is kind of alleviate the stress of sometimes holding on some of these hair stocks like this and just seem to just want to keep kicking our Peter around in the dirt. But the truth of the matter is, this hair stock, if you look at your long-term chart, folks, it's pretty dang evident where we're headed next. And that's freaking up for everybody. 200 day moving average hadn't done a damn thing but go up and up and up from six dollars and change up to eight dollars and thirty cents this year day so don't y'all worry about that 200 day moving average she's not dropping <laughs> uh well the other day i was headed on home i was by myself all alone stopped for a while just to check it out was a car for sale. A young man stepped out. <laughs> oh boy. Some of you have heard that song on uh, YouTube. It's called Dicker Town. I hope that you will take a chance to get over there and give it a listen once in a while. And today, folks, we just got another frustrating day where we got to stick it out and bear it and just understand how they do it, say exactly the method with, with, with which they're doing it, and take advantage of the method that they're playing right now. And that's run it down every morning get it up i mean right out of the gate man they they go for the high as soon as i mean it's literally within seconds and then they take an attack at it every single day they're doing the same damn thing right here at the same time every single day and you, we are going to have to learn to play this and dr day trade this and make these same 40 cent swings every day that they're making right now off of sofi and that's exactly what they're doing. They're making a great amount of money, running it down 20 cents and then back up 20 cents and then down a little bit. Man, they're making a killing off of the damn, damn stock. They're making a killing off of it. And they're borrowing to do it. That's the funny thing. They don't have any real money. They're just simply borrowing and they'll pay the little bit of interest because they're making enough money to pay off the interest, right? Simple as that. But... Those of you that are here on this channel with me, I'm uh, appreciative of your tolerating my craziness. Sometimes I go just try to, like I said, liven it up a little bit, move it around, shift gears. YouTube says it's not receiving enough video to maintain smooth streaming. And as such, viewers will experience buffering. And uh, so if you're seeing that right now, I apologize. Uh, I'm going to try to... Uh, Refresh the screen. Now, I see the price is at 722, so we must be pretty accurate to the time right now. But it looks to me like uh, they're going to try to keep it from closing as high as, as close to the high as they can. And right now, of course, the difference between 722 and 734, in case you can't do math real good, uh, you can see that if it was at 732 from 712, that would be 12 cents. All right, uh, 22 cents, actually. 
And so from this right here, you can see it's 712 to 734. Price now right at 722, dead, dead in the middle between those two pretty much. They're trying to just keep it right in the center between the 712 and 734 at 721. But folks, this is costing them money. And we'll just have to keep playing this little daily game with SoFi until the earnings report comes out and they show what they've really done. And they don't leave any doubt in anyone's mind that this company is still executing and doing exactly as they said. And all the deals that they're signing right now with uh, that with all of these major banks to do uh, the requests for proposals, that'll all come to the bottom line. They're going to fill these requests. They're going to do these proposals. They're going to get the acceptance. They're going to do the work and they're going to make the money. And they're going to show you on the bottom line on this earnings report. That's what I think. I think it all comes to the bottom line, including the money they just saved by doing the convertible note. I think that all comes to the bottom line. And that's what this company understands. They need to bring in the revenue and they need to show the profit. And they're going to show their profit. Yep. As a matter of fact, I can fairly guarantee you that the owner or CEO, Anthony Noto, the one who's in the helm here and steering this ship, if there was any slight fraction of a chance that they were not going to be profitable as he's been for projecting, he'd let you know. He's no deceiver, Anthony Noto. In fact, he's, if anything, he's the deceiver slayer. Because when they try to deceive everybody, he steps in and shows you, no, folks, look, I wouldn't be buying this again here at this number if I didn't believe still that we're going the way we're going to go. You just watch what I do, follow my lead. Every time they run the price down, buy more. That's what, that's what he's been doing, Anthony, and not just him, his wife as well. I showed everybody how many people Anthony Noto, I showed them how many um, shares that she had bought in her average share price. She's doing freaking excellent, man. Anthony Noto's wife. I think her name is Kristen Noto. Yeah, I'll show you again. Here it is. <laughs> Look at the day, folks. David Chia Pansy Day, May the 15th. She steps up and buys market share $217,000. This is Anthony Noto's wife, everybody. How many companies can you say that you own stock in that not only the CEO owns over $50 million worth, but his wife buys it on the dip? How do you like that, folks? Look at that, man. 33,259 shares. How much is that times where we are now? 33,259 times, where are we? 720. I mean, God, dogs, man. 722 times 7.22 equals, well, God, that's 240,129. 240129 What's what what did she pay? Oh, nice. She paid $217,000. That's a nice little chunk of change she can shop with. Minus 217.573. Minus 217.573 equals, yeah, $22,000 she's made in a year. Yeah, we make a down day and up day. Every day I make a down day and up day. I try to, that's right. And today is still an up day for us, believe it or not. I don't know how you could say otherwise. The doggone 52-day moving average, the 200-day the, the moving average, every one of them on these charts to me looks freaking phenomenal, and I'm not going to complain. I'm not going to complain about lines that look like that going up and every attack effort just going higher and higher off of the bounce. Every one of them. 
the truth is the mat the, uh, is still intact. This is the trend line and the price. Every time they've attempted to do this to it below the trend line, it's always skyrocketed afterwards. And it's why not? It's working for them. Why wouldn't they do it again? They're going to do it again, folks, coming into this earnings call. They're going to do it again. <coughs> They've got this program that they already have worked out before that worked perfect for them. It's what happened on July um, on uh, uh, July the 31st. They got this same program. It happened before July 31st. They made the price on earnings day go all the way up to 1170. This was before we even went profitable. And on that earnings call, we were missing the street by 19 cents or something. We missed on that earnings call, folks. We missed a lot. If you go back over here and you look, look how much we missed. We missed by 22 cents. On that earnings call, you should have been suspicious of that right away when you saw the price go all the way up to 1170. You had to know they were manipulating it. But my friends, look how much it was manipulated one month before that date. We are now, right now, one month and one week away from the earnings call. Go back to the last time, one month and one week prior to this high. What, what would the price be? Well, from the July 31st, let's go down to June. June, there it is, June the 30th, <clears throat> price had hit 941, but folks, look, one week prior, one, two, three, four, five days before that, it was at 771 on June the 23rd, 771. That was the low. One week and one month, exactly where we are right now from the next earnings call that's about to come out and today's lowest price of the freaking month, pretty much. <laughs> right? What a coincidence that just before one month, July 31st, when they had the price hit 1170, if you go back to June the 31st, and you go back six days before that, you'll see the price hit the lowest it ever was on 62 million shares. They manipulated it all right, big time. All right, and they got it down to 771. Congratulations, because folks, after that, three weeks later, it was over $10, hit 1013. And I say the same thing happens now. And then they took it back down to 894 from 1013 to 894, exactly six days later, one, two, three, four, five, six days, 894, and then up to 1170 on the earnings call when we didn't meet the street. That's manipulation people 101. They made a fortune doing it. <clears throat> they had the price at 1023. They called out the dogs. They ran the price down to 771. All three downgrades came from Morgan Stanley, Piper Sandler, uh, Opperheimer, I mean, and Piper Sandler and uh, Bank of America. Drove it back down to 771. Perfectly executed. Price suddenly jumped back up to 941. That was the nice high. And then they took the thing all the way over $10. And they're going to do it again, folks. They're going to do this. Man, oh man, talk about some money. Look at that. Seven, 1023 to 771 in a week, back to $9.41, then back down to 786 in three days, then back up to $9.45, then 894 that day. They did that. And then 1013, and then back down after 1013. To 894 to 1170. Jesus Christ, folks. Excuse my language, but man, that is insane amount of manipulation of a stock. And they're making a freaking fortune off re retail doing this, folks. July 31st, 1170. Three days before, 894. A week before that, 1013. A few days before that, 877. 
<laughs> on that same day, the next day, 944, folks, and then down, it's just insane, 786, and then up to a high of 941, then down to 771, and then up to 1023. God, it's almost unbelievable to see. And below that was 445 a share on May the 15th, right there, 445. What swinging? 445 to 1023 to 771. <laughs> oh my God, to 941. To 877. Oh, I'm sorry. There was a 786 in between there. And then back to 939 and 945. Then 894. Oh, my God. They just swing trading this thing like crazy. It's 8, 10, 13. Down to 894. Up to 1170. Back down into the sevens again. And down to 641 even. Golly, what craziness. And I mentioned this to you because it's going to get radical on us even, even more so soon, folks. More radical. Things are going to get radical. The more desperate they become and the more shares that they short and the deeper the hole gets, the more radical this is going to become, people. That's my call. I could be wrong, but I don't think so. 3.46 p.m. right now. Hold on. Sorry about that. Hey, honey, bunny. Hey, I was just calling you to check in. Okay, how's it going? So I don't just got done at Sam's. I got quite a few groceries. I didn't get any milk because I didn't want it to sit in my car. When I got back in my car, it was 69 degrees in here. So it was melting. I went to Sam's with her card and filled up my tank and left my car, my car sitting there. And when I got back into it just now, I had accidentally left my phone in here, and it wouldn't even let me use my phone. It said it was too hot. Oh. So, it's right in there. Um, it was 69 degrees in my car. Jeepers, creepers. I know. I can hardly oh, wait. I'm to... sorry. No, I'm sorry. 59 degrees. Oh, okay. That, yeah, that sounded outrageous. Yeah. 69. Yeah. I was like, oh, my gosh. I might want to reconsider mowing the yard this afternoon. No, it's 59 degrees. It's still, I mean, it's still, that's pretty warm in my car. I guess, with all the windows rolled up. And, yeah. So, I can't believe your phone would I, cut off at 60. Yeah, I, I forgot it. And I, oh, that was another reason I was calling. I thought, well, you might have tried to text. You might have tried to call. I don't know. Well, you turned my phone off, uh, that little red switch. And fortunately, I heard it vibrating here next to me. I would never even know you just tried to call me. I know, right? right? And yeah. uh, and then you showed me that little trick, and it was still off in the. And I went, oh shoot! So uh, I just turned it back on, so I can hear the phone ring now. Okay. All right. Well. well I have, I'm, as you have, if you remember, you're going to have the two leftover thingies. Yep, I'm ready for them. Monte Cristo. And Chelsea wants to go to Tang for dinner, so that's what I'll be doing. Oh, you poor thing. I know. That's terrible. You're going to have to have an Ishmael special and bring it home to me. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'll have my Monte Cristos and I'll be fine. No, I know you'll be fine. Um, okay, so I just wanted to check in. Thank you for letting me know. You're doing good and having fun. I love you. Love you too. All right, bye. Bye. All right, everybody, there we go. Catfish Tyler, hey, Susan. Welcome, Susan. I appreciate your being here today, sharing with us. We are buying SoFi today at a low again today, the lowest we may ever see again of $7.12. And if you didn't get that with us today, that's okay, but we did. We bought it there. There's quite a few people that bought right alongside of me when I bought there. And I bought some fairly amounts, big amounts of shares. So good, good job, everybody. Good job. And now we're just going to see this price continue to rise. You can see the Dow is manipulated down 270, but the Nasdaq's being very freaking resilient here. And it looks like the damn thing just wants to go green, actually, to be honest with you. See a little bit of a pull on the Russell, but uh, 
the Russell's been exploding here lately. The Russell 2000 index has just been, in case you don't know it, this is the, the index we're in, the Russell 3000. We This has just been going nuts, the Russell. So uh, it looks very, very strong over the last few days, the Russell index. I'll show it to you now so you can see what's been going on with the Russell index over the last month. And uh, folks, if you're going to complain about this, then you got nothing to complain about. Look at that Russell index went from down here just over 2000 and man, the dang things up here, just looking very good, building a, building a platform now at a resistance point earlier, I might add. And so very good for us on that regard, because now as it falls down, it's building a platform, the place, the same place there was previous resistance is what I'm trying to get at. And I try to show you these things and what does Yahoo want to do? Refresh the screen and make it a one day chart instead of the one month for you. So you can see what I'm actually trying to express to you. But folks, this Russell, see again, they're trying to do the one day. Look at that. This is the platform building where the resistance was before. All right. This is where the resistance was before to arise. And this is a platform building now there. Just letting you know that in case you weren't aware of it. Looks to me like one. And when you see a sharp increase and then drop drastically, and then you see it get down here and trade sideways for a while, that's called a foundation. Okay? That's what I call it. I could be wrong, but I don't think so. Meanwhile, we watched SoFi sitting here at 722. Seemed like they wanted to stay at 720 so long earlier I don't know why they were so concerned about 720, but they tried forever to keep it there at that price. And, uh, but now folks, the, th the thing is just as resilient as ever, standing up to all efforts. They spent millions of dollars again, borrowed shares again today to try to contain this uh, wild and crazy stock. And uh, I'm gonna get back over here because I wanna look at how many shares uh, the first of all, cost to borrow having shot up right there. Boom. I like seeing that April 1st cost to borrow goes up. That makes me feel good. Look at it there. Flat, flat, flat. Boom. April 1st cost to borrow just jumped up right there. Nice. I like seeing that. I see in the USA over the last year, the change in SoFi is 18.45% green. All right. And this is a 1% drop today, and we're 18.45% green. So as of yesterday, we were 20% green. Or even earlier today, just so you're aware of it. Meanwhile, we watched the price trying to be uh, held back on 28.5. So again, low volume today in comparison within the past, what we've been seeing, but still not in their comfort zone of 16 million a day or 15 million or 14 million like they had a month and a half, two months ago. It was longer than that now. Levin Henley. Hey, Catfish, I'm back. I did not have a good day. My SoFi portfolio is down. Give me some good news. All right. Well, first of all, if you'll scroll up in the chat, you're going to see I have a link provided. Look at the top video of those two links I provided, and you will find a very informative video about something SoFi is now doing that no one knows about. And it was discovered by Tevis of the Fundamentals of Trading Group. You know who they are, Tevis and Tanner and Steve and they're all there together as pals and they talk about SoFi all the time. And they discovered that SoFi is hiring into a position, looking to fill a position in the direction SoFi is going, that they had not made any announcements that they were going to do yet. But now they're looking to fill the position for someone to do exactly this. That is another surprise for everyone that SoFi, see, they like to not announce that they're going to do this. They, they put out the listing looking for someone to fulfill this position, but this position they're looking to fill is for someone that knows about, about small business, okay? Because they want to start, well, just go over and watch that video. I cannot go into depth to the, the, the level that Tanner and Tevis did, okay? But later on today, go up and watch that video YouTube first link, the top link, and I pinned it as the message pinned today too. So either one of the pinned messages, if you can see it, or the one I just posted up there on the chat, 
scroll up and hit that top link and that one will take you to the video that will take you to the promised land and an understanding of what SoFi is doing that they haven't uh, put out in the news yet. So I'm telling you about it because it's important for you to understand that sometimes, as usual, SoFi won't tell you what they're up to. It's just all of a sudden they got a damn deal with the NBA to be the NBA's sponsored bank of the, the official bank of the NBA. They didn't tell anybody that was coming, but they did all the previous work of the videotaping and the f commercials that we've been seeing. All that was done previously. They didn't make the deal with the NBA and then go out and start shooting commercials that day and uh, doing uh, advertisements with all of these stars and the, what you saw in, in the in the um, in this NBA All Star Game with those commercials they were showing during the NBA's All Star Game, folks. They didn't just they didn't just they didn't tell you a thing about it, but they were working on it the whole time and working on it and getting it better and better and ready and prepared for the launch just like they're going to do TGL golf. Now that they've had the delay with the roof issue, they're able to trim things and make things even better than they would have been before. It could actually end up being a blessing to disguise because then they won't have any little glitches or problems or issues that they might have otherwise had. They're getting to work out the details of the way this all works better. It's all going to be a better package in the end when they get TGL off, TGL golf done in the end of this year. We're eight months away from it right now. Ten months. They're going to probably do it on December the 29th like they were planning on debuting it the last time. Try and do it right around New Year's, I would guess. And follow the same schedule to the playoffs that they were going to have. I see that very, 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 very possible of happening here. Uh, don't worry. I mean, you, you, you can't really say you're having a bad day in the market when the whole market is down 300 and something points or whatever. Look at that. NASDAQ just went green. Just like I said, it might, huh? Pretty amazing to see that. No, it's not. I told you, I thought it was going to go green. I don't know. Looks to me like it's green. I'm guessing that's green up there. It says 2031 in the green. Let's see if they, right here at the very close, 19 up. Nice. NASDAQ makes a nice little move upwards. And do not be surprised whatsoever to see Shorty try their same every day afternoon, one cent, two cent, three cent down in the early pre-market. But then on the other hand, since they tried all day to manipulate it down and they've worked so hard to do it and they've spent a bunch of more money, use up more shares, borrowed shares, uh, still have all these shares that have to be returned yet. They're just sitting on all these shares, a lot of them paying interest, folks. You might not think, but man, I like seeing that cost to borrow go up today. Boom. I like seeing that a lot. Doink. <laughs> Jumps right up there. Very nice. Thank you for the video. I will watch it. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's worth, it's worth knowing about because it's a, it, it's a, a good way of figuring out what SoFi is about to do. This time we, we caught them. Okay. They've been able to get that NBA deal all locked up and keep that concealed right down to the day they made the announcement and then bam, it was right on the court that day. And you saw the big, and SoFi insignia right there on the court during the All-Star game. And they had all that pre-planned. They had all that worked out in advance. They did all of the artwork and the, and the, sh the shooting of the, the uh, those are probably peel and stick type labels signage that they put down just like an adherent, uh, and, you know, you know, vinyl or whatever. I, I'm guessing that. I don't know how they put it down. They might have painted it right onto the wood for all I know and waxed over it and sealed it and the whole thing. I don't know what they did. But I know that it's there, <laughs> and I saw it on the NBA basketball game during the biggest shot that's ever been made from half court on the NBA. And I saw a lot of other things happen. I'm going to show you guys that over this past uh, yesterday, I got to watch, and I, I say got to because I didn't really have the desire to watch all that bad, uh, but I saw 
and I knew that um, there was a show on Disney Plus, and it was Taylor Swift at the concert at the SoFi Stadium on Disney Plus. And while I watched her performing for a solid three hours and 20 minutes, unbelievable that she just kept changing and changing because she had 17 years of albums that she had not yet done tours for. All of her previous tours were done as the album was released, go on tour and promote it. Release an album, go on tour and promote it. Release an album, tour and promote. Release, tour and promote. But for 17 years in a row, Taylor Swift didn't do any promoting with tours. She was just cranking out albums. And finally, she came up with the idea, the only way I could ever do is to do them all at once. So she covered like five albums, 17 years worth of her music that she'd created during that one concert, which turned out because of it to be three hours and 27 minutes long. And folks, I'm not talking about a concert where one stage was set up and she performed on that stage like many, many, many concerts over the years. This was a massive stage with scale beyond what you could believe that had all these risers and droppers that would take it to different levels. It was so sophisticated and different scenes that were set up and different um, scenarios. Folks, they had, it was just like theater in a way. You must, I would highly encourage, even if you don't like Taylor Swift, for one thing, you'll see how many times SoFi had their name on the concert right there where you could see it. And twice during the concert, she shouted out a shout out about SoFi. Okay. So I want you to know, folks, that what I'm going to show you uh, is copywritten material. I have nothing to do with it at all, but I want to show you this and I'm going to play you what I took off the TV this past weekend for you guys to see. SoFi, how it was being advertised, and from the very beginning, how it was being advertised when the show first started up. I'm going to show you where you can see SoFi on this picture right when the show began, right here, right now. So let me, uh, first of all, let me, uh, oh, I got to click skip ads because I don't want this ad to run right now. And then I'm, gonna, I'm glad I caught that happening right then. You guys hang loose with me here a minute. Some of you have already seen this, but I'm going to show it to you, those of you that are late in the day here. Milltown Smoke. Oh, no, man. Oh, well, I'm glad you're able to see me again. I'm glad you're, I'm sorry that you haven't been feeling well. <clears throat> Uh, someone here to party Creole avec moi parce qu'il connaît capable parler parler Creole, but I'm going to not speak Creole right now. I want to show you this. So I want to show you, as I was going to show you, how so far, how well they were uh, portrayed and shown here at the SoFi concert. And I'm going to start, and hopefully you'll be able to hear my phone too. Uh, as it plays the volume, hopefully we'll play where you can hear what is being said. So I'll move my microphone up here a little bit and we'll try and catch some of this volume with what's being said. And as I said, let me go over here and make my screen bigger. So you can see how SoFi did such a great job of getting the advertisement they want and exposure. Here it goes. Ready? Uh, three, two, one, zero. Uh, oh no god dog it hold on <laughs> here it is right now so this was the beginning of the concert and there's SoFi Stadium So they're coming into the stadium right there. There's SoFi right there, written right there at the bottom right corner. SoFi. Um, 
So that was just one of the places and one of the many. So I went along through here and I wanted you to see this right here. Uh, hold on. And again, you can see right there, you can see SoFi Stadium very clearly on this. Oh, I'm sorry. I did this one twice. But hold on, folks. I want you to see how well they did in presenting this. And hopefully this one was better than the last one. There it is. SoFi Stadium. And there it is. Right center in the screen. Beautiful. Alright, so I'm showing you that. But I also want to show you how she spoke to the audience about SoFi specifically. Okay? And I'm going to play that for you right here. She's about to speak about SoFi, SoFi right now. Yeah, you're making me feel like I get to play a sold out show at SoFi Stadium tonight. That's what she says right there, folks. And uh, there's another place where she does it as well. And there's some video here. Uh, let me see if I can find this one right here where they show her from the, the, hold on a second. Oh, I wanted you guys to see this stuff that she, that they did, how well they did it all. And uh, it might be right here. Let me see. All right, this isn't the one I wanted to show you. There's one part here where she's got, here it is. Listen to what she says here. And this is kind of long, so I'll try to fast forward a little through it. Let me fast forward, but here we go. Right. There you go. I got another shout out for SoFi Stadium. Another shout out. I want you to remember this night as the night we had so much fun here together at SoFi Stadium. So I want you to know, folks, that that stadium had 70,000 people inside of it at the time every single night. And that, mo that thing that I watched on Disney Plus has been watched, I'm sure, millions and millions of times, I would guess. I could be wrong, but I don't think so. All right, so here we are, 4.08 p.m., and I'm just trying to show you. Polo Blue, uh, BC, because people really watch the credits, right? They don't They don't have to watch the credits. She talks about them, Blowhead. Uh, Polo Blue. <laughs> they don't have to. They don't have to watch the credits. They can listen to her out of her mouth, see? And uh, she did it many, many, many times. So, <laughs> Polo Blue. <laughs> All right. Well, Polo Blue. I guess you don't know what the word is called branding. Maybe you just don't know. You know, I was talking about the the guy who downgraded SoFi one time, and there was a comment from a very wise person on there that said, well, he, when I was talking about how David Civerini downgraded SoFi stock price to 250 a share, which he knew wasn't ever going to happen, uh, and everyone knew it wasn't. They just didn't know how bad it was going to backfire on them after they tried to run the price down from there. 
they didn't know that it was going to go over $10 within a month's time because everybody caught on. So, yeah. Well, if you're that um, naive not to understand that a year ago, 100 people would be stopped on the street and asked, have you ever heard of SoFi? And only one would say yes. And now a year later, 10 say yes. And a year from now, 20 will. Yeah, Levin Henley says advertising at its finest right out, right on. And uh, they're going to do the same thing with TGL Golf here. They're going to have every one of the people who's involved of it. Justin Bieber, the two Serena sisters with the tennis pros. <laughs> They got, for God's sake, LeBron James. And I got news for you, Polo Blue. With comments like you made, <clears throat> you just simply don't understand the importance of branding. Oh my gosh, I can only imagine how much they made. And like I said, not only do you have 70,000 people in there every day doing it, they're showing the videos. They're all videotaping in there with their cameras. They've all videotaped their performance. And you got SoFi Stadium right up there behind her. They showed all their friends. It's just people just don't understand the scope of it and the expansion of getting the word out about SoFi and how good this company is about doing it. All right. And uh, <clears throat> Disney Plus, folks, you've got to, you know, got to understand they got a lot of viewers and they got a lot of very young viewers so they're starting it's just like the cigarette companies used to be doing back when i was a kid in the 60s and putting out cigarettes in the candy rows where you could buy cigarette gum and you could buy all of them winston marlboro they all had you know the marlboro man with the uh, horse rider on it there and you know the cigarette gum with their little fire tip on it, and it was white, and it had the butt. They look, it looked like cigarettes, folks. <laughs> they, <laughs> you could go right down to the local 7-Eleven or to the local uh, quality dairy or uh, whatever ha you have in your area that's a little corner store and walk in as a little kid, and they, and they were just indicting us very early on to get used to the branding of their product. <clears throat> and... Uh, Here's SoFi doing the same thing, but they're entering the minds of people who will be people who will be carrying this country forward as we move forward and uh, making either good financial decisions or poor ones. But the truth of the matter is, everybody, it is what it is. It's great branding, and SoFi knows how to do it. Now let's go and see quickly where the price is in after hours and see if it's seven nineteen twenty or twenty one. Wouldn't be surprised to see any one of those numbers. There it is, 721. The old one number again that they often do. But anyway, uh, I wanted to show you that information about uh, that concert because I only watched two hours of it. It was amazing to me that the lady could even perform for two hours, three hours and 20 minutes straight. It was insane. And during the time that I saw the duration that I saw and I can show you, I'm not going to show you every one of these dang uh, videos that I have, but during the duration that I watched for two hours, this is how many times SoFi was shown in the camera or she talked about it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Look at this one here. I mean, <laughs> I have to back it up. <sighs> and I'll just freeze frame this image for you. I apologize. They're going to try and run another ad. I'm going to click skip ad again. God dang, man. They're throwing in an ad every freaking three or four minutes here. Ridiculous. But I want to show you this. 
this was during the performance, this angle that they had right here. And they they pulled, this is right at the, the closest uh, viewpoint. But you can see right here, folks. Man, oh man, gosh. No, you can't. Get this off of here a little bit. Hold on. <sighs> Camera decided not to show you that image. But I will show it to you regardless. Here it is here. And this is, you can see very clearly right there in the background, SoFi Stadium from behind. And here it is. So there were many, many times that they were very, very well represented during that concert. And I mean, it must have been about 20 different times that they were on the screen for people to see. That's awesome. I didn't even know. They had a stadium. I have a feeling the NBA is going to advertise the hell out of SoFi. I can't wait for it, man. We're going to start pulling in a lot of people. Oh, that's absolutely true. That's absolutely true. Uh, pa uh, pa Polo Blue says, uh, <clears throat> Mark Stewart, hold on here. I got some people commenting now. 11 makes you wonder how much they made Mark Stewart. Many are, are too young to remember the brother. <laughs> Uh, about product placements on movies and TV shows. Oh, absolutely. The brouhaha that was on product placements on movies and TV shows. True. Uh, Big League Chew. Yeah. Mil Milltown Smoke. Big League Chew. Yep. Uh, uh, Polo Blue. Bro, I'm all in on SoFi and I've worked in branding for 15 years. I'm talking about the television viewers. Super didn't report the numbers on uh, the expected. That's all I'm saying. Yep. <clears throat> I'm sure that uh, Super Bowl, I understand. Yep. I'm sure that, that it was very worth it for SoFi to get that stadium and to, uh, to fill it with Taylor Swift seven days in a row uh, and to videotape that production by Disney. <laughs> Disney of all. That's awesome. Uh, Levin Henley didn't even know they had a stadium. I have a feeling NBA going to have, yep. Pull the blue message retracted. Uh, Duck Kings. 10 to $12 by earnings or two weeks after good quarter results. Yep. Yep. James Anderson, SoFi will be household name. Absolutely. Absolutely they will. They already are becoming that right now. Many people know about them. Thanks to a lot of people like you that are here on this channel that helped me by hitting the like button. And we get over 100 likes and it gets more and more people over to this channel every single day. But uh, I'm showing you that... Uh, Something that I didn't wasn't aware of. Okay, I I did not know that. She, number one, I did not know that Sophie was going to be spoken by her uh, at several points in the concert. Just called out, just shouted out their name, and I thought that that was freaking awesome. I would not have uh, expected to hear that. Just to put it that way, I wouldn't have expected to hear it. Uh, but it became very clear that they wanted to get the message across. And they got their message across and they got a lot of visibility. And one thing you got to understand, somebody says, well, they might not even notice that. They don't notice that. They don't notice it. Psych they don't notice it. Uh, maybe they don't notice um, it uh, consciously. They don't consciously notice it. But the subconscious people, it notices. There's a lot of stuff that you take in through your eyeballs into your brain that gets there that you don't even know it got there. <laughs> and uh, including sexual uh, stuff on Disney, for example, being perfect example of uh, stuff that's been known to be sexual with their production, uh, including one of their famous covers of one of their Disney uh, magazine covers, comic covers or whatever, that had uh, the, the Cinderella's castle on it. And one of the spires on the castle was a penis. And uh, yeah, so... <laughs> The, they had uh, on Lion King the star scene where the little lion was out on the cliff and looking up and what or maybe it was Papa Lion I don't know who what they are but he was looking up and there in the sky with the stars is spelled the word sex or with the little puffy clouds so uh, <clears throat> anyway there's a lot of stuff that you see that you there's a reason that they put it in there 
And uh, there's a reason that they ban subliminal advertising. But this isn't subliminal in any way. They're they're getting their name out there, folks. People can see people can see something like this on their screen. They can see that. All right. They can see that. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> actually, I'm only showing you part of it. You can you can see that. Let me back it out here. Well, I'm trying to show it to you without dropping the stupid camera. I mean, it's pretty, pretty, it's pretty powerful. It's a pretty good way of advertising. That's all I'm going to say. <clears throat> and uh, I would like to ask if anybody's here who hasn't hit the like button yet, please do consider hitting the like button before you leave here today as we get ready to wind this down. Uh, I am watching SoFi very closely and all of its action over a very long duration of time. And based on the history, I think this is going to be over $10 a share. I think it will be over $10 a share between now and earnings. I believe it will be run back down after that. And then I believe it will go way over $10 a share on earnings day. And I could be completely wrong. <laughs> Polo Blue, there you go. Well, I appreciate you being here today, Polo. I haven't seen you here very often. But one of the things I will do on this channel is I will show people usually at the very end of the day why they're so smartly invested in this stock. And it all comes down to the fact that the 200-day moving average and the trend line on this stock is completely up, 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 okay? Even with the occasional double dips below that trend line, it always makes a move so far off of where it is now to the upside. Every single one of these times you've seen since back here, a long time ago, every single one of these double lines you've seen below the trending line has resulted in a major upward movement. But prior to every upward movement, you've seen it drop below my trend line and get low, then not as low, then up, 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 then low, then deeper low, then way higher, then low, then deeper low, then higher then low, then deeper low, then way higher. It's time for a way higher now, okay? We've seen the double low high, the deep low much higher. We've seen the double low high, the double deep low much higher. That's what I'm calling for. I'm calling for that because SoFi is about to announce its second quarter of profitability and I expect to see it possibly rise 16 to 20% or even higher. And the reason why is because they've done it so many times before. Why wouldn't, wouldn't they do it again? Why wouldn't they do it again? Those of you that are still here with me, uh, be aware that SoFi added, has now added two more institutions over the last two days, going long only. And I'm refreshing the page now because I want to see. Now they've added another one. 803 institutions and another long position just came in. <clears throat> On 4-1, we started out at 800 and now we're at 803. And we've jumped up to 742 long only. Doesn't surprise me one freaking bit. 32 short only and 29 Long and short. Volume now, 390.968. 390.968. One, I can tell you exactly how many shares that institution most likely bought right now. 390.968. One, one, four. Minus what it was before, 390-896-896-641 equals, they bought 71,473, 71,473. And uh, institutional ownership is now at 37,26. 
<clears throat> so once again, another one comes to buy Sofi. Do 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 do. Another one buy Sofi. Do 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 do. Another one buy Sofi. Another went long, and this is my song. Yeah, another one bought Sofi. Yeah, hey, we're at 803. Another one bought Sofi. Do, do. <laughs> Rescuers down under, naked chicken in the window. <laughs> oh, yeah. They've done it many, many times. I even saw a Disney thing one time of uh, <clears throat> Mickey Mouse at some sort of factory where they were printing off these and every one he had like this boner in the background as he moved his the movement of the hand it was just insane it was on a conveyor belt that he was doing it and it was i mean it was just like oh my god I, i've looked for it since since then and i haven't been able to find it but uh, yeah they were they were quite a few times that they were kind of pervish <laughs> Yep. And kids too, folks. Jeez. Wow. Sick. Man, look at another ad coming your way right now. <clears throat> yep. The Little Mermaid. Yep. Love the Disney hidden. They got a lot going on behind the scenes. I see that I uh, have right now on this channel 95 likes, 653 today. We didn't have a great day. No, we didn't, but we didn't have a bad day either. And I'm going to explain why. And that is because the shorts had to, again, borrow every short share today. And every one of those shares they borrowed went over to somebody who wants it to go long. And the proof of that is very clear by looking at the deepest deep it was at 1046 and the price hit 712. And then the next low was here at 715. And the next low was here at 716. And the next low was here, 716. The next low was here, 718. The next low here, 720. <laughs> this low here, 720. Now 722. I mean, do you see that? The whole damn day, the thing just kept going up, people. <laughs> oh my God. And they're just going, man, this sucks. Because they paid almost 1% to borrow the damn shares. 0.7 something. <laughs> oh, this is tough on them, folks. Tough. Tough territory for Shorty. All right. I am going to get on out of here. I got to get going, folks. I appreciate your time. I thank you for being here on the channel today as we talked about SoFi and some other stocks today. Uh, we're looking at S-O-U-N. It was a good opportunity to buy some more of that. That's exactly where I bought it two days ago. We're almost 554 is where I got it in 555. So there they come again at it. Good buying opportunity on that today right there at that price, I think. And look for tomorrow morning at 945. I'm going to be definitely looking at this stock to buy more tomorrow morning at 945 to 10. No question. And I wouldn't doubt to see if I re, um, refresh this. I'm not sure. But I wouldn't be surprised to see it up already here in after hours if it does move in after hours. Some of these dang things don't. Yep. Oh, no, they're still after it. Yep. BITF, good day today. Green, congratulations, everyone. STEM, a fraction down. NU, hardly down. Just look at that. TNX, a good place to buy some of that a little bit more if you want to. FCEL, I'm looking at all these. TR. TCN and up up 3% today. And look at that attack in the last 30 minutes. Wow, look at that massive volume in the attack from the price going over $13 back down to $12.54. God dang, people. Somebody wanted in on that thing. And that's the same low almost where it was at here today at 1030. What was the price? $12.50. God, what a massacre of a takeaway from the profits on that thing. And it's still up 3%. Holy crap, everybody. Is that, that's no, that was three at 1279. 
Yeah, up 1%, 1.13% with it up 13, just almost 13 where they tried to close it at 1.13% up. All manipulated down to, to, to prove strength and a powerful 13, you know, number in there. And uh, that's what that's all about there at the end of the day, folks. You can see how they work that in conveniently. Shopify looking great still. CLSK not making much of a move today. <clears throat> Rocket Lab barely, barely red. Bitcoin today. Let's take a look at it. 69,405. Still very good. And bit bit BITF going up while that happened today. Nice. Close that out right now. And I want to thank you all for being here with me. And when we look at SoFi Institutions, just went from 802 up to 803. So another great day for another institution to decide to take up a long position only on SoFi. Oh yeah, they caught that price when they dra drove that down, just like we did at 712. They bought it to there, I guarantee you. And they were waiting for it. They waited patiently. They got the low of 712. They bought it, and now the price is 721. Very nice. Number one. Hey, Catfish, what's up with Bit Farms? The price. <laughs> and they're increasing their uh, production rate up to the same level as CLSK, which is right now priced at $18, $19 a share. $18.90 a share in Bitcoin production by BITF is about to be the same as theirs. This one here that's priced at $18.90. With all the new machines that BITF just bought, Says down here, BitFarm announces production and up operations update nine days ago. But folks, they have bought a bunch of shares, fully exercised 28,000 Bitman T21 miners, purchased an additional 19,280 T21s, purchases another 3.888 uh, S21 miners, purchases 740 of these miners. Folks, they are going to, with all that, have the same hash rate as this stock here, priced at eighteen ninety a share. So you be the judge if you think that's a good buy at that price right there. I sure do. I do. Oh my God! Skip ads. Wow. I will never do this. Uh, what I did for ads today, I let YouTube decide the right ad time to put it in, and I'm not going to do that anymore. Uh, so. Anyway, again, if you happen to be here and uh, could help me out, hit the like button uh, as we get ready to close this down here today. If you didn't get to see uh, what I've been showing everybody today, there is a video up here that's pinned at the top. And also, if you just go over here to the chats and scroll up a ways, you'll f find a, the second highlighted chat is a video you need to watch. You need to watch this video right here that is on YouTube. And it was put up by Tevis and it's news about breaking news that's happening with this stock that nobody yet knows about. And so go to that video and you'll find out what SoFi is up to now with small businesses. Okay. You'll be enlightened. So I'm sharing that with you because that link will help you realize what SoFi is about to do that nobody knows about yet. Because once again, they haven't announced it to anyone. Wow. Thank you, Catfish. Number one. Yep. Watch that video right there that was posted by Tevis and Tanner, and you'll get clued in on what SoFi's in, got in the works. They were smart enough to follow this uh, website that uh, shows what um, people are, what people SoFi is looking for to fill positions, and they found out that SoFi is looking to fill a position of a certain type of industry and a pathway that SoFi is going. And so that gives them the indicator, oh, this is what they're about to do now because they're looking to fill a position for that. So that's the key you need to look at, folks. Go up, go up here to the up above and go to my uh, posting where there's a link. The link is up there and it says, watch this, please. I'll move this screen over here. There it is, right there. So that's the video that's in the uh, up here at the very top pinned. And then here, if you just, like I said, scroll up 
on the on all the chats that's been left here then you can scroll up and you will see this video right there again a link to it it's the top video up here that says watch this please okay and uh, so do yourself a favor watch the video understand what SoFi is doing understand how it benefits what their their drive is what where, where, what their goal is their end goal all right <clears throat> So now I'm going to put this channel back over here. There we go. Put it back over here. Doop, like that. Somebody just said something about this being their favorite channel, and I appreciate you saying so. Um, and I thank you for hitting the like button. Yep. Number number one, favorite live stream for stocks on YouTube, along with Hurricane Lopez. All right. I hear what you're saying, man. I like the guy too, Hurricane. Danny Deals. I like him too. Stock Karen. And, uh, I watch a lot of others, too, that are on YouTube that are all ta talking about SoFi the same way I am. They are believers in this stock. They believe in their performance. They believe that it should be much higher priced than it is now. And for the fact of the matter is, had they not used these so many shares so many times, and then when they ran out of the shares to use, if they hadn't used crafty little call-up downgrades to get the price, they would even be in a worst spot these dishonest little pecs every time they've only got 350,000 shares left they call in a strike of triple downgrade god dang it then over here right in the middle here in january the 31st they got a downgrade from kbw they didn't have any dang shares left they were getting slaughtered they called in kbw to knock us back <laughs> oh yeah they had no shares at all on that date I showed it to you folks. It was the date that they did it was on uh, January, uh, December the 31st, January the 1st it was, January 1st, and they had no shares left to borrow when KBW was called and asked to help them out, a five-star rated analyst. Yep, Perino. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Then coincidentally, on this date, they finally returned all the shares because he was nice enough to help them out. So over here, they got a help out from three analysts. Over here, they got a, re a help out from another analyst. Over here, they were able to return the shares. Then on the 19th, they threw Sh SoFi down to the lowest price it had been in months on the 19th because they used all those shares on the 19th to get there. They use them, folks. They use them. They use them all to do it again. And that's how they get to these numbers. On the 19th, they used all 10 million shares again to make SoFi's price fall on the 19th. You can see to where they got it on January the 19th, 721, folks. That was the date when they borrowed those 10 million shares again to attack us with. There was only 39 million shares traded that day and 10 million of those, 25% of the churn was borrowed shares. And then when they ran completely out of shares, then they didn't have anything to stop the price from going right on damn right back up to nine dollars and forty five cents because they had no way to resist it. There was no shares left from the nineteenth until all the way up till the twenty ninth, and I show you on that chart and it makes it very clear how they played their game. Here's the date, the nineteenth. They borrowed them all to drive it down, and they couldn't stop it till the twenty ninth. And then they borrowed them again. They got them back. They got them loaned out again. And then they ran out of them real quick this time, not like over here when they had 10 million and it took three months to run out of them. They had 10 million right here and shit, they were out of those things in no time. Out of them again. Look at that volume. 85,000 left for them to borrow on March the 21st. That's it, folks. Then what did they have to do? They had to start selling their long positions to cover and return some of those shares. So they did, and that's why SoFi's institutional ownership has now gone up to 803 institutions, but institutional shares has dropped. The percentage of shares has now dropped, even though they've raised up to 803 institutions now holding shares because they're selling their long positions to cover their short ones, people. I'm telling you, what I'm telling you is true. <clears throat> Interestingly enough, I go over here now, I try to update this. You can see right there, they've gone up from 799 to 803 institutions now long 
but institutional shares held is only 37 versus 39%. 39.85 one week ago. The only way, in my opinion, that could happen is if when they were completely out of shares again, which they just ran out completely, they had no other choice but to sell their long positions, both going long and short, and they had to cover with their long positions, they had to cover the short. That's my call. And they still have a ton of shares that they got to return. 219,000, I believe it is. For me, it's the CEO and his, tra his track line. Yep. <clears throat> Absolutely, man. He's executing his plan. He's executing the shorts, too. He's going to lop their damn heads off coming up this next earnings call. He's going to show them that again, they're all wrong. Their estimates are wrong. They're lowballing the stock. They're using FUD and they're trying to tell people this isn't a profitable company and they're getting more and more profitable every single day. And they're getting more and more customers from the big legacy banks every day. I've shown you guys here recently how many times on the institutional charts, I've shown you how they've uh, institutions have been leaving all of the legacy banks recently and coming over. I've shown you how every one of the legacy banks right now has horrible, horrible institutional. They're leaving as fast as they can get out of these. And in case you didn't know it, to be able to see it right here, it's easy. You can just go up here and put in someone like, uh, what, what was one of them? State Street? <clears throat> I think that's one of them, State Street Bank. These are all of their institutional over uh, State Street. Is it on here for institutional ownership? Oh, there was many of that I looked up, though, that were just horrendous. I mean, absolutely horrendous. The many, many, many that I looked up were terrible. Wells Fargo was one of them. And I'm pointing out to every one of you, Wells Fargo Institutional Ownership. This is a legacy, been around forever bank. Out with the old, folks. Out with the old. And that's what the institutions are saying. They have. They've been saying that, folks. This stock is, still has 3,261 institutions, but they used to have 4,000. And you can see that right here. Take a look at what's been happening happening with their institutional ownership. Look at that thing dropping, 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 dropping. <laughs> Yike. Oh, look out. That's not good. Mama don't like seeing that chart. There are many others that I could give you of examples. Bank of America. I love showing people this. You can see the truth of the matter. You don't be, look at them building, building, building positions on SoFi and leaving these legacy banks, institutions just saying, adios, amigos, institutional ownership on Bank of America. How's that looking over the last year? Let's go take a look at BOA. <clears throat> How's their institutional ownership? Take a look at that horrendous looking POS chart. That is just sickening, folks. Look at how much they've lost recently. Now, they've started to make a little bit of a comeback here lately. But man, folks, that doesn't look good. That doesn't look good at all. That doesn't look good. <laughs> oh, my God. From 2020, 2021, 2022. 2000, yikes. 